Well, wherever you are, a very warm welcome to the final day of Crufts. Jim Rosenthal here alongside uh, Graham Partridge. We are all set for the Agility Championship. Small and medium couple of rounds and a final. We have the jumping coming right up for you, the agility this afternoon. By the way, in case you're wondering, no seesaw, no A-frame and no dog walk in the jumping and to qualify the handler and the dog must have won a championship event over the last 12 months if you get eliminated you are out of the final and we're about to see all top grade dogs that is grade seven good morning graham good morning jim morning everybody uh last day i don't know where the time's gone but uh, we're going to finish with uh, with a bang so to speak this is the as you say the small and the medium uh, agility championships we used to have all the championships on one day which was a sunday but then a couple of years ago we added uh, the intermediate championship which meant we had a fourth event uh, and because there's so much going on in this main arena there just physically wasn't time so we split them between thursday and sunday um and uh, and then we alternate the heights during the days Gary Murphy there, uh, this is the ultimate accolade for an agility judge in this country. Very well deserved, fantastic judge, designed some great courses uh, and he'll do us proud today. First of 16 small dogs to go, Lauren Langman and Blink and Blink just loves Crufts. You regular viewer will, will need no introduction to Blink, favourite event, loves the big arenas, a couple of tickets and always screams to go faster as well. Blink the working cocker, nine years of age now from Oakhampton in Devon, Lauren Langman to get us underway this Sunday morning, the final day of Crufts. Next one we'll ask Graham to talk you round this course and Blink setting good pace and faultless in the first 15 seconds. Right in front of us. This is looking really good so far. And that's an interesting sort of figure of eight at the top there. And to finish 39.7 and clear for Lauren and for Blink Graham. Now we are just uh, showing exactly how easy it is. <laughs> and you and I both know, and I think most of the people know, it's not quite that easy. But really well done and a great start for Blink. This is Matthew Burdett and Brew, five year old Shetland sheepdog from Cannington in Bedfordshire. Smallest dog with a big attitude, this one. It is, so just picking this up at jump four. They've come out of four, they've got to go round the back of five, picks the dog up on the right-hand side and sends it... Oh, missed that refusal, ran round, very unusual there. Into the weaves. He'll get ahead of the dog now so he can push it over that jump, round into the tunnel, and now he'll be calling it sharply out. Very nicely done there. Again, round the back of that one, picks the dog up on the left-hand side, wants to be on the inside of any circle that you're running with your dog. Round the back of that jump, back into the tunnel. Out again, this is very nice here. Opposite end of the tunnel again. Now for a big finish. Well done, Matthew. Very nice round, just the five faults, but they're still in a very respectable time. Yes, good work from Matthew Burdett and Brew. Just picking up the five faults. This is Zeus. Brona Walsh from Ireland, seven year old Shetland sheepdog. First agility dog for Brona. And Zeus loving the atmosphere at Crofts that will build during the day. There won't be a seat to be had in this arena later on on Sunday. Shelty's very popular now for in a small category, and you can see why they just love the work. Uh, they've got a great attitude. But just to point out that the the idea now for all these handlers is not to get eliminated. Whatever you do, because as soon as you get eliminated, you cannot, for any reason, qualify through to tonight's final. Great point, and I'm sure it's in uh, Brona's mind, as it is with all the other handlers out there. This is uh, so all you want, a bit of consistency, no eliminations and no faults, and Brona and Zeus have done that, 46.3 second place as things stand a long way to go though dutch replay michel taffin dubois 
from Hoogmaard near Amsterdam. Qualified via the 19 Novice Cup dog show in Reading. Promising partnership, this one, Graham. Yep, um, Michelle, I think, still works for the Dutch Kennel Club. Loves, loves Crofts, and unfortunately, as I say that, picks up an elimination, but it won't stop her liking Crofts any more or less. <laughs> She's a regular competitor over in the UK, loves the British agility, uh, and to top it all off, she's a lovely, lovely person as well. There you are, great endorsement from Graham. It probably won't quite compensate for the elimination, but it might just <laughs> no, I don't think go so. a little way. <laughs> I do my best, though, Jim. <laughs> This is Solly, Sullivan and Ashley Butler, who was up here in the commentary box with us yesterday. Very welcome addition from my point of view, I would have to say. You're not allowed to say anything about that, Graham. 13 championship tickets, gold and bronze medal at the Worlds, won the Cruft Championship twice and the Cruft singles three times. Ashley, Butler and Solly. Solly now nine years of age. Are we are we looking possibly towards uh, he's not talking to me now, would you believe it? <laughs> towards the end of this great partnership. No, they, they are a great partnership. They they know exactly what they need to do here. Um, Ashley's uh, probably older than her actual years uh, in, in her agility knowledge and exactly what's going on here. And you can see everything's just very controlled. She's keeping control of the dog and she's going to finish in a very, very good time, Jim. Yeah, 39.3 for Ashley Butler, first place. Ashley has a lot of competing, as well as a bit of commentating to do, but still very, very good out there and leading as things stand. Lauren Langman, second dog, Venture, seven-year-old working cocker, second time at Crufts. Might make a little bit of noise going around. We'll venture. I told you. Working cocker ideally equipped for those tight turns. Very nicely through the weaves and right up there with time and faultless at the moment for Lauren and for Venture. Over the U move, picking up five faults there and picking up an elimination for taking the wrong course as well. So, And Lauren just calling it a day there. And that's the second elimination that we have had. Yep, sometimes it's the best thing to do. Uh, she's got another round this afternoon. She just can't compete in the final. And there we are. First of all, it was a refusal, so that's the clenched fist. And then because she didn't correct it, um, it's the crossed arms for elimination. Tikita what? Has, tends to wear a little sparkling collar. Tikita, Alan Bray, handler, specialised in smaller dogs. Eight years of age. A working cocker. <laughs> <laughs> Sound effects enjoyed by an enthusiastic crowd who've tipped up here pretty early for the start of this competition. And Alan Bray never gets two up or two down, but a terrific handler out there. And I would expect to see him in the competition later in the day, certainly on the evidence of this first performance from Alan and from Takita. 39.6 easing into second place and, it, and it's a good point about him being unhurried it, the calmer you can be and the more collected and the more thoughtful you, the better chance you've got of getting the dog around the more excited you're going to be the more you excite the dog but as you can see or see the dog doesn't need uh, any hyping up anyway you're looking at uh, bruce working cocker six years of age julie dunlop the handler second time at crufts and little bruce's really exceeded expectations by becoming an agility champion and according to Julie, Bruce loves the sport of agility as much as she does. So working Cocker Spaniels, as I said, um, really, really popular together with the Shelties, probably the most, two most popular 
breeds within this, highly suited to it. They're a working breed. This dog's actually repeat, uh, related to uh, my dog as well. I was so going to say, you've I'm got a, one of those, haven't you? I have, a little, a little, bit, uh, little bit biased, but uh, they've done really, really well in the last 12 months. And you can see why. They're coming up here towards the finish. It's going to be about 39 or 40. Yep, 40.371. She'll be very pleased with that. That's up into the top four, and it's all about not getting eliminated. It's all about keeping the faults down and all about building your performance for the final later today. <laughs> Selfie. Two-year-old Sheltie. Martin Reed. well, individual gold at the jumping in the World Cup and overall bronze at the World Cup, won these small stakes last year at the London International Horse Show. And a combination to be watching, a combination um, that we, we would expect Graham to be hanging around later in the day, if I could put it that way. You would, uh, just surprisingly, just looks a little bit unsettled, and I think that's probably the dog more than Martin. Martin's uh, been in several competitions over the last three days, uh, but he seems to be settling down now, as you say, nothing like this arena, uh, and the dog's just taking a bit of time to do it. There we are, great round, settled down beautifully, 38.261 and clear. Yeah, great round, the quickest that we have seen so far, despite Graham's expert eye picking out that uh, Selfie might have been slightly unsettled at the start of it. Gathering pace, faultless and top of the pile as we speak. Boost and uh, Dave Munnings, 10-year-old. Winners of the small singles on day two, reigning champions here. We are looking at a high-quality competition, only the best dogs in the land, the highest-rated, can take part here. And Dave Munnings and Boost started really well. They have, uh, but uh, I can already see that he's not actually pushing the dog on to its maximum speed. He's allowing the dog to do it. He's making sure that he's there, making sure that the dog does the obstacles in the correct order, which they must do. Uh, but he's got a little bit more in the tank, Jim. You would expect that because uh, a couple more events to go. You don't want to go flat out and tie the dog or anything like that. But uh, 38.3, good enough for second place for Dave Munnings and for Boost. Dave uh, from Bista, not too far away. An absolute quality combination that we're seeing already. This is Fire, working cocker. Les Pierce, the handler from Rossendale in Lancashire. First year at Crofts for both of them. Oh, that was nearly an awkward collision there between yeah. handler and dog, wasn't it? Yeah, we might be worth having another look at that. We haven't seen that too often in the last three days. There's five faults that have picked up over that jump at the far end of the course. Pole down. <laughs> Trying to push a bit of pace out of fire. Is Les. But this is still pretty good. This. Despite the faults, a big, big shout coming this way, not that way. Yeah, it's, it might have been slightly untidy, but they got round and they got round in a reasonable time as well. 41.5 for Les Pierce and for Fire, eighth place as it stands. So we almost had a bit of a, <laughs> a collision there. I'm not really quite sure what happened. So just to uh, just to clarify that, the only time you get mar uh, marked is for deliberately touching the dog. Any accidental uh, collisions, it doesn't really doesn't really cut. Mark Wingate win and Snazzy well into their round. Third last year, this pairing from Derby. Snazzy, the uh, six year old Shelty. That's a very quick part of the course. Now, a few more twists and turns through the tunnel. Another tight one to go in the other end of the tunnel. All pretty tidy so far, and a good time as well. This 40.2 for Mark Wingate and uh, for Snazzy. Into the top six they go, Graham. Great style. Look at the sharpness of that turn, and that's what wins competition. Mark, great handler, been there or thereabouts for a long time. Rachel Ward bringing a bit of style to the proceedings this morning with Pecon working cocker. Kennel Cub name is sweet, but a psycho. We shall see. 
Bit of glitter out there from Rachel, and so far, Pecon is uh, shining bright on this Sunday morning at Crofts. That's proper speed there. And this will be right up there if they keep it going. Very tight turn, back through the tunnel again. This is going to be a really good round, you know. 38.4 from Rachel uh, and from Pecon. And that is into the top three, deservedly so. It is very nice, very quick dog. She's just losing time on some of these turns. She's, we call them barge turns. Uh, and if she can just tighten those up in the next round, she's going to take some beating. Sizzle and uh, Katrina Hands. Runners up last year, part of Team GB, second year at Crofts. Expecting or hoping just to go with the one better. Katrina from a four farm. Part of the Team GB as well. So, experienced combination. Used to the pressures that always come with appearing here at Crofts. 30 seconds, all clean and tidy so far. Other end of the tunnel. Wind towards the completion of the round. That's very good. Anything inside 40 is good. 39.8. And clear then for Katrina. Good girl. Well done indeed. An ultimate small dog, Lily Woodford and Spider. First year in grade seven last year, won two championship tickets this year as well. Lily and Spider, the working cocker from nearby Northamptonshire. Another handler that's come on uh, really, really well in the last 12 months. She's got a lovely dog here. Uh, and you, you can hear, hopefully you can hear just the, what the commands that she's given. So just to clarify, all the dogs don't have a particular command. The handlers, you train them to a particular command to get them to do a particular thing. It can be anything as well. It can be sausages for a, for a go-round. can be, you know, anything you like. But as long as they're consistent, that's the key, Jim. Over the irons jump to complete the round. 39.0. No penalties as well. Into the top four go Lily and Spider. Last small dog is Sunflower. Mini American Shepherd, eight years of age. Tony Dawkins, the handler from Chapel Hill, Lincoln. Last of the small dogs. So far, quite a few clear rounds. A couple of eliminations, sadly, which means that those concerned will not be able to take part in the final this evening. But high quality competition and get the impression that quite a few of these handlers and indeed the dogs are, are leaving a little bit in the tank for the exertions later in the day. Through the tunnel, little, that little right handler then back through the other end of the tunnel and we're going to complete the round. That's very, very competent, 41, no penalties. There we are, go, going off to uh, retrieve the toy, and that's the reward. It's all done with repetition and reward, Jim. Don't ever, ever, ever let anybody tell you we force our dogs to do this. They just love it. And you can see there, Tony's very happy, very experienced competitor, but she just loves her dogs, loves her agility. And that's how things shape up uh, so far, then. Just a, a reminder, of course, there's uh, more to come two more rounds in this competition effectively this afternoon and this evening. So just while we're waiting to get underway, I'll just clarify that anyone who was eliminated in, uh, in the first round can still compete in the second round. They're just precluded from the final, Jim. First of the 17 medium dogs, Mo. Emma Gamble from Melton Mowbray, the handler, seven-year-old Cocker Spaniel Cross. First of 17 medium dogs that we are about to see. And Mo going at it. Great gusto. The opening 15 seconds. Great 
So just to clarify that again, that the uh, medium championship course and the small championship course are exactly the same. The only thing that will have changed would be uh, the course time possibly, and also the, the height of the obstacles. Always worth pointing out, and sadly that is an elimination for Mo and for Emma, the first of the medium dogs. Reluctantly, Gary Murphy raising his hands. And again, uh, Mo and Emma say, if we're eliminated, that will do for us. Always, always have to look at the handler, of course, not the dog. This is classic handler Lauren Langman from Oakhampton in Devon, seven years old, miniature American Shepherd, classic second time at Crafton has won a couple of tickets. And Lauren, regular appearances here, of course, and very, very experienced. Classic making good time, good progress. Even though, as Graham has said, the jumps are raised a bit for these immediate dogs, clearing them with ease. Look at that. In that tunnel, that way, heads towards us, and then the tight turn back into the tunnel and round. And finally, over, over the irons at the end, 38 point naught and clear. That has uh, set the standard for the medium dogs, Graham. It has miniature Australian Shepherds uh, just starting to get slightly more popular. They can be quite difficult to train, however, when you get a good one like this, uh, they just are excel. They're very motivated, uh, they, they jump well, and they're very noisy as well. Toto, <laughs> you're looking at. Her medium dog, Natasha Y, first time at cross qualifying as a result of a great first season of competition. Bit of a wacky hairdo that matches uh, her char his uh, character as well. Natasha Wise and Toto, Natasha's medium dog. Tunnel, Toto, tunnel. <laughs> Terrific. Terrific style and sound effects. Thank you for that, Toto. Going through the weaves, over the U move. And then that quick part of the course over those uh, three jumps on that top, on that far side as we look at it on our left. Into the tunnel. Round just five faults on that one. That's unfortunate. Back round through the tunnel again, but the time is going to be really, really good. Oh, missing that just jump as well. My goodness me. Often see that feel the job is done and it isn't, so that's 10 faults for Natasha and for Toto. Yeah, working Cocker Spaniels uh, love life. Unfortunately, not just giving that one enough air, and that's what she's going to be most disappointed in because five faults could possibly well see you into the final, but uh, 10 faults could be struggling. Winnie. Baller Collie Cross Miniature Poodle, Liz Carpenter from Manningford, the handler. Agility trainer is Liz, based in Wiltshire. Second time at Crufts, but the first time competing in the Crufts Championship then for Winnie. So Liz has uh, had a really good couple of years. Uh, she's really come on leaps and bounds uh, she's got a couple of really really good dogs here at the moment been a member of uh, team gb i fully expect her to be a member this year although it's not my decision uh, but you can see why she, she's there the dog is very keen you can hear her giving shouting the commands the only thing you can't do in agility is actually touch the dog but you can say as much as you want to them and uh, whatever winnie has been uh, told by uh, liz there has worked a treat this morning 40 and uh, no penalties, so second place, quite a few dogs still to come. But that, uh, that'll do for those two. Again, the big the big uh, reason for competing is avoid of elimination, pick up as few points as possible, and uh, keep a bit of powder dry for the later rounds. Endeavour, Dev Dev, Laura Chapman from Salisbury, the handler, and they won the Crufts singles on Friday. So 
already a winning crufts then for dev dev or endeavor and laura chapman you talk about those gb selections presumably a good performance here at crufts at the greatest dog show in the world doesn't exactly hurt you too much when it comes to gb selection graham no they won't and uh, the manager will be watching these uh, and he'll have been looking at last year's uh, crufts as well to get them actually onto the squad in the first place so these all count towards uh, qualifications uh, for the squad very difficult decisions he has to make here um, but he does a good job we've had uh, a really good medal haul over the last year or so well despite that bit of hesitation going into the tunnel that 38 seconds is good enough for first place for laura and for dev Dex. and just just to explain that the name you see coming up at the bottom of the screen agility champion lear dream beard dream come true is the kennel club name not their pet name all the dogs competing here have to be uh, registered with the kennel club either as a breed dog or on the activity register Little Miss Woo Woo then is the kennel club name. Willow is the pet name. Amelia Nicholson, the handler from Stone in Staffordshire. Crossbreed this one, seven years of age. No matter where you're watching, a very warm welcome. By the way, you have been tuning in, in on YouTube in your massive numbers, really up by something like 40% uh, I've been told, well over half a million and counting so far. The popularity of Crufts is worldwide and we appreciate your company, each and every one of you. Thanks for joining us. Coming towards the end of the round then for Amelia uh, and for Willow. 40.5, clear again, fourth as it stands. Yep, and look at the dog slicing that jump, turning as qu quickly as it can. These competitions are win won on tight turns and straight lines. You're looking at Topic, five-year-old Cocker, Joe Gleed from Coventry. Topic, we understand, doesn't like putting the brakes on. Bit of a speed freak. Let's see. Really great trainer, loves her Cocker Spaniels, and just, just keep an eye on her if you can. She makes sure that the dog's either pointing at the weaves. You go and do those weaves. No leaving the dog in no doubt what she wants next. And there we are, just the double hands pointing to the ground, saying, just steady up, listen to me. We've got to get some tight turns in here. Down to that quick uh, part of the course, and, and this is a, a very impressive marker, as I think that, um, unfortunately, clattering that jump and picking up the five fours but it probably keep it just to um, with the five that will be okay and over the final jump what a shame just a little blemish of that jump there but they could well be in the final shake-up good joe and topic yep five faults is not the end of the world but again in just in an effort to try and get such a tight turn just got caught up you see the jump actually falling over the pole coming off it's all done so that everything is done as safely as we possibly can Absolutely, the safety and the care of the dogs, absolutely the paramount importance throughout Crufts. Over 20,000 dogs here at Crufts, of course, and this is one of them, Elisa, bearded collie, nine years of age, Charlotte Baker, the handler, from, uh, comes from um, near Shepton Mallet, running together for nearly 18 months, these two, first championship class in December. Very special dog is Eliza gives everything 110%, as indeed you have to if you're going to succeed here at Crufts. Great, great style, two footing through the wheels. Good pace as well. Like the, like the look of this dog, Craig. Yeah, and some animal. Top quality dog. Just to remind you that uh, to qualify here, you need to have won a championship class within the preceding 12 months. They're all grade seven dogs, all top of the tree here. And you can see why. She's just taking her time, steadying the dog down there, turning tightly into that tunnel. Now she'll be calling the dog away over the last jump. And it's very respectable time, 39.551. Uh, and more importantly, clear round. Clear round into the top three as, as well. You can see the high quality of uh, these dogs, and you can see already that this uh, competition as hold is, uh, is just simmering really, really nicely, and it's going to come to the boil later in the day. Great images, as ever, from all our camera team here at Crufts. This is Izzy, eight years of age. Harriet Harding, the handler, fifth time competing at Crufts. Working sheepdog, this one. Thank you. 
looks yeah. good over the you move they really are clearing these jumps spectacularly well very few failures very few faults we're seeing and just an underlining and endorsing oh dear as i was saying endorsing the quality of these dogs that we're seeing here but it can all change in a blink of an eye and you can get an elimination and that is the fascination and in some ways the brutality of this sport as well graham it, it is, a, and as you say, just the wrong side there, but I think we'll blame Jim for that one. Just as he was saying, very few faults, um, she gets eliminated. And there we are, crossed arms is a universal signal for the dog has been eliminated. I'll take that one. Liz Carpenter, second dog with Maggie. Border Collie Cross Miniature Poodle, three years of age. His agility trainer based in Wiltshire. Hometown Manningford. Second time competing at Crofts. First time in the championship. So quite a moment this then for, for Maggie and for Liz. Sound effects courtesy of Maggie as well. On you go, Graham. I was just going to say, uh, they're not faulted for uh, barking. They're just so excited about doing this. They really do love it. Uh, as I say, it does make life a little bit exciting there for the, for the handlers, but she's keeping on top of this dog really well. She knows the dog better than anybody else. This is going to be a stupendous time. Into the 37th, Jim. Absolutely. Only one into the 37th so far. First place for Liz Carpenter and for Maggie. An excellent performance. And all the competitors watching on the screens outside will say, hey, that is not bad at all. We'll have to watch out for them later in the day. Munchie, Border Collie. Dalton Meredith, the handler. And Munchie has had one or two health problems throughout her life. And uh, Dalton saying, really, she should be known as the comeback kid. Running as fast as she can. Quite amazing dog. Tremendous bond, a tremendous partnership, tremendous affection between Dalton and Munchie. And Munchie making a really good start. Over the U move, a slightly wide circle there. Then that rapid part over those three jumps. Tight right hander into the tunnel. Be back in the tunnel in a moment after negotiating this one. That's a tighter turn as well. The time is good. It's really good to complete the round. 38.8 for Dalton and uh, for Munchie. Into the top four they go. Watch out for them later on, eh, Graham? It was, yep. Very nice, very safe round. But again, still very quick. Munchie barking his enjoyment again all the way around, yep. Gift, Border Collie, nine years of age. Sharon Springford, the handler from Swanley near Seven Oaks. Part of last year's silver medal winning team at the European Open. Nine years of age, Gift. Very much in her prime, would you say, or slightly over it? Well, no, this dog actually probably is in its prime, but uh, just want to mention the Team GB silver medal at the European Championships in the team. Fantastic achievement. The level of world agility at the moment is just at an all-time high, and it, we are doing fantastically well at the moment with our Team GB uh, competitors. Absolutely right, and there's a great future for agility as well if you watch the Young Kennel Club competition yesterday. Some terrific ability in there and great ability from Shannon and from Gift as well. Again, this will be good, this will be clear, 38.2. Fine performance uh, from those two into the top four and they will hope to go all the way in this competition, Graham. Fully expect them to and I fully expect them to be in the mix uh, in the final, but uh, dogs are dogs, Jim, as I'm always saying. <laughs> This is Tiger, Tony's second dog. Yeah, you're a bit on a loop with that one, Graham, I'd have to say. Dogs are dogs. We might have to remove that one from your vocabulary in future. You take a yellow card for dogs are dogs. That's harsh, one apiece. Harsh. That's one apiece this morning, OK? It's, it's, it's a slightly earlier start from us, so you can forgive us for being a little bit tetchy now and again. Tony Dawkins and Tiger then. Mini American Shepherd, Chapel Hill in Lincoln.
But again, Graham, we, we always look forward to this competition, joking apart, don't we? And what we have seen so far, it really is going to be something special this afternoon. It is, and in all seriousness, um, the reason I say it so often is it's so unpredictable. <laughs> they really are so unpredictable. People look at this and they go, oh, this is easy. It's not. No, there is so much skill uh, put into the training and controlling these dogs. It, it really is beyond belief. Absolutely right. And uh, we had a little comedy duo here that I can't rule that can't ruin it for you. 37.6 the time clear and well done, Tony. Second place for Tony. Yeah, a little comedy duo. We mustn't reveal who they are because it's going to be a surprise when the actual performance comes up. And they said, wow, this is difficult. This is really tough. Handling dogs like this and we are seeing the best of the best here today as ever. Willow and James Adams working cocker from Ettington on the silver medal team as well in the Euros that we've been speaking about. And James and Willow's third year on the Crufts carpet here. Yep, uh, this pairing's got one speed, well, basically two speeds, stop and go. Um, really does attack a course. Uh, there's no hint of uh, playing it safe to try and get into the final. He's going out to win this bit, he's going out to win the next bit, and he's going out to win the final. That's an interesting point you make, really, because it's all very well us up here saying they've got to conserve their energy for a bit. They've got quite a lot of work to do, but if a dog's only got one piece, that's impossible, isn't it? <laughs> it is. And sometimes if you try and interfere too much with what the dog's doing, you just encourage mistakes. But you can see this is a fabulous really round. Awesome. My goodness me, that is quality. Proper, proper quality. James Adams and Willow second place. Gary Murphy deserved <laughs> applause for that. That is real, real good quality. Um, over that uh, final I am's well done this is uh, Zico Jr Australian working Kelpie the handler those of you who watch regularly Nigel Staines Mr Kelpie we have dubbed in Nigel well, he tells us he's retired but he's not retired from Crufts competing in the judiciary for 31 years his 20th year here and um, I must confess, I've got a soft spot for, for the Kelpers. I think they've, it's a wonderful sight when they attack the course here at Crufts. Strengths and weaknesses of Kelpies in agility, Graham? Uh, when they're good, they're good. When they're bad, they're not, not so good. Uh, but they can be quite difficult to train. Uh, people got, got them um, in, in quite large numbers a while back, and then they soon discovered that you've got to be a really, really good trainer to uh, get the best out of them. So not the quickest time that we've seen, but it is uh, clear as the stand. And, uh, that's fine. 45.5, no penalties for, for, for Nigel and, and for Zico, just outside of the top 10 as things stand. It, really great to see Nigel here. He is one of the sports uh, great characters. There he is. Look very, very happy with what's <laughs> gone on. Penultimate medium dog, Cruz. Another working cocker, Lauren Langman. Fantastic dog, born and bred to do agility. First time at Crufts, heart of gold. And everyone around Lauren Langman and around Oakhampton in Devon, really proud of Cruz. Doesn't really want to go down because he wants to get on with this. Anyway, go, go. haven't seen a great deal of this dog, if I'm honest with you. But uh, Lauren always produces uh, well-motivated and noisy dogs. <laughs> Ooh, oh, well motivated and sadly I'm picking up some faults there, correcting that, that fault. We'll have a little look at that at the end. It's interesting where these faults occur and I think that's, to my mind, the first time we've had one at that part of the course. Graham will explain all when the round is completed, 30 seconds and, and those, just those five faults then for Lauren and for Cruz through the tunnel and a tight turn to go back through the tunnel and over that final jump so the time is reasonable 44.3 and the five faults for Cruz and uh, Lauren Langman uh, and there we go the dog she didn't want the dog to do that comes back around the most impressive part of this is that bit where she stops the dog back jumping if she'd have back jumped she'd have had an elimination she rescued it so quickly you've got to be so quick thinking about these things uh, but she still had the five faults and there we are that clenched fist the judge is going you were lucky to get away with that and she was 
Last medium dog then, Blythe Fox, the handler, Roo, the reigning champions. Fifth year at Crufts for Roo. Uh, Blythe recovering actually from a broken ankle that happened back in January, not so long ago. So Blythe doing really well to be here. From Coventry, these two. What will the champions produce? Uh, they're, they're hardy people. She's not going to give up the chance of appearing on this magical green carpet uh, to defend the uh, defend her title. Nothing. She'd have been here on crutches, Jim. Let me tell you. <laughs> well, she's doing pretty well at the moment, and so is the Rue. It's 34. Let's just watch the, the clock ticking away. If this will put them up there or thereabouts. 40.4 and clear for Blythe and for Rue into the top ten. Should be quite happy with that. Dog bark and it's every other weave, having a little bark. Lovely tight turn there, only just clearing that bark, as long as it stays up. Let's just give you the uh, top five then. All these scores are will, accumu will accumulate, of course, through throughout the day. Liz Carpenter, James Adams, Tony Dawkins, Laura Chapman and Lauren Langman, our top five as it stands. Next up is Kalik. Huh. Well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. First up, the weave. Nice quick turn. It's a perfect start. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident run up to the seesaw. Yeah, faultless so far, but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kalik, a compact SUV. Best in show. Skoda. Well, good morning once again, folks. Wasn't that a brilliant start to the final day of Crufts 2023 here in the main arena? The presentation for our agility, jumping in the small and the medium coming up in just a few moments' time. Uh, we're also just getting the course set for our rescue dog agility, which is on the way as well. Now, 2023 marks a very special year because this year the Kennel Club is celebrating its 150th anniversary. Let's take a look at how the Kennel Club is continuing its important work. I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if it weren't for Ellie. Every day, I put my life in Milo's paws. Chewie never left his side. Without him, I wouldn't have my husband. And she's still here today. Because of the dog. He's everything, not just to me, to my whole family. Day in, day out, dogs change lives. That's why, for 150 years, the Kennel Club and its members have been making a positive difference for dogs and their owners. We guide new owners, helping them to find the right dogs, brought into the world by responsible and caring breeders who want the very best for them. Giving puppies like Barney, a flat-coated retriever, the best possible chance to lead a healthy, happy life. Thanks to DNA testing, we've eradicated diseases such as CLAD, 
an inherited blood disorder in Iris Setters. So Sky, Marta and Pear, as well as all Iris Setters, can now lead healthier lives. There's always more to be done, which is why we continue to lead the way in helping breeders eradicate inherited diseases, improving dog health for generations to come. And we do all of this because when you have healthy dogs living with loving owners, the real magic of dog ownership begins. We're helping to build that unique bond between dog and owner through a range of training and activities that bring joy in the best and even the most difficult of times. Haley lost her sister, but spending time with her dog Ellie, doing the activities they love, agility and heel work to music, got her through her grief. They've even been to Crufts, our most famous event for anybody who loves dogs. And thanks to Petlog's microchipping database, we're making sure that your canine companions have the best chance of being reunited with their loving families should the worst happen. Like Jazz, who was reunited with her family after eight long and heartbreaking months. <laughs> So thank you for being on this journey as we work hard to make sure we continue to make a positive difference for dogs and their owners. One hundred and fifty years of the Kennel Club's fantastic work. And here's to the next one hundred and fifty years. OK, it is now presentation time. So a fantastic start to our final day of Crufts here and our Agility Championship in the small and medium jumping. And please welcome to present our winners, uh, Sue Garner of the Kennel Club Board. Please give Sue a big round of applause. Thank you. The winner of the small jumping, Martin Reed with Get It With Eager To Work. Many congratulations. Thank you. Cheers. Thank really you. And in the medium height, the winner of The Jumping This Morning, with Mosley Wood, Maggie, Agility Warren Gold, Liz Carpenter! Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And now, keep that applause going, folks, because it's lap of honour time! Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. 
<laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. First up, the weave. Nice quick turns. It's a perfect start. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident run up to the seesaw. Yeah, faultless so far, but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamuk, our compact SUV. Our best in show. Skoda. Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. My chronic pain began to develop when I was a teenager, and then when I turned 16, I became very unwell and didn't get better. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity Dogs for Good. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day to day activities because of the pain. But I've started a legal apprenticeship, so Albert is um, helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. I feel really positive about the future with Albert by my side. To me, Asher is a real hero dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic path, but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. When Asher came to us, he came to us because he'd clearly had a number of homes that had been unsuccessful. And I suspect something quite horrible had happened to him because he actually became really quite scared and would scream in fear. So it took quite some time to get him to see his real personality. Asher is a bi-detection dog for the charity, which means that he uses his nose to smell human disease. He was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. I would certainly uh, call Booty a hero for myself and the whole, whole family. Booty uh, is a Labrador now, going on two years of age. Booty seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time. Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after, after uh, Booty came into her for, forever home. Chemotherapy is difficult for anyone to go through, a bit more difficult for a younger child. Booty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. I can't imagine a life without Booty and she's made the biggest change to my life and I don't even know how I coped without having her because she's been amazing to me. She means the world to me because if I didn't have her I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. In my eyes, Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Bull Terriers are amazing dogs. Stella's nine years old. She's been working as a drugs dog for the last eight and a half years and she's just recently retired. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier in the country to become a police dog. Her search drive was immense. I thought, well, I'd be stupid not to give her a chance, although she wasn't the typical Spaniel or, or Labrador that, that we normally use. It's normally a six-week course to train the dogs, and uh, Stella completed her course in four weeks. So when she finds the substance, she's trained to freeze. Obviously, with drugs with powder, we don't want her interfering or ingesting anything you know, to keep her safe and also to keep the evidence safe. Her first search, she searched a house and uh, indicated behind a dog bed, and there was £25,000 in cash hidden. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. I think Bertie's a hero dog because he inspires me to keep on going and sleeping outside. It's day 6, 11, 142, 335. My name is Ashley Owens and I'm 13 years old. 
I've been raising the money for Paws Rescue so they can build a shelter for the dogs so they can keep them all warm. Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me for over 150 nights. I think that's pretty impressive for a dog. We are amazed by what Bertie and Ashley have been doing and we really hope this inspires other dogs and children to have that bond and to do something special with them and maybe go out and raise money together. I don't think it's just me raising the money, it's we're both raising the money. Spreading the awareness and the importance of um, adopting an abandoned dog, that's really my goal.
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome back to Crufts 2023. Day four here in the main arena, Toy and Utility Day, and of course, best in show to come this evening. Which one of our Magnificent Seven will be best in show? We will find out tonight. Uh, we have got lots to come here in the main arena here at Crufts 2023. The Southern Golden Retrievers will be here a little bit later this morning. Always a favorite here at Crufts. Uh, we've also got our Good Citizen Dog Scheme display. West Midlands Police are back later too. And there's lots of agility still to come. And speaking of agility, we are now gonna see something very, very special. If you have ever adopted a rescue dog, you will know just how rewarding it can be to give a loving home to a dog who may have not had one previously. Some dogs will have the most horrendous start in life, and it is so, so rewarding to give a dog a loving home and to adopt a rescue dog. So I'm now gonna hand you over to the queen of rescue dogs to take us through the rescue dog agility. Please give a huge round of applause to Val Phillips. Jim Rosenthal Welcome alongside uh, the outstanding Graham Partridge welcoming you back We've to Crufts 2023 for, for Rescue Dog uh, Agility. Now this is a really important uh, part of the Crufts calendar. This It's a display to highlight the fantastic work and success stories of some of the dog rescue organizations and many agility handlers actually take on rescue dogs and compete very successfully with them as well. It's a fabulous activity to take part in with a dog, and if you've got a physically tired dog or a mentally tired dog or a dog who is easier to live with, and that makes agility an ideal activity for rescue dogs and encourages a bond the training promotes. So a really important part of the canine world, this grand. It is, um, and although this is a fairly light-hearted display uh, and we're going to see an awful lot of fun, but it comes with a really, really important message. And the message to me to start with would be, um, if you're thinking about getting a dog, do your research. Have I got time? Does my family life, you know, really uh, help me or promote getting a dog? Um, it, and if you don't think you can support one or make the time for one, then please don't get one. Again, on a slightly serious note, note Graham, on the back of the pandemic and, and things like that, when a lot of people took in dogs, are we seeing the other side of the coin now where people are finding they haven't actually got that time and that uh, ability to give the, these wonderful dogs care and attention, and that's creating a problem? I, I think I think we did yes to a certain extent, um, but there are a lot more people working from home now, so that that's beneficial to the dogs as well. So, uh, but so I think what we're going to see now, we're going to see a number of rescue organisations representative. Uh, the first competitor here is uh, Kaz Sanders with Darcy. This is the Collie Cross, and they're representing the Val Grays Border Collie Rescue. Uh, Val Grays Border Collie Rescue was established in 1978. It's a registered society, um, and it's based in Surrey. So no, no times or anything like that in this. It's just a, a great opportunity for these lovely dogs who have been neglected to come here and enjoy their share of the spotlight and enjoy a lot of care and, and warmth as well uh, fr from everyone here at Crufts. We're about to see, uh, just wait and see who is next to appear. And every dog lover, Graham, must really hurt when you see a dog not being treated and looked after properly. So I think the first you're, you're, you're absolutely correct, but the important message here that all the dogs we're seeing here today have really fallen on their feet. They yes, really they have. have. They've been taken in by people um, with such a generous nature, um, and they want to try and correct some of the mistakes. Um, that they, they are the they are the these are the lucky ones, Jim. This is Mitzi, I'm told. <laughs> but as we... A real contrast, this, to, to what we're used to seeing on the green comet. Mitzi and uh, Sally Han. A real contrast, this, because most of the competition that we see, fractions of a second are important, and we're looking at... Uh, at have they done this? Have they taken that correctly? Oh dear, they've taken the wrong course. Oh dear, they've been eliminated. This is, this is just pure, pure fun, pure enjoyment, 
and really underlining the, the recovery to all the dogs, including Mitzi here, Graham. Yes, all dogs need structure in their life, and, and, and training them to do something occupies their mind, um, and, and that's fairly evident here. This dog is doing really, really well. Um, so, a lot, a lot of our agility dogs that we see in, in the really competitive um, competitions are rescue dogs. Mitzi and Sally then completing the course. Everybody here is a dog lover, and we can't anticipate. And as the crowd continues to build with so much to look forward to, um, this is Bear that we're looking at. And Val, Val Tomlin. And, um, a Pomeranian. Beautiful looking dog. And he's loving this, Jim. He's off. You don't see many Poms doing agility, but I don't know why. He's having a great time here up say, over that A-frame. No, he's doing yeah. really, really well. I love to see uh, different breeds doing agility. Uh, and if you've got a pom and you think, oh, I can't do agility, it's not for me, just look at this little chap. He's having a ball. Well, this one, yeah, and, and showing a, a huge amount of promise as well. Excellent. Happily ever after dog rescue, small and uh, family run firm in the outskirts of Bristol. And uh, both the rescue and sanctuary run by volunteers, Kerry and, uh, and Andrew. Really passionate about animals, uh, these, these two, and uh, happily ever after dog rescue out here being represented at Crupt. So just as a little uh, aside to that, Jim, um, they also do quite a lot of good work with rescuing dogs from abroad as well, especially Romania, places like that. Uh, and I should just remind everybody that, uh, and this is not a really a, a financial plug, but all of these things are charities. So if, you, if you've got either some time that you can go and help these charities out with or some financial help, I know they would be very, very grateful. They're all on the internet. Just go ahead and use a search engine and put in the names of the rescue organisations yep. that are represented here today. Not just the three we've got Oh, here. hold on a moment. Pe Peekaboo. Well, Kate, who knows a thing or two about uh, dogs on my left up here in the commentary position, said, said uh, a little bit nervous. Well, perhaps they're relieving a few nerves there. Can't. <laughs> oh, he's going to have a go at the other side now, Jim. Can't. There he goes. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> OK. Well, when you've got to go, you've got to go. No, we're not. Uh, there, was, there, was, there was a fear, particularly among our production staff, that he was going to hide below the A-frame. And uh, well, I, 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 oh, there we go. That's the hat trick. That's the hat trick. Good effort. I think they're also getting a bit concerned about some of the, the cameras we've got down by the tunnels and the microphones as well. But. Uh, <laughs> But uh, on, a, on a positive note, what I do like is that she's just letting him uh, have some fun. There's no force or degree of yeah. coercion at all. Uh, he's just having a great time. <laughs> and uh, those of you um, slightly, slightly concerned, everything is being cleaned up and sanitised, etc., etc. But when prepped underneath the older A-frame there by Peekaboo, I feared the worst. Good on you, Peekaboo, just have a look round. <laughs> Mackie. Mack was um, being advertised along with his brother, uh, 50 pounds. Sam, the handler of Mackie. Well, sort of follow that, I guess, in some ways. And uh, we have to say happy birthday as well to Sam. What else would you want to be doing on your birthday morning than uh, strutting your stuff on the green carpet at Crufts? 
Doing very nicely here yeah, as well. Mackie's got Mackie. Shooting around. Little Yorkshire Terrier. And um, loves life and uh, loves competing. And uh, oh, you never, I don't know, I have a little look at into, into my eye, Grand. You think that's got a future, that little dog? Yeah, gives him his ball as well. That's what he does this for the reward of the ball. All done with repetition and reward, all done with kindness, treats, positive reinforcement, they call it, Jim. We've got your treats out the background, by the way. Amy and Nira. Neva, that is Neva. Just to say, this is a rescue dog agility, in case you're just joining us on YouTube, a sizable Crufts Club that exists uh, on, on YouTube. Grade seven in agility, this little cockapoo here, so uh, very, very good dog. And this is not a competition, this is a, it's an exhibition, really, for the rescue for dogs who have been rescued and are loving every moment of it. It absolutely revitalised. It is. And just as she leaves the arena, I owe Amy a huge apology because last year I called her by the wrong name. So, public apology from Graham. Public apology heard. Well, by millions, Graham. So you can't can't really improve on that. Betty. Little toy poodle and Lindsay, the handler from Wood Green. Wood Green opened the doors in, in North London back in 1924, transforming pets' lives there and the lives of their owners as well. Humble beginnings grown into one of the UK's largest pet charities. And it's one of the uh, largest rehoming centres in Europe as well. Well done to everybody at Wood Green. Over 4,000 dogs cared for last year. Now, all dogs need uh, something to do in life. Uh, these dogs uh, are doing agility, but there are a whole host of activities that you can do with your dog. Scent work, you can get, you've got hoopers, working trials, here work to music, uh, rally, and that's just the name, but a few. So if, you, right. if you've got a dog, got a rescue dog, Get out and do something with it uh, and keep it uh, keep it amused. This dog's having an absolute great time out there. <laughs> Tunnel? I don't think so. It'll sniff around and uh, in and out of the tunnel. Yeah, good one. All good. Terrier Bilbo is next. Came into Battersea as a puppy, went straight on Foster and found a home with Peter. Lord Bilbo of Berkshire. Berkshire spelt with, a, with an A as opposed to an E. Second visit to Croft, so we're, we're expecting a few uh, sound effects from the Lord. Oh, look, that could be the start of a proper, a real proper agility round, that. Oh, this, is a, this is good, this one, Graham. It is, and it could be that these are dogs that compete, compete regularly, um, but they're just strutting their stuff and displaying what you can do with a rescue dog. Cool, look at that. That wouldn't be out of place in, in the highest class of competition, really. Well, there you go. Great variety in this. One entry took, uh, took three unscheduled pit stops, and that one just <laughs> zoomed round. Fantastic. So this is Sue White next. Uh, no Sue, and she is a regular competitor in agility. Um, yes, all right, yes, Sue's in a wheelchair, but uh, that's no, that is it. it doesn't bar her from actually doing agility really competitively. This is Lollipop, Corgi Collie, now 13 years old. It's been here on a number of occasions. Um, loves life, lives with 10 other dogs. Yeah, it was Sue. 
uh, just can't resist rescuing dogs that have had a hard luck story. Uh, she's the owner of Whirlwind Agility Club. As I say, got many rescue dogs. Um, but unfortunately, so hopefully they're going to get a real good round of applause. This will be Lollipop's last run in agility. She's putting her paws up, Jim. Deservedly so as well. Excellent combination between Sue and uh, a lollipop. Well, you don't need me to tell you what's going on there, do you? And Sue's just looking at the dog going, really? The main ring at Crofts so on the green carpet. I've got to get this right. Farewell appearance after many years here. And uh, I guess keen to leave us with something memorable. And we will not forget what Lollipop did as uh, the after or just before saying goodbye to Crufts. <laughs> well done, though. well done, Sue. And a nice, nice little bar. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and still, and still smiling. She's uh, going to go out and have a good laugh about that. The what, back, more yeah, exactly. what more can you do? Exactly. What more can you do? Katie, all right, and uh, Bertie, little cock-up, two-year-old, lovable Bertie, bought to Wood Green at five months old by his breeder, already had mobility issues, was very wobbly and unsteady on his back legs, and Katie, Wood Green staff member, took Bertie on foster with the veterinary team, wondered why uh, Bertie was um, so wonky, as it were, nothing to be concerned about, not in pain, and green light to be rehomed part of the doghouse on channel four as well and uh, now wasn't the right match and so stay with katie and it's now his forever home there's quite a few instagram fans around the world as well it is but i don't know whether you uh, you actually saw just now but she's actually got some food in her hand we don't usually encourage that in the agility ring but yeah. it's all about rewarding the dog at the time for doing something good keeping its confidence up and just said yeah you're doing really good and if you do really good you get a treat so that's brilliant yeah brand new to agility is Bertie and uh, well we ent entitled to bend those very strict rules in this aren't we yeah well done just two years of age well done Katie there we go Okay, Joe Lyons and Fergus, four-year-old Jack Russell. <laughs> you know a thing or two about these dogs, don't you, Graham? <laughs> I do, and uh, just to prove you right, he's uh, having a little wander around the arena, just seeing what's going on. <laughs> he wants he wants the toy or the, the treat that uh, obviously his dad's holding here, but no, he says, we're going to do this. Look, there we are, he's got his clenched fist, he's obviously got something in there. <laughs> Fergus, a real character, a bit of a showman, plays to the crowd whenever, whenever he can. Very sick last summer, apparently, well and truly on the mend and enjoying life again is uh, four-year-old Jack Russell. Fergus. And Fergus, a neat and convincing and confident style when he turns his mind to it. <laughs> there we go, there goes the toy, that's the reward, brilliant. What a jump that is. <laughs> so we could We've got a selection here. Just and the one, the jumps are up. one or two little alterations as we, as we move up aside to the medium dogs, Lizzie Lang okay, and Yogi. So We've got on the line, waiting just for the jumps to be done. We have Yogi. From the game from the Happily Ever Lizzie After uh, dog rescue. And he is from 
Dumped in a bin bag, would you believe, at the Rescue. side of the road in Romania, He's this seven one. Years old. Yogi was Lizzie uh, adopted him in 2015. Clever and talented Adam, dog. Had an old cruciate uh, injury as well, so now semi-retired from agility, now jumping for fun. Um, and Lizzie also likes to snuggle up in the duvet at home and... Uh, I mean, what a story, what a story that is, he recovered from a bin bag. Yeah. And you could just see, just, it's just looking at his so handler there, just, handler means the world to him, you can just see that. And on a serious note, again, Jim, just for a second, um, if you're looking to get a dog and you think that you could uh, give a really good home to some of these uh, dogs that have had a bad start line, Please go along to your local rescue centre and at least have a look at the dogs, and I'm sh I bet you you'll come back well, with them. Yeah. That is a. That is. Oh, we're off. Oh, there we go. There we go. <laughs> Why not? But, uh, have you got any food? Are you sure you haven't got any food? Are you sure? Have you got food? No. Nope. Well, listen. What a journey. What a journey from a. Oh. Every, having fun, enjoying life, making the most of things on the green carpet at Cruft, hunting out the treats as well. That's what he wanted, yep. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Muppet already running with Liz, eight years of old, of age. Muppet. She was 11 months old when she arrived. Shih Tzu mixed this one. Several homes in Ireland, 11 months old when she arrived and fostered on behalf of the Valkyries Border Collie Rescue by Liz. Couldn't part with her. Unpredictable, this one. Great character. Cheeky and naughty. And actually, for those of you with a good memory, this one is the dog in the recent Nintendo Switch Christmas commercial. So, um, Used to the bright lights, used to the cameras. This is Polo, handled by Tess, five years training. of age, crossbreed, rescued by Tess, Polo, working hard on training in Wood Green. If you need cheering up in the morning, Jim, sure just well look at that face. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Fantastic. This Polo, and this one's got a little bit of a, a dramatic background as well, performed on stage at uh, a London theatre for Autism's Got Talent. Polo, Polo helped support her Tess with her autism as well. So wonderful, wonderful combination. This, these two. Oh. Oh. And looking after Tess as well. That's a lovely image. That. Yep. Tess is fine. And we, and we, we, and we always say. And we always say that uh, uh, the handler's first thought is for the dog. Well, there, Polo's first thought was for the handler. That's the bond between dog and handler for you. Lovely dog. Lovely dog. Done loads and loads of competitions. And fancy going for the London Theatre. Yeah, total respect, total admiration then for Tess and for Polo in this rescue dog agility. Both supporting each other. Emotional moments out there. Okay, next we have <laughs> oh, a Valgrave dog, Bill Metcalf and Buddy. Now, Buddy is delicious. Buddy is a three year old Australian shepherd. This is absolutely uh, stunning. He's been with Bill since he was just six months old. This is Buddy and Bill, three year old and Australian Buddy shepherd. Been with Bill since now. six months old. But the only just starting uh, his agility career because of the restrictions of, of COVID. Buddy is Bill's sixth rescue dog. 
Yeah, I've known Bill for a long, long time. Uh, he's a regular agility competitor. They do fantastic work with these dogs. Um, and and he, he does do, or well, certainly did, agility really seriously, but this is just great fun for him. Loves his, loves his dogs, um, and, and this dog, let me know, well, they've all fallen on their feet, but they, yeah. this dog's having a great time. And again, you sort of look at, look at Buddy there and think with a bit more training, which they haven't been able to achieve, who knows, who knows how far Bill and Buddy could go. Next dog we have from Wood Green, and it's Brit This is Brit and Whisper, Whisper six years of age, English, English Springer Spaniel, Spaniel, again from Wood Green. Came to Wood Green at seven months old, got a bit excitable, couldn't get on with the other dogs. Wood Green volunteer Jenny spotted Whisper and thought she'd be. Whisper's won a lot of prizes. Now lives happily with her other dogs and uh, takes her own way around <laughs> the course. <laughs> well, it's probably easier like that, isn't it? I'll take the jumps which I want and. <laughs> But again, proper proper pace. There's a little there's a little bit of talent in that one, that is for sure. Okay, and I'm absolute enjoyment as that wagging tail underlies. Really do. I love to see India dogs Paris, having fun. Uh, that's what it's, that's what it's all about. Trudy and Indy bought a collie. Indy five years of age. Came in at just 14 weeks of age. Uh, old, uh, to a to plow graze because her owner's illness. <laughs> now a permanent <laughs> home with Trudy. Not the easiest of dogs, needs a lot of patience. Every dog so needs that, of course, as well. But does go to agility classes on a regular basis, so, so they know their way around these two. So just to remind you that we're, we're seeing uh, representations here from Val Grays, Wood Green and uh, Happily Ever After Dog Rescues. There are a lot more other deserving uh, charities out there. So uh, as you say, check the internet uh, and please do support these uh, organisations if you possibly can. Val Phillips there for guiding us through that wonderful display. It just goes to show how rewarding it is to take in a rescue dog into your life, to adopt them and give them the loving home they deserve and you can go on to achieve some brilliant things in the brilliant dog sport of agility and lots of other things as well. It really helps to build that bond between the owner and the rescue dog, uh, which can be a long process if you've ever adopted a rescue dog. Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's cool. eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. weave. Nice quick turns. It's a perfect start. Round the so spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so far, on. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamuk, yes. our compact SUV, Ooh. our best in show. Skoda. We will be finding out this evening. We're going to be welcoming back a little bit later this morning, around about 11.15. The Southern Golden Retrievers are going to be here. Uh, they are very much the red arrows of the dog world. It's always a fantastic performance and a delight. One of the highlights of Crufts every year. Delighted to welcome back the Southern Golden Retrievers around about 11.15. We're going to see a dog activities display before that as well. Later this afternoon, we have got the semi-final and the final of our fly ball competition. It was electric here in the main arena yesterday. Uh, for the quarterfinals of the fly ball. A new Crufts record was set yet again yesterday with an amazing time of 14.40 seconds. It was the Belgian team, the Roadrunners, who set the new Crufts record. Will they beat their own record today? Who knows? And who, of course, is going to win? We will find out. The semi final and the final will be taking place a little bit later on this afternoon in our fly ball championships. Plenty more agility to come as well. The agility championships continue. We had the jumping this morning. We will have the agility and then the final a little bit later on this evening as well. But now we're going to see a fantastic display from our good citizen dog scheme. This is a great way to learn obedience with your dog. To take us through, please welcome Mark Callis. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys. Welcome to our very short demonstration on the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Training Scheme. Five, 
four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. And welcome to the opening sequence of the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Training Scheme. And throughout the course of the next 20 minutes, we're going to look at various aspects of the scheme and how it fits into everyday life with our dogs. This scheme is all about having good and well-mannered dogs out in the public domain. And it's what we do with our dogs every day. So we're going to start over here with the foundations, the basics, teaching the basics. And we're looking at various aspects here. We've got some food manners taking place here. Again, you've got to feed your dog every day. We don't want our dogs demanding food or snatching food from us or anything like that. And we also want it to be nice and calm when it's out in public. And at the gold level of the scheme, we teach it to avoid food on the floor and things like that. We're teaching the dog to go to bed. Going to bed is not a punishment. It's a safe place for the dog. And the dog needs to know that it can go there and be safe. Here we're looking at uh, the beginnings of the stay. So leaving the dog in the stay, stepping away and back again. And we progress that throughout the scheme so that we can leave our dogs over a couple of minutes in a stay if need be. So that's our ba teaching the basics. Over here we're going to look at how we go through the recall. Recall is possibly one of the most important things that we need with our dogs out in public. We need to recall them from danger. Recall them when it's time to go home. Recall them from so many things. So we're looking at, first of all here, starting with the puppy recall, with the dog on the lead, and we're gradually extending how it comes back to us. We're looking at what we would do at the bronze level here. Handler stepping 10 paces away, and the dog returning. And at the silver and the gold levels, it's where we teach them to wait, and then the dog rejoins us. There's so many things out in the public domain that would require us to recall our dogs. And it's one of the most complained about uh, things from non-dog owners in parks and open spaces across the UK. 
that they'd been bothered by a dog and the owner couldn't get it back. So excellent recall here. So here we're looking at handling and movement. First of all, we're looking at a dog being rubbed down here with a towel. Maybe that it's been out in the mud or something like that. But we have to get our dogs used to being handled, being touched all over. At some point, it's going to go to the vet for the first time. Who's going to look in its eyes and its ears and, and its mouth and feel all over its body? And our dogs have to be comfortable with that and not show any type of adverse reactions. We're also looking at taking the dog over different surfaces here. When we get our new dogs home, they often haven't walked on pavement, grass, things like that. So we're getting them used to various different surfaces. We've got cardboard here, and we've got paper, and we've got flannel cloth. And we're looking at walking through doors and gates. Again, very, very important. We don't want to open the front door to take the dog for a walk, and it rushes out and causes some kind of harm to itself or to others. Or it could be that you're in a park or a countryside where we need to go through gates. And if we've got the dog on a lead, we don't want the dog dragging us through the gate. We want it to be nice and calm. So we're looking at various stages of how we take the dog through the gate. We've got a lovely little stay here. Oh, correct the dog, and then back, well done. And finally, we go out and about we're, obvious, we're often traveling through roads, pavements, footpaths, and things like that. So here we can see a road scene. <coughs> very, very busy with dog owners. How we're crossing the road. Dogs under control, keeping them on a loose lead, sometimes the occasional tight lead if it's required. We've got our dogs walking at different paces. Sometimes we need to speed up on our walk, sometimes slow down. Sometimes we have to wait. So we can see various things happening here that we learn throughout the scheme that's useful for everyday life. Now it may be that we go to the park in a car. Vehicle travel is very important and this is part of the scheme. The highway code says we have to keep dogs restrained in a car and not allow them to interfere with the driver. So let's see how we got on with this car drive to the park. Oh dear. So we've had an accident, emergency stop. The passengers stayed safe, they got seat belts on. Unfortunately, the dog was not restrained. It's gone flying towards the front of the car through the windscreen and it's not looking good for the dog. So that is not the correct way to travel with a dog. So here we're going to look at the scene again. This time, we've got a crate or a cage in the back of the car. And we're going to secure it in that. Handler sits in the front, and off they go. Oh dear, Heath, it's just not your day. So although we've had an accident, and although the dog might be a bit confused and frightened, it's been kept safe because it was in its small confined cage. Other methods could be that you use some kind of harness to plug into the inertia seatbelt system, or you might have a guard on your hatchback to stop the dog getting to the front. It's all about keeping the dog safe while we travel. And as I said earlier, this scheme is all about everyday life with our dogs. And everyday life involves us exercising our dogs. And we choose various places. We choose parks, commons, open spaces, heathlands, and things like that. So here we have a busy park scene. Lots going on. We've got lots of dog walkers here. We've got children and with their parents out walking the dogs. Some dogs on the lead, some dogs are off the lead. So we've got that heel walk that we saw earlier. We've got dogs walking at different paces, lots of different distractions as well. Okay, push chairs. We need to get our dogs socialized and used to push chairs. In the middle here, we've got a pond with ducks. How often in the summer, the dog owners, when their dogs are hot, encourage them to enter ponds and lakes without consideration for the wildfowl that's living there. 
So this is where we need good dog manners, dogs under control. Notice around the ponds, we keep the dog on a lead. But again, the recall is all important here as well. If you can see your dog running to the water, you should be able to recall it back to keep the wildfowl safe. Here we've got a group that are out in the countryside. And of course, in the countryside, we share the land often with farmers. Here we see a field with sheep and cows. So again, we keep our dogs under control. We always put the dog on a lead around livestock, especially if we're passing through fields as a right of way. But we shouldn't linger. I know these naughty people just took pictures, but we shouldn't be lingering around the fields. We shouldn't be causing any distress to the animals or the dogs. Now, you might have been out for a really long walk, perhaps with a group of friends, like-minded friends. And halfway round, you stop at a local pub in the garden to allow the dogs some rest and for you to have something to eat. And this is where the stay exercises that we saw earlier is used. So we've got the dogs in a stay position. Also the food manners. We expect that our dogs are not demanding food. They're not demanding attention. They're leaving us alone. Very, very nice scene. And it might be one that you often do with your dogs. So that's where food manners and stays are used in everyday life. Now, another important aspect which we looked at earlier was sending the dog to bed. Now, sending the dog to bed is not a punishment. It's a place in your home or in your environment where the dog can be safe. And there might be many reasons why you would send your dog to bed. Could be you have visitors that don't like dogs, they're afraid of dogs. It may be that you've broken something and you want the dog out of the way while you clear it up. Well, we've turned this into a bit of a game, sending the dog to bed, and we're gonna make it a race. We've got three heats and then a final. So all the people in the audience, this is your chance to clap and cheer and shout and scream and dance if you wish, and see who can be the first to send the dog to bed. So, handlers, send your dog to bed. Oh, it's a win over on the left. Our little King Charles there. First one into the final. Whoops, somebody wants to take their own bed. Next three dogs. Two Labradors flanking. Is it going to be a Labrador or are they going to be outdone? Handlers, send your dog to bed. Oh, very fast, very good. Oh, didn't like it. And it's the Labrador. Somebody was refusing to go to bed. Gone to bed now. Does that seem, seem familiar, folks? Right, one more heat before the final. Now we've got our speedster, Lilo, the fastest dog on the team. Don't blink because you might miss it. Keep your eyes on Lilo. Handlers, send your dog to bed. Nobody wants to go to bed. Who's going to go to bed? Oh, can't win it. Lilo, bless him, he went to bed. And I think, is that Barry at the end? Having a whale of a time. He's not ready for bed yet, full of beans. But that gives us a final now. So we've got three dogs. Winners of each heat. Who's it going to be? Our little King Charles was very quick earlier. Or is it gonna be one of the labs? Be ready, folks. Should be fast, this one. Handlers, send your dog to bed. Oh, we're not in bed. We're not in bed. We're not in bed. Nobody's in bed yet. Oh, is it going to be Barry at the end? Nobody's in bed. Oh, here we go. Oh, that was so close. Oh, I think that was a draw. That was hard work. But remember, folks, sending the dog to bed is not a punishment. It's a safe place in your home or your environment for your dog to go. 
Now next we're going to look at stopping the dog in an emergency. Sometimes when we're out, we need to stop the dog either running to us or away from us. It might be that we can see some danger that the dog's not aware of. Broken glass on the floor, nails, screws, something like that. Uh, maybe even a vehicle about to cross its path and it wouldn't know. So we're going to look at various ways, sometimes where the dog comes to us and we stop its travel, and sometimes when the dog's going away from us and we stop its travel. Notice though, we always go to the dog to put it on the lead once it's stopped. It's done what we asked it to do, then we get it under control quickly and safely. Very good stop there, running away for his toy, stopped by mum, pick the toy up, back to the dog, and then onto the lead which is close control. Here we see a dog coming towards us again, stopped on command. This time he's gone away, but we stopped him on the way back. There he stops and back on the lead. And lastly, going away again. and stopped from getting to the danger. Oh, he stood up. Yes, big round of applause. That was very well done, folks. Now, we decided to turn this into a bit of fun, especially when you're training at your training club, getting the dog to stop on command. We turned it into a game where we get the dog to stop on a five pound note. Tony here has a five pound note which is going to stick on the floor in the middle of the ring. The handler is going to leave the dog on this side, go to the other side of the arena, call the dog and get it to stop on the five pound note, just like we saw with the other dogs just now. But we're going to run through here with Andy and Alex. Alex playing the part of the dog today. So Andy's the dog handler, pointing out to Alex, there's the money land on it. Now I should make clear folks that if they land on the five pound note they get to keep it. Except for Alex because he'll only buy sweets with it. Stop and on the money. <laughs> Big round of applause for Alex. What a star. So that's how it works. Take a bow Alex. Well done. That's how it works. So first we've got Mandy with Safi. She's going to leave her there in the stay, walk to the far side of the ring, recall the dog, and if it lands on the five pound note, Mandy gets to keep it. And there's some lovely dog treat stalls between here and Hall 3. It's Evie, not Safi, sorry. Ah, oh, not quite, nearly there. Good try, still stop the dog though, and that's the important thing is we stop the dog in its return. Next, we've got Bourbon with Hev. Oops. Hang on a minute, Hev, I'll just move that. You okay with that? Hey! On a five pound note, well done. Next, we've got Hayley with Herbie. And are you saying something there? Okay. Ah. So what she's just said is she's going to gamble her fiver. If we make it £10, she'll get her dog to stop on a penny. Which I accept on behalf of the Kennel Club, even though I've got no authority on the budget. So we have a penny right in the middle of the arena. And Herbie Sausage has got to land on that penny for Hayley to win her 10 pounds. What do you think, folks? Will he do it? Hmm, it's a big ask. Fantastic. Stop the dog on a penny. And as I said earlier, back to the dog, under control, back on the lead. Well done. Big round of applause for them all. Stop the dog. Very, very important when out in public, the recall and the stop the dog, probably two of the most important things. 
And talking of recall, we're now going to look at all the dogs doing the recall. We saw it earlier in one of the opening scenes where we started looking at the different levels in the scheme. We're going to do it all together now, though, and we're going to cross over to the other side of the arena, having left our dog, first of all, in a sit position. So they've got the added distraction of dogs running towards them and people standing next to their, their, somebody else's dog. So handlers, leave your dogs. First of all, that's a fantastic stay with all the dogs. And recall your dogs. And all dogs, back to the right owners. Well done, folks. Now this time we're going to do that from a down position. So place all your dogs in the down position, please. Handlers, leave your dogs. Oh, some of these. Handlers, recall your dogs. Couple there, a little bit premature. And all the dogs are back with the right handlers. Give them a big round of applause, folks. So that's the recall. Very, very important when we're out in public to be able to recall our dogs. Well, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, we're coming towards the end of our very short demonstration on the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Training Scheme. If you'd like to know more about the scheme, we are in Hawk 3 today. Or you can look us up after Crufts on the website, www.thekennelclub.org.uk. I will now leave you with our closing routine, and it's been my pleasure to bring to you the Kennel Club's Good Citizen Dog Training Scheme. Thank you. Five, four, three, two, one. Thunderbirds are go. Amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, give a massive cheer to the Good Citizen Dog Scheme display team. And a huge thank you to Mark Callis for guiding us through that wonderful presentation of obedience and training.
Uh, and it really is a fantastic way if your relationship with your dog is not the best when it comes to training. A brilliant place to start is the Good Citizen Dog Scheme. Start with your bronze, work your way up to your gold, get on the more advanced stuff as time goes on and you get a little bit more experience. If you want to find out more, go and see uh, the brilliant work of the Good Citizen on their stand in the main hall or head over to the Canada Club website where you can get more details on joining the Good Citizen Dog Scheme with your dog. It really is very, very rewarding and it just helps build that bond with your dog and keeps your dog safe when you're out and about. So we've had an amazing uh, three days here at Crufts, day four today, and one of the highlights of the last few days has been our heel work to music. And on uh, Thursday, we brought you the freestyle competition. Then on Friday, it was the heel work to music. Yesterday was our international freestyle competition. I'm now delighted to welcome back our winner, she won the Heel Work to Music Freestyle here on Thursday. She was the international winner yesterday, representing the United Kingdom. And she's back for her winner's performance. Ladies and gentlemen, with six-year-old Border Collie Elsa, please welcome back Nikki Heinsohn. Good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. It's great to stay up late. Good morning, good morning to you. When the band began to play, the stars were shining bright. Now the milkman's on his way. It's too late to say good night. So good morning, good morning. Sunbeams will soon shine through. Good morning, good morning. To you and you and you and you Good morning, good morning We get the night through Good morning, good morning to you Nothing could be grander than to be a Louisiana In the morning, in the morning It's great to stay up late to good morning Good morning to you I'd be just as happy if it wasn't Mississippi When we left the movie show The future was bright But came the dawn, the show goes on And I don't want to say good night Rainbows are shining through. Good morning. Good morning. Bonjour. Bonjour. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Bonjour. 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 Good morning. British morning. Good morning.
ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the incredible Nikki Heinsohn and Elsa. A brilliant routine which was very popular with our judges clearly over the weekend here at Crufts 2023. Nikki, the international freestyle champion, winning yesterday, beating off competition from all over Europe, but also all over the world with competitors flying in from Japan and Canada. It really was a truly international day yesterday in the heel work to music. And representing her country, the United Kingdom, Nikki was our champion. And she got very emotional when she won yesterday. Uh, you can tell just how much it means to Nikki to be our heel work to music champion, representing her country and if you want to re-watch any of the heel work to music action head over to the Crufts YouTube channel where you can watch all of those fantastic routines from the last few days here at Crufts okay next up we are going to see a fantastic dog activities display we're going to see a bit of rally a bit of heel work to music we're going to see our bloodhounds as well and something a little special to celebrate the 150 years of the kennel club to take us through our dog activities display please welcome claire coughlin On behalf of Dog Activities, a big welcome to the Dog Activities display. Let's give these dogs and handlers some support and encouragement as they begin their display. And we're performing something very special for you right at the beginning. This is a representation of all four activities that you're going to see in the display. And they are representing one, five, zero, to celebrate 150 years of the Kennel Club. So let's thank them for their great start to the display. And they're going to go off into their areas now and await their turn to show you all their skills. Thank you very much, dogs and handlers. And we're going to make a start today with Rally. And I'm very fortunate today to be showing you all about Kennel Club Rally. It was my pleasure 10 years ago to introduce Kennel Club Rally here at Crafts. It was a very popular sport all across Europe, America, Australia, New Zealand. 10 years ago, it arrived here at Crafts in the UK. It has developed enormously since then. It is an extremely popular sport now, partly because it welcomes all pedigrees, all crossbreeds is extremely inclusive and that is a great attraction for people joining the sport. So let's introduce our dogs and handlers. So over here we have our lovely little Cocker Spaniel. This is River with Becky. Let's give her some encouragement. And over here we have Snoopy and Jane. And Snoopy is representing a lot of crossbreeds out there. He's a cockapoo, ladies and gentlemen. And over here, representing the Young, young Kennel Club, this is our young handler, Abby, handling Ash. 
And of course, last but not least, our lovely golden retriever. This is Bradley Wiggins with Sue. So you can see there's been some equipment placed out into the ring. These are rally signs. So handlers and dogs have to use the signs to tell them what manoeuvres they need to do. And if we move Abby out into the middle so everybody can see. So Abby's going to show us one of her rally exercises. So she's chosen to work on the lead. So at the lower levels of rally, you work on the lead, one and two. When you get to level three, you have to take the lead off. So let's just look at those lovely cool fronts that she's doing. So they're like the beginning of a recall. And then there's variations that you can do after that. Abby is 22 years old, currently training to be a vet nurse, and has enjoyed a lovely career in the YKC doing all kinds of different dog sports. And that's a great start for you too. Well done, let's give her some encouragement. So we're moving on to Snoopy now. Now I must tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very special day for Snoopy because this is his retirement today. That's it, he deserves all your admiration. He is 10 years old. As I mentioned earlier, a cockapoo representing a lot of crossbreeds that we find in rally and they do extremely well. That was a lovely spiral exercise you saw there. Let's give him some encouragement, folks. Okay, now we've got Sue with Bradley. He never goes anywhere without that ball, ladies and gentlemen. That's his favorite thing. And we're going to do now a placed retrieve. So we're making sure that Bradley can't see what's going on. Bradley also works at a very high level in competitive obedience, proving that our rally dogs are multi-talented. And they're also very good at playing to the crowd, as you just saw. So he collected his dumbbell into a present and a finish. Well done, Bradley Wiggins. Good boy. So now we're moving on to River, our Cocker Spaniel. Now this is a young lady that proves that rally dogs have brains as well as beauty, heavily shown in the breed ring as well. And that was a lovely center mat exercise. We have a couple of mat exercises in rally, and that was the first one we find, the center mat. Let's encourage River. She's a good girl. So over there, Bradley's gone to do some of his maneuvers. But over here, we're going to move to Ash and Abby, and they're gonna show us one of the level six bonus exercises. The level six is the highest level of rally at the moment. So we're coming off the lead. We're going to prepare Ash, first of all. And she goes around the, up the pole, around the handler, and off they go. Now, that was so good, we're going to have another look at it. Come on, Abby. Oh, she's keen. So we're in a sit. We go around, around the handler, a turn, and off we go. What about that, ladies and gentlemen? Very good. Now we're over to Snoopy and Jane. And we're doing send arounds and walk arounds. These are important elements in rally. We need to be able to do them at the stand and the sit and the down. So Snoopy's showing you a variety of his skills there. And as you can see, even at 10 years old, he's still up, he's loving his work. Really important that we have good relationship with our dog when we're doing our training and our work. That's lovely. Well done, Snoopy. Let's give him some encouragement. Okay, so we're going to have Bradley and River at the same time now. Okay. So River's going to show us a down on a recall, and Bradley's going to show you changes of position. And both of these are rally exercises at higher levels. So you see there, River did a down during a recall and then was called back to the handler and did a finish. And over here, Bradley changed position and then came back to the handler. What about that, folks? Let's give them some encouragement. 
So I must just say as well, for the past 10 years, Bradley has appeared in both my obedience and rally displays. He is a very high level obedience dog, but he's also proving that rally is complementary to those skills. And Sue will be the first to admit that it has really helped your obedience work. Yes, she says. Okay, so he also retires today, folks. So let's have a big round of applause for Bradley and Snoopy, our retiring dogs. And also to River and Ash for their great work today. And of course, these lovely handlers. So that's given you a very brief overlook at Rally, but do come to Hall 3 and find out more about it. We'd love to speak to you. Just a reminder, any dog could do this. So with that, we're going to hand to Bloodhounds and to Leo. Thank you very much, everyone. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to uh, our two Bloodhounds here today. We've got Matthew Price here with Martok, three-year-old black and tan hound, and we've got Graham Cook here with another black and tan hound, Edge, who is five years old. Both these hounds compete at bloodhound trials regularly. We have four sets of bloodhound trials a year that are run under the auspices of the Kennel Club, and we have two that organise these trials. We have the Bloodhound Club, and the Association of the Bloodhound Breeders. So, ladies and gentlemen, we've got two very fit-looking hounds here, very active hounds that uh, do us proud. In Hall 3 this week, we've had a lovely presentation of bloodhounds. Bloodhounds are among some of the oldest breeds registered at the club. The gun dogs, I believe, have been there the longest, but the bloodhounds are not far behind them. So bloodhound trials have been on the go for the best part of 100 years. We, ha we have scent hounds. They're very good. They're different to tracker dogs. They work differently. They do not work disturbed ground. They are purely scent hounds and they hunt the scent of a human being, the natural scent of a human being. There is no drag, no artificial scent, nothing like that. It's just the natural scent of the human being. With different stakes at trials, from the novice right up to the senior stake, where you can get the championship certificate. Now, Kennel Club UK, is the only kennel club that awards challenge certificates for bloodhounds. So we are quite unique in, in many ways. We're also a vulnerable breed now at the kennel club due to lack of interest in uh, the young, showing an interest in owning a bloodhound and uh, coming to trials or even dog shows for that matter. They are a genuine dual-purpose breed. They haven't separated. There's no such thing, oh, that's a show dog, or that's a trials bloodhound. They have re retained their looks for both trials and the ring. They are much healthier dog today than what they were 30 years ago. This is thanks to a lot of work that's been done by the Kennel Club and the Breed Clubs. And the ones we have here today are lovely examples of the working bloodhound. Colour-wise, black and tans as we have here. We have blanket blacks, we have reds, and we have the blanket liver and tans. And those are the recognised colours of the bloodhound breed. Anybody interested in knowing anything more about this breed, come and see us in Hall 3 or access the website. Most people are internet literate today. There's a wonderful website by the Kennel Club on the activity site, and both clubs also have very good websites with contact details, plenty of information on the breed, and who to see in the part of the country wherever you live. Lovely hounds, ladies and gentlemen, not for the faint-hearted. You need to be fairly fit, fairly active, good cross-country wonderful hounds and in my opinion they have the best nose in the business thank you graham 
Thank you, Theo. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have now a little display of hill work to music. And um, this is my hill work to music team from the dog activities. They're trying to form a circle and just trying to come in just a little bit. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So before we start the music, I thought I would demonstrate some, some moves while they're getting their umbrella set up. And who better to demonstrate some moves and for my handlers to copy than my phoenix who he is also retiring today he's nearly 11 and a half and so i thought he could have his final final flourish in the main arena so we're going to see if they can do what phoenix does or better probably okay team let's see if we can get our dogs to go round their umbrellas phoenix come on go round good boy phoenix Now we'd like to get the dogs to follow their umbrellas. Phoenix, forward. So they're following the umbrellas. Forward is my command. Everyone has a different command. Forward, Phoenix. Good boy. Forward. That's good. Now we'd like to see if we can get the dogs to jump over their umbrellas. He's not bad for an 11 and a half year old dog doing a jump. Now Phoenix is going to try and do a cuddle. <laughs> That's his favourite move. We're going to cuddle Phoenix. You like that? Can you not get your dogs cuddling? Oh, that's good. Ah, now we're going to try and get your dogs to do a weave. So we'll do a standing weave first. So they want your dogs to go through your legs. Phoenix, weave through. Weave through and through, and through, good. You could do another cuddle. And now we'd like a walking weave. So can you get your dogs to do a walking weave? Through, Phoenix, through, 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 good boy. I've got treats for Phoenix because he needs to have his food. And then before we start, what about a twizzle? So twizzle for me is the dog and handler spinning. So Phoenix, twizzle. So we do it together. Twizzle. Good. Sit, Phoenix. What about a foot? Good for the chin. Now, handlers, all the dogs have a favorite move. So can you just show what your dog's favorite move is? We know what Phoenix's favorite move is. The cuddle. You gonna cuddle? There, that's your favorite move. Well done. Okay, now handlers, can you get ready for the for the music? Lay down, baby. You're done. Guard the umbrella. Okay, so are we ready, handlers? Near to your umbrellas, and we're going to start with the music. So we've tried to choreograph a routine which would suit all shapes, all sizes, all breeds. And once they've done some few set moves, we like them to do whatever they think suits their breed of dog to the music. Now, Heath here is a heel work dog, and so he does really nice heel work. I know, now everyone can't wait for me to get to young Gareth from Scotland. He's the cute dog. <laughs> and then we've got another 11, another 11 year old dog, Ruby. She just loves heel work to music. Beautiful. And then we've got small little Fame. Fame is a pom cross spitz. And she's an advanced heel work dog. And she's one of my favorite heel work dogs. And this is Phoenix's niece. This is Phoebe. She's young. She's energetic. She's enthusiastic. And now we've got another beautiful Goldie from Scotland. And another 
really free, free flowing heel work type dog. First time in the ring is Angela with Shina, and he's a beautiful miniature poodle. And he's going to do, he's very sensitive but very clever. And oh, who would believe we've got a Gordon Setter? Another Gordon Setter who is actually from Scotland doing beautiful flowing moves. And here we have Gibbon. Gibbon is a poodle cross collie. And right on cue, he's doing his jumping moves. Yes! And then we have Caroline with a beautiful red and white collie. And this is a, another young dog that is also an advanced dog. So we like to think that we can choreograph routines and moves that suit their dog. And the handlers are all doing different things. Our sport is, consists of heel work and freestyle. Heel work is where there are eight heel work positions. And freestyle is where they're free to do what they want. Oh, where's the Gordon setter gone? Free to do what they want, as long as they conform to making it safe and suitable for the dog. So now they're getting ready for their final pose. Phoenix, come on, up. You can go round, go round it. Go round it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have a short demo on the sport of working trials. Working trials has been a competitive sport for police and service dogs for over 100 years. But since 1924, has been an open to all competition. Now the first exercise we're demonstrating is a exercise unique to us, the speak on command. You'll see the dogs at heel and the handler Becky with mist very quietly giving the dog to command to speak and to be quiet. Charlie, however, is seated in a chair with Nikki and the object of the exercise, this is what would be done in a test, so the judge would make sure that the dog cannot see its handler's eyes, so it's making it a little more difficult. Dog talk to bark, retains its position, and is quiet when Charlie tells it to be quiet. Right, I need to tread carefully, because we're going to demonstrate to you tracking. Now, I want you to forget what you've seen of the bloodhounds. Now, bloodhounds follow human scent. Now, you'll see John laying a track around the area, and you're probably thinking, how on earth can a dog follow where a person has walked on this surface that has had loads of things on it, dogs, people, tidbits of food, everything over the last few days. But John is showing you, we track and we follow a disturbance on the ground made by a human being. John's laying a number of articles on the track and the dog will complete the track and collect the articles. What the dog is actually indicating is where a person has walked. The start is at this pole and he'll be worked on a harness Martin has kindly popped the harness onto him, so Rory's going to follow. The reason he'll indicate the articles is because he can smell that some person has touched that item. And of course, this dog will know it's his dad as well, won't he? So this is Rory. He's qualified to TDX, which is the top stake. And there you see, he follows exactly where John has walked. And this, ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you, there are not many people in this demo team that would want to volunteer to do this exercise. It is extremely difficult. John's been in the sport some 40 years. He's also been in agility, but he's seen the light come back to us. 
There we are, look at that dog, that is incredible. Now if you think of all the feet, dogs and people that have walked in here, and just think, this dog is doing exactly what a police dog does. You imagine somebody's broken into a vehicle, a car, and the dog is following exactly where the person, there's no food, there's no dragging anything, he is merely following the path of where a person, albeit himself, has walked. And there we are, he's at the end. Well, that is incredible. I'm impressed with that. Okay. Now we're gonna demonstrate a property search to you. Now again, this is about a dog picking up something, recovering it for us, with a person sent on. Okay. Okay, Susan's first. And the dog has to hold the article and bring it back to its mum in one piece. Now that's showing you just one article. So unlike the ball of throwing a ball, this dog's going to now be told to multitask, go for something completely different, and this is how we start them searching. The exercise would be worked outdoors. This is totally an outdoor sport. So the, so the dog would actually be worked into the wind and detecting the smell, the human touching the article. And recovers, that's excellent, okay. That's a German Shepherd. Okay, and now, okay, we come across here to the working beardy. Joe and Shady, I like that name. Sounds like it's a bit dodgy, doesn't it? There we are, a bunch of keys on a piece of string, which is the sort of article we'd have to recover. A glove, excellent. He's quick, isn't he? And a cartridge, which is not the easiest thing. As I say, this is a working beardy. You can see how much. And here, just to show this sport is available to all, this is a crossbreed, a cockapoo, a crossing of a cocker spaniel and a poodle. Very young dog. This is Tessa. First one back, well done. Okay, for the second. Now, in here, of course, it's much more difficult for the dogs because they can actually see the article. So when they pick one article up in bringing it back, they readily see the next. Okay, well done. Okay, well done, Jim. Right, the final exercise we're going to demonstrate to you is a send away and redirection. This is Mist, eight-year-old dog working in the top stake. Now just watch this dog move. That's his send away. Now he'll do a redirection. and how quietly the handler works the dog. He's never met those dogs before, but he's not interested because he wants to do as he's told. <laughs> there we are. Absolutely incredible, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, that completes our demonstration and the demonstration of the activities teams. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy your day. Thank you very much indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, a massive round of applause for the dog activities display team. Thank you so much.
A brilliant mix of all sorts of different activities to enjoy there, from our wonderful bloodhounds to our hill work to music to our rallying there. That was superb. Thank you. And if you'd like to find out more, you can check out the Dog Activities Ring in Hall 3, where you'll be able to see more of their brilliant work on the Dog Activities display. So a very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to day four of the world's greatest dog show, Crufts 2023. And what a day we've got for you here in the main arena. It is, of course, the big one, the climax of Crufts. Best in show day today, with best in show coming up, of course. Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. weave. Nice quick turns. It's a perfect start. Round again. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so far, on. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamik, yes. our compact SUV. Ooh. Our best in show. Skoda. All achieved their coveted Kennel Club Gold Good Citizen Awards. They are proudly supported by Vets Kitchen. Please put your hands together. Give a huge welcome to the Red Arrows of the Dog World, the Southern Golden Retriever Society display team.
incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, the seven golden retriever display team. Wasn't that amazing? The Red Arrows of the dog world, an absolute favorite of Crufts. Delighted to welcome them back. Clap your hands, ladies and gentlemen, for the seven golden retrievers. When the day is dawning, on a Texas Sunday morning, how I long to be there. With Marie, who's waiting for me there. Every lonely city. Keep it going, come on. Live as you can, here we go. Is this the way to Amarillo? Every night I'll be hugging my pillow. Dreaming dreams of Amarillo. And sweet Marie who waits for me. Show me the way to Amarillo. I've been weeping like a... One more time. Ladies and gentlemen, are they incredible? The son of Golden Retriever display team! Fantastic, thank you so much. What a display, what a highlight, what a treat before our very eyes. The Southern Golden Retriever is absolutely magical. Ladies and gentlemen, there will now be a very short interval here in the main arena. Do join us again at 11.55. We will be back at 11.55 uh, with more agility. It's our agility championships, and they will continue at 11.55. We will see you then.
Championships, which are on the way in just a few moments' time. We'll continue with our agility. Now, later on this evening, as part of Best in Show, we will be crowning the winner of the Kennel Club Hero Dog Award 2023. There are just over four hours left for you to get your votes in. Voting is open until four o'clock this afternoon. Uh, we are once again celebrating the unique relationship that we have with man's best friend. Let's take a look at the finalists this year for the Kennel Club Hero Dog Award 2023 and how you can place that all important vote. Keep on going and sleeping outside. Night, Bertie. Day six, 11, 335. I've been raising the money for Course Rescue so they can build a shelter for the dogs so they can keep them warm. Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me. He's helped me through those stages where I've been like, oh, it's such a cold night, I don't really want to sleep out tonight. I don't think it's just me raising the money, we're both raising the money. Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Border Terriers are amazing dogs. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Border Terrier in the country to become a police dog. She's found thousands of pounds in cash. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. For us, it's so rewarding to see her in such a positive light, especially as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Stella's living proof that in the right hands with the right training, they're incredible dogs. Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity, Dogs For Good. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day-to-day -day activities because of the pain. But Albert is helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. Asher is a fire detection dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic part, but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. He was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. I would certainly like to call Pookie a hero for myself and the whole family. Pookie seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time now. Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after after uh, Beauty came into her forever home. Beauty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. She means the world to me because if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. So go online, ladies and gentlemen, and have your say. Who will be the Hero Dog Award 2023 winner later this evening? That is up to you. Will it be our child's champion, our working dog, our hero support dog, rescue dog hero, or our best friend? Head online now at crufts.org.uk forward slash Hero Dog Award. Some inspirational stuff there in that film, and they are all, of course, very worthy winners. There can only be one winner of the Hero Dog Award 2023, and that is why your vote is so important. Crufts.org.uk forward slash Hero Dog Award. You have until four o'clock this afternoon to go online and place your vote. The winner will be announced this evening here as part of Best in Show, Crufts 2023. And the Hero Dog Award, please go online, please do cast your vote. We're just getting ready for our agility, as you can see. Our agility championship will continue in just a moment. We have the jumping this morning. We've got the agility round to come next. And uh, our handlers are just getting the chance to walk the course. So we'll be back in just a moment with the continuation of our agility championship.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Our Agility Championships on the way in just a moment. But first, 2023, the year that the Kennel Club celebrates 150 years. And it gives me the greatest honour to welcome you to the world's greatest dog show, Crufts 2023! Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the main arena here at Crafts 2023! <laughs> so, our first competition uh, is going to be... Well, the first competition this afternoon, I should say. We've already had one this morning. This is part two. We're about to start the championship medium, and we need a judge. And, he's back and hello again from the main well arena at Crufts. More agility and action and coming and your way. Small and medium championship com continues. We've had the jumping this morning. The agility is coming right up. And then it will be crunched together for the grand final this evening. Gary Murphy, our judge. Materials controller from Biggleswade in Bedfordshire, judging for 13 years, got three dogs in his own household as well. A little reminder, if you get eliminated, you are out of the final. We've had a couple of those already. If you were with us for the jumping, I hope you were. All top grade dogs, grade seven, a totally separate draw for this one. And Graham, we're going to see the medium dogs first. Yep. We've brilliant, brilliant competition we're looking forward to here. We have some of the best dogs in the country, as you'd expect. And the first of those are 17 medium dogs, Tony Dawkins and Tiger. Mini American Shepherd, this one came third in the jumping this morning. No seesaw, A frame, or dog walk in the jumping, but reinstated for the agility this afternoon. 
and the Mexican competitor comes in. Graham, with his expert eye, he sets so many of these courses, will talk you around this particular course. But a reminder, we are all building for the climax of this competition, so oh. desperate to avoid elimination. As, as I say that, five faults picked up right at, at the end there. 39.3, not necessarily the end of, end of the game for Tony and for Tiger. That was such a shame. I think she assumed the dog was going to do it, and it's always dangerous. Charlotte Baker and Eliza, bearded collie. All yours, Graham. So, straightforward start up and over the A-frame. They can't let them go too wide there. They want to make sure they get into those weaving poles, which she's done beautifully. Quite a straightforward course, this. There is a few bits and pieces to watch, though. Onto the seesaw, they've got to go round the back of the next jump. They pick up over the long jump. They've got to collect them now for that sharp left turn, then right, then left again onto the dog walk. They must make the contact on the top and the bottom of it. There she does very nightly. Round the back of that one again, and now... She picks up, walks across the front of that jump, and then straight round here, back into that tunnel again. She's got to make sure this dog does the last jump. And there she does, just picking up the five faults there, Jim. Yep, just the five faults. Look, look, good, good style, Reminder, You have to touch the white at the bottom of the uh, dog walk there. Laura Chapman from Salisbury and Dev Dev Border Collie. Winners of the Crufts singles on Friday. Very tight turn on the carpet and a real swift dog it is Dev Dev. Loving this course and eating up the ground. Seesaw, that is fine as well. That's a tight right-hander at the top of the course coming down towards our commentary position here. Over the dog ball, good work, good contact at the end of it, developing into a, a really good round. If they keep it clean and quick, this could uh, take a little bit of beating because I have not seen any blemishes thus far. In and out of the tunnel, and there haven't been any blemishes. 34.0 and clear. Impressive? Very impressive. Uh, very tight, economical lines. The only thing I might say is that when she came out of the tunnel at 14, she did go a little bit wide there, so there's still a little bit more there, Jim, to be made up. Willow working cocker, James Adams the handler on the silver medal team in the Euros. That was a heck of an achievement, that. Third year at Crufts for this partnership and already in good form earlier today. Runner-up in the jumping, so looking good and they will want to repeat that in the agility. Love. Oh. oh, dear. Just about to sing his praises and uh, he gets eliminated. That'll put him out the final. However, I will sing his praises because this is a top partnership here. To say, part of the uh, silver winning medal team at the uh, European Open, uh, which was amazing achievement. And he's just showing you how good he is. Expect a lot more of this pair in the next 12 months, Jim. Absolutely. We look forward to seeing them again. We will not see them again today, though, because James Adams and Willow eliminated this after becoming runners up in the jump. Joe Gleed, on topic, five-year-old Cocker Spaniel. Loves to run fast, doesn't uh, put the brakes on at all, this one. Joe and Topic from Coventry. Wonderful sound effects as well. Good on the seesaw. Topic's really wound up today. You can hear all about it. Joe is going to have a yeah, and I thought she was going to have troubles with her today. She did, so just picking up the refusal. She needs to keep it clean now, Jim. How do you spot that? Totally wound up. How do you spot that, Graham? I've seen the dog quite a few times, and I just knew that it's on its toes today. It's on its toes are going really well. The ten faults, though, not great for Joe or for or for Topic. Brilliant entertainment, though. Well, fourth at the moment, but we'll probably get pushed down the order a, li a little bit. Yeah, and they're showing the refusal, so you have to come back and do it again if you've had a refusal, otherwise you get eliminated. Lauren Langman and Cruz working cocker, five years of age. First time at Crufts, and like all these dogs, just a fireably proud to be here. What a wonderful image that is. Ready to go to work and keen to go to work is Cruz. Cruising through the weaves, not a problem. Genuine pace, genuine accuracy. 
Good contact at the end of the seesaw. It has to be down before the dog leaves the seesaw. Where next? It's the Iams. It's a tight one. Right in front of us. Good stuff at the dog walk. Not making contact at the end. The dog walk has cost a few dogs, but not Cruz. This is still quick, and it's still it's a bit of hesitation there. They kept it going, though. 37.7 for Laura and for Cruz. Uh, second place, probably because of that hesitation right at the end. Yep, such a shame there, but uh, always, always competitive. This so 37, five, really great. Look at that dog, fit as anything. Harriet Harding with Izzy. No, eliminated this morning from the jumping. So this will be the last that we'll see of these two today. A reminder: if you do get eliminated. You do not progress uh, to the final later today. Working sheet, like eight years of age, is his he? Is he through the tunnel? And that's the end of the round. That's a good effort from Harriet and from Izzy. Clear round. Second place. But of course, we will not see them later today. But they have left on a high. They have, and that's what they want to do. They want to win whatever they can. Liz Carpenter and Winnie, based in Wiltshire, second time at Crufts. And there we go. So what I'm going to talk about, Jim, if I can, is just the relationship between dog and handler. So uh, unfortunately picking up a fault there. And because she didn't go back and uh, put it right, she's actually been eliminated. But just keep trying to keep an eye on the handler and the dog. You see that right arm coming out, now the left arm. And these tells the dog where to go. It's all about body language. Again, you've got that left arm up saying, go on, go on. The left arm will come out again. There it goes. So now she's going to pick the dog up from the other side of the jump. Nicely done. She needs to make sure it goes around there again. Just a little bit of thing. Slapping the fight end. Come to me, come to me. Now go on. Brilliant. And that's how to do it. Well done there, Liz. Dalton Meredith with Munchie. Always quality is Dalton. Wonderful story ar around this dog. Has made a remarkable recovery. Amazing dog. A remarkable recovery from uh, one or two health problems in her life. Great to see Munchie. This pair from the Bristol area running and competing so successfully. Fine sight going over the dog walk too. Tight turning into the tunnel. Top of the course now. Time is good. Couple to go. Time's really good. In fact, 35.4. Up into second place for Dalton and for Munchie. Look at just slicing that. There's not a hair's breadth between the dog and the pole there. And now look at this. This is what we call a running dog walk. It runs straight off the end. Very, very difficult to train that. Gift Border Collie, nine years of age. Shannon Springford, the handler from Swanley near Seven Oaks. Part of last year's silver medal winning team at the European Open. Sleek, elegant dog. Gift. That's quick and right up there as well. Really good so far over that huge jump. And again, great pace and contact oh, at the end no. of the dog walk, but sadly, sadly, a wrong course at the end of it. Just as things were going so well in the blink of an eye, the round unravels, and elimination means that'll be the last we see of Shannon and Gift. And it is in the blink of an eye. As you say, she was expecting the dog to come with her. The dog just decided, identified the jump and did it from the wrong direction, the wrong jump in the wrong order. Elimination, such a shame. Here's Mr. Kelpie, Nigel Staines. Zico Junior, Zico, Australian working Kelpie. 
Nigel loves his kelpies and we always love seeing them here on the green carpet. Not the quickest, but enthusiastic and accurate and a joy to behold, really. Especially going through those wheels, Brian. It will, and a lot will depend on uh, how many eliminations we get in the first two rounds, if, if he can keep it clean. Uh, it's not always possible to do, because sometimes the dog will uh, just identify what it wants to do and go off on it if you're not clear about where you want it to go. Turns there, nice turn onto the dog walk, keeps the dog on the left hand side, because that's where he wants to be for the next obstacle. Make sure the judge saw it. He will notice I've got this dog walk. <laughs> Absolutely. Listen, it's better doing it that way than picking up faults at the end of, end of the dog. Well, that is absolutely permissible. And it will not be the quickest time. Speed is not one of the Kelpie's great attributes, but it's clean. 45.3. And that's good enough for fifth place. Accurate and clean and very, very enjoyable. And in the course time as well. Very good. <laughs> Easy does it. <laughs> Wonderful miniature American Shepherd. Classic. Lauren Langman, second time at Crufts, won a couple of tickets as well. Go, go. What a lovely looking dog this is, Graham. It is, they're becoming quite popular, um, they are quite difficult to train, but when you get a good one like this and well motivated, they're ideally suited to agility. Coming down here, this is the control path, the seesaw must touch the ground, and that's for safety, we don't want people flying off it, turned away from the jump once, turned away from the jump twice, two refusals there, three refusals anywhere on the course is elimination. So, a bit of a tightrope here with Lauren, and classic one more refusal equals elimination. We'll have a look at those refusals after this round. Oh, just hopped over that. And a, oh, dear. And that is an elimination. Well, we warned you, Laura. We did warn you. So there we go. That's the refusal. A dog turned the, to the left away from it. It did it again. So that's the second fault. Completes it correctly then. And then that is the third refusal. And then... The judge will give them the signal the third refusal and then the elimination. Natasha Y is ready to go with Toto, her medium dog. Toto's first time at Crufts on the back of a great first season of competition. Tails snapping through the weeds. Hats off to the sound effects. Crew as well, always get great sound as well as great images that just enhances and underlines everyone's enjoyment of this fabulous competition. A fabulous show, that is Crufts 2023. Slipping and sliding a bit on the dog walk, but absolutely fine otherwise. And, uh, just keep a little eye on the time, it'll be right up there, be very, very close to it. This is excellent work from Natasha and from Toto, and a good finale as well. I reckon we'll see them later on. Uh, Natasha up into fourth place and justifiably elated. She is very, very happy. She says that this she really has to work very hard with this dog. Being a typical Spaniel, he's got his own opinion about everything, so she can't relax just for a second. She'll be really pleased with that, Jim. Mo Cocker Spaniel cross on Emma Gamble. This one, uh, partnership eliminated from the jumping, so this will be their farewell, the finale for Crufts uh, 2023. Just uh, underlining, if you get an elimination in the jumping or the agility, you do not compete in the final later on. Yeah, but she can still win this part of it, and that's what they want. But unfortunately now, she turned away from the jump, so she gets a refusal for that, but she resets for the dog walk very nicely. But again, she's thinking about the refusal, so therefore she's not giving 100% to the dog doing things at the time, and therefore the dog went off over another off-course jump. This is a really tricky, unforgiving, hugely enjoyable, um, but uh, every mistake really is a capital letter mistake. Well done, Emma, and uh, well done, Mo. I'm sure we'll see them in the future. But hopefully she'll take the positives away from it, um, think about it, and then she'll put it in the bin. Um, never happened. Amelia Nicholson, the handler, Willow, the cross speed, seven years of age from Stone, Staffordshire. Okay.
<laughs> Willow, we hear you. Got a lot to say for himself. Just to reiterate, this is a crossbreed. And also, just to tell everyone at home, if you fancy a go at this, you don't need a pedigree dog, crossbreed, mongrel, whatever you want to call it. Anybody can do this. Just picking up the five bolts there on the U-move. <laughs> and now getting the elimination as well. It, it happens a bit. You get a bolt and then it, uh, you get the elimination ground, doesn't it? Yeah, Not it's always. quite often that way, actually, it happens. For the reasons I say, that line just now, you, you, your concentration goes as a handler. The dog's having a good time. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, nobody's told the dog it's been eliminated. Penultimate medium dog, Roo working cocker, the reigning champions, these blind fox, the handler. So Roo has been here and done it last year. And Blythe and Rue looking to repeat their triumph and have started off pretty well in the opening 15 seconds of this particular round. Over the arms and the U move. What about the dog walk? Yep, good contact at the end of that too. Rue warming to this course now. That tunnel is absolutely no problem. Hesitation, hesitation there though. That will cost some time, but no faults. And in the end, hopping over. So 38.3 up into the top six. Just a little hesitation there, Graham. It was. I was going to say it's a very safe safe round, but almost too safe when she almost pulled off a jump there. There we go, but it didn't turn away, and that's the secret. So it didn't, wasn't faulted by the judge. This is Maggie, Liz Carpenter's second dog, the last dog in this medium section. And Maggie and Liz won the jumping this morning, but picking up the five faults very early on in yep. the round. And uh, sadly, so winners of the jumping this morning eliminated here from the agility, and that means um, that Maggie will complete her round, but uh, we will not see uh, Maggie again. First time competing at, at Crofts, and perhaps uh, a little bit of naivety. Well, I'm, as I say, I'm not quite too sure about that. I think it just took her by surprise. But yeah, again, we've enough. got one of these situations where uh, she's been eliminated, so she's just going to carry on and have fun. Why not? Why not? Liz Carpenter and Maggie Gorn. So, just want to illustrate there, we saw a picture of the tyre breaking open. Always used to be a solid obstacle, still soft, but solid. But now it breaks away, again, illustrating safety. So then, rounding up what we've just seen, uh, Laura Chapman, Dalton, Harriet, Natasha, and Lauren Langman, uh, the top five. These will all be crunched to give us the grand finale later on. And a couple of pages there for you of the uh, combined results as well, so we will see all these again later on. Some very big names in there, too. First of 16 small dogs, peak on. Third in the jumping this morning, Rachel Ward bringing a bit of distinctive style, the handler, uh, to the main arena here at Crofts. Third in the jumping this morning. This is rapid, Jim, absolutely rapid. Yep. Maybe barking a lot. Oh! <laughs> I think that's one all for between you and me this morning, that one, isn't it? Very, very quick. Sweet, but a psycho, the Kennel Club name, and uh, and then is an elimination. That's sad. We, they're a very popular partnership, these two. So well in the jumping, but uh, at, uh, one fault leads to the elimination. <laughs> when it starts to go wrong, she said, right, that's it. She said, fun's over, I'm picking you up, we're leaving, she said. <laughs> Excellent. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> she said, you've had far too much fun on this course, she says. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Yes, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Bray, such a popular handler here. And Takita. Has Takita got the spark ring collar on? Yep, I think she has. Nice style, eight years of age, Takita. Heart of a lion. Tail wagging. Let me get at those weaves. Just picked up a five faults early on, but that needn't be the end, end of the game. Alan Bray knows that more than most. Yeah. Always love seeing uh, Alan at work out, out there and keeping Takita a sparkling collar going towards the end of the round. Well done, Alan. This is a good round despite those five faults early on. 38.6 for Alan Bray and for Takita, the working docker. And there we are, missing the bottom of the A-frame. For those of you in Europe who are watching this and wondering why the dogs are wearing collars, they are allowed to wear collars in this country. Uh, the only stipulation is they can't have anything dangling or hanging from them. Snazzy, Mark Wingate win. Focal little dog, this one. Third last year. Actually, Snazzy keeping... No thoughts to herself at the moment. Oh, there we go. Right on cue. That's good style and good speed as well. How about the dog walk? Good contact at the end of it, super contact. Nice and quick in and out of the tunnel as well. And keep this going for the next few seconds. This will be a really, really good round. Come on, Mark. Come on, Snazzy, 37.0, a really good round. It's the best we've seen so far from the small dogs. Very nice. Mark Wingate wins, been uh, at the top of the game for, for a long time now, consistently produces great dogs, always likes his shelties. Boost, 10 years of age now, winners of the small singles on day two, the reigning champions, second in the jumping this morning. Dave Munnings, very, very good handler indeed. And this could well be an exciting combination, and the combination is here right at the end of the day as well. Confusion, though, a real couple of twirls there that will cost them time, but will not cost them any faults, but they have to pick up a little bit of a little bit of time now in the second half of the course. Dog walk is good. They get another tight left hander there, in and out of the tunnel. Now they're picking up speed. Now they've got into their rhythm. Dave Munnings and Boost, quick turn at the top there, through the tunnel, and over and out. 37.2 for Dave and Boost, and that's second place despite those dodgy moments, Graham. Well, it's just very unusual for Dave, just a little bit of mis miscommunication. Uh, so, and, and these things happen, but he kept it together. That's the most important thing. Selfie. Sheltie. Selfie the name, Sheltie the breed. First in the jumping, Martin Reed, the handler. These experience, well, they've got terrific experience and they've got great record as well, haven't they, Martin in particular? They won. Uh, John the uh, small stakes at the London International Horse Show last year, um, did fantastically well, uh, got a bronze medal at the World Championships, which is probably one of the most amazing feats there ever is. And it's all happened in about 12 months. This dog's really found its confidence. They are an absolute uh, team to be reckoned with here, and you can see why actually eating up the course so you're going to be take the lead easily, smashed it. Yep, number one, talk them around that. And uh, Martin Reed, well, first in the jumping and heading to go that way in the agility as well. Excellent stuff from Martin and from Selfie. Lauren Langman and Venture working cocker. Again, this will be their last appearance because they were eliminated from the jumping this morning. A frame, that's fine. But no reason, as Graham always tells us, the dog doesn't know anything about elimination. The, the dog will really want to uh, give her best and above all enjoy the crafts experience. This is the goal for them. Oh dear, just a little refusal there, and that'll be, that'll be five faults. 
I say the Dodgers wants to enjoy the, the green carpet, the whole atmosphere, the arena filling rapidly. It's going to be jammed to the rafters later on for best in show this evening, the climax of the show tonight, of course. 38.2 for Lauren Langman uh, and for Venture. Well, into fourth place, but of course eliminated, so that is their day done. Yeah, she did. She set the dog a real long way back from that start. Um, one of the reasons is that it starts as they go through the beam, and the more speed you can take onto the course, hopefully you'll shave a couple of thousandths of the second off. Beautiful shot of Sunflower, Tony Dawkins, Chapel Hill, Lincoln. Handler. Lovely markings on Sunflower. Quite decent pace as well from the mini American chef. Tony having to work really, really hard with this dog. The quicker the dog, the quicker of speed of thought that you need to have here. But she's an experienced handler. She knows exactly what she needs to do. Turning and twirling now, she'll try and get up towards the next jump to make sure the dog does it from the right side, does it beautifully. Now it'll be a right arm up saying, go on, get over that last jump. Very nice, 38, double six, nine. That's really good. Into the top four goes Tony and, and Sunflower. And my hunch is that we will see more of them later on. That's a fine round. Where next? Where next? Beautiful. Right on point. This is Matthew Burdett from Caddington in Bedfordshire and Brew. Small dog with a very big attitude and just have to be calmed down just a little bit there. And now, that's, that is good. That's not hanging around through those weaves. Excellent. Low to the ground and very, very speedy is Brooke. Matthew almost eyeball to eyeball with Brew there. But it working and the time is really good too. Yes, just made contact with the wide at the bottom of the dog walk. I did look towards our judge there, towards Gary Murphy. He said that was fine. Scurrying through the tunnel. Little tight left hand there. Back through that tunnel. This will be good. This will be really, really good. Really good and up there. Into the 36.7 we go for Matthew Burdett and Brew, number one at the moment. He really did eat that course up. There we are, the seesaw. It's just illustrate that the small dogs it has to go right to the end to get it to tip very quickly. So it's, it is actually really difficult for the small dogs. Lily Woodford from North Hanson, Spider, working cockle, seven years of age, first year in grade seven. That is the top grade last year and won two championship tickets this year. So Lily and Spider are in really, really good form coming here to the final day of Crufts 2023. Keep an eye on what Graham's been saying about uh, that seesaw. All fine, all legal, all quick, no faults at all. Little left hander over the U move, good over the dog walk too. Speed is good and uh, just looking, we have 0, 0.00 faults, always good to see. Through the tunnel, over the final jib, 36.5. Well done, well done, Lily. No one's gone quicker than that. No, very nice. I, I love Lily's handling. She's just very calm. Everything's together. She holds it together well, controls the dog beautifully, and it just produces a lovely round like that. Dutch replay, Shetland Sheepdog, by handler Michel Tafan Dubois from Holland. Eliminated, though, uh, from the jumping. So this uh, a, a last two round for Dutch replay. Popular competitor, isn't she, Michelle? She is, although she's uh, resident in Holland, she's a regular visitor to these shores, loves British agility, and most of all, she loves being here at the Biggest and Begdos show in this fantastic arena. We always love our international entries here as well, so that's a, a fine effort then uh, from Michelle and from Dutch Lipray, 38.0, a clear round, which is absolutely excellent for them, particularly after being eliminated from the jumping this morning. So they both will be leaving Crufts on a high. And very happy looking at those pictures, Jim. Blink, really popular dog. Lauren Langman uh, uh, handling it. Blink, 
loving coming to Crufts. We always love seeing the nine-year-old working cocker. Picked up a couple of tickets as well, which are good things to pick up as well, aren't they, Graham? Not like those dreaded parking tickets when they stick the white things on your screen. Uh, well, a ticket is actually a challenge certificate, which they get when they win uh, a championship class, and it's no mean feat. You have to pick up three championship certificates uh, under different judges to be awarded the title of agility champion. The only thing is, is that Crofts counts as two championship certificates. Gotcha. Well, this is a very, very good first 20 seconds or so from Lauren and from Blink. Keeping it clean, keeping it tidy, and keeping it very, very swift as well. This will be right up there. As the clock ticks away, 37.1 for Lauren uh, and for, for Blink. Up into the top five, they go. Very nice uh, round there. These dogs built for speed. Look at that. In and out in the blink of an eye. No time wasted at all. Very efficient method. Ashley Butler talked a good game up here in the commentary box yesterday. She is now down there with Sully or Sullivan. Nine years of age. Loads of championship tickets. Gold and bronze medals at the World Agility Open. Winners of the Cruft Championship twice and the singles three times. And Ashley and Sully, who have been there and done it now, nine years of age, still plenty of vim and vigor and enthusiasm. I'm talking about Sully as well as Ashley at the moment. Really good work, really good opening 20 seconds and uh, competitive pairing. These are Ashley will want to go all the way and some in this competition. And looking good going through the tunnel. Conclusion of the course 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 35.6 for Ashley and for Sully. Talked a good game and delivered a good game down there. It, it looked effortless and that's the way it should be. A, a good run should just look as though you're. They're not really trying, but she did. It was brilliant. Fur flying everywhere, having a brilliant time. Bruce Working Cocker, the handler Julie Dunlop from Banbury, second time at Crufts for Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> and the crowd chuckling away there as Bruce sadly pick, picking up an, an elimination at the end of the week and, and hopping off uh, early anyway so it doesn't really matter too much on the sea so that's cruel and Graham will uh, enlighten you all about exactly what happened there at the end as they complete the round Julie and Bruce what a shame that is though Graham Finish on a high because yes, it's absolutely. a dog to enjoy. Um, absolutely. Finish on a positive note. Absolutely. And well done. Great outlook from Julie and well done to Bruce as well. And lots of, of support from this very appreciative crowd. Go on, Graham. And there we go. So it's going through the weaves. It comes out the weaves so it's completed them, comes back out and goes into them again effectively from the judge's point of view, and that's an elimination. This is Fire and Les Pierce from Rossendale in Lancashire. Fire, three-year-old working cocker. Both Crofts debutants. And it'll be a heck of an achievement if they go all the way in this competition for these two. Well done, Les, and well done, Fire. Fire simmering nicely early on in this round. Dog walk. That's fine from fire. Right in front of us here. Excellent through the tunnel. This will be quick. This will be quick from Les and Fire. Don't worry about that. That's really good. Oh, a bit of a tumble. But if you're going to fall over, Les, that is the place to do it. 36.0, but picking up five faults for that, Graham. Yes, he did. He fell over and knocked the jump off. Yeah, I um, thought so. And uh, as you say, then that's really the judge's call. I think they're actually, he's actually going to go across um, and just have a word. I'm not quite sure about that. So, no, that stands. Five faults. Ah. <laughs> that's not the greatest moment of Les's life, for sure. But falling over there wouldn't have been so bad. Knocking the jump over, that was the fault. <laughs> yes, it was, Jim, yes. Bronner, Bronner Walsh, 
Zeus, seven-year-old Shetland Sheepdog, penultimate small dog. First agility dog for Bronner. Loves the atmosphere of Brooks. Oh dear. Oh dear. I guess if I was watching a football game, I might say they got the wrong studs on, but there we are. But, but at least she wasn't trying for a free kick, Jim. That's true. <laughs> and that, that, that's true. Or, or waving an imaginary card at somebody. Anyway, Bronner up and taking notice and, and um, picking up five, uh, five faults at the top end of the course. And, uh, and good work and we will just give you a, a little bit of extra information about that last round where we had the faller because I think um, the judges have got together and uh, at the end of this round Graham you can update us on, the, on, on, that, on that story about Les Pierce so 48.9 for Bronner and for Zeus yep very nice round there up and over in the clash but so he just picked up just a couple of time folks there Okay, we will update. Uh, we will update what happened when at the end of this competition. At the end of the competition, this is the last dog, Katrina Hands, and Sizzle, five-year-old Shetland uh, Sheepdog. This one runners up last year, Katrina and Sizzle, from north of the border. Always a really sizable support uh, from north of the border. Uh, got reasonably friendly with a with a couple from Aberdeen. In fact, north of Aberdeen, who come here and enjoyed every single second of Crufts this year. That's a slight flicker of hesitation. Uh, going into the new movement is okay for Katrina and for Sizzle. Runners up last year, and this is uh, shaping up into a pretty good round and a round that should take them through uh, later on as they sprint for the finish. Katrina and Sizzle, 38.0, and clear uh, for those two. Into the top ten they go, and just have this is a, a really good finish to this aspect of the competition, Graham. It was very, very nice indeed. Great round there. Well deserved. OK, let's just clarify for you. Les Pearson and, and Fire, remember, it was a clear round until right at the end uh, when Les took a, a little bit of a tumble, didn't he, Graham? But I think the judges have, uh, have had a little confer. It would have been five forts, but they might just have changed their mind. Go on, you go on. Yeah, I just want to clarify here. We see the handler falling down. The dog, the important bit here is the dog has finished. So he hasn't actually knocked the jump down until after the dog's completed it. Had he knocked the jump down prior to the dog going over it, it would have been a fault because the dog then couldn't complete the course correctly. But because it occurred after the dog completed it, it was no fault. And look at that, that pushes Les Pierce up to second place behind Ashley Butler. So that's a really big decision for Les and for Fire.
fantastic agility championship competition so far today here at Crufts 2023. Don't forget to join us for the grand final at 4.30 this afternoon. But now, it's presentation time. And to present our winners, please give a warm welcome to Miss Sue Garner of the Kettle Club Board and Mr. John Davies, the founder of You Move. The winner of the Agility Championship Small with Agility Champion, the Closet Monster of Ashburn, Ashley Butler. Thank you. Very well done. Thank you. It's a superb round. Thank you. He was a good boy. Thank you. Thank you. And the medium agility championship winner with agility champion Lee Bear Dream Come True, Laura Chapman. Thank you. Please keep the applause going, ladies and gentlemen. It's lap of honor time. Well, what a day so far here at Crufts 2023 on day four, on Best in Show Day, and there's still lots more to come this afternoon. But now we are delighted to welcome our medical detection dogs display. We're now going to see the incredible and life-saving work of these impressive medical detection dogs. To guide us through the presentation, Delighted to welcome Dr. Scott. Please give him a big round of applause. Our medical detection Hello. display. Hi there. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Hi, Crafts. Thank you so much for having us yet again. Uh, I am thrilled to be here on behalf of an incredible charity, and that charity is Medical Detection Dogs. Now, if you haven't heard of them, you're going to see some incredible displays in front of you. It is all about harnessing a dog's incredible super sense, if you will, their sense of smell. My name's Dr. Scott Miller. I'm the vet on this morning, and I was able to film their work a number of years ago, and I was so impressed that now I'm one of their ambassadors, trying to basically bring to you and show you the incredible work they're doing, not only in helping to detect certain diseases, but also supporting people with specific conditions as well. Now this charity, they have done incredible work over the last 15 years. So whilst the volunteers, the workers, and the dogs get set up all around us, please cast your eyes to the cube to see the last 15 years of medical detection dogs.
There we go. I think a little bit of a round of applause. That's a good 15 years right there. Amazing stuff. Now, as you know, every story needs to start from the beginning. And with Doggy Lives, we know that starts with puppies. So let's bring on the puppies. Oh, I'm a good dog, I'm a good dog, I'm a good dog. Yes, I'm a good dog, I'm a good dog, I'm a there good go. dog. There we go. I don't want to hear all Now, alongside every good uh, training session is a good dog trainer. And joining me is Chris Allen, uh, who is a training manager for Medical Detection Dogs. Hi, Chris. Hi, yeah. So, we've got some very gorgeous young pooches here. Now, we all know as owners that dogs are very good at smelling. Normally, it's treats in your pocket or your crutch. So, True. what do these guys do which is extra special to get them on the journey to be a medical detection or a biodetection dog? They are very much learning and developing throughout this stage. So, we've got a group of puppies um, that have come to us around about eight weeks of age, and they live with a volunteer. Those volunteers are socialisers, and you can see here we've got a real mixture. We've got Dixie, the little working cocker spaniel, yes. over there. We've got Kyra, our hob of art, over here. This is the first. This is the first. It's the first so, time I've heard of it as well. Exactly. Hob of art. Yeah, donated yeah. to us from a breeder. I got one of those over to Calais, actually. <laughs> yeah. And it's amazing to see different breeds of dog, but obviously all of them have an incredible sense of smell. So how do you harness it? Definitely. So during this socialising period, we'll start to teach them to use their nose. So we can go over there if you want. And we've got little, little um, Rosie over there on pots. Oh, yes. So she's already starting to use her nose as a youngster. She's nice. sniffing. She's got a particular training odour under there. Oh. And when she gets it, so when she freezes on it, she then indicates and then she gets a click and she gets a treat or, or a toy. So we can just see again. So Katie there, her hand is going to send her on. Oops. There's a treat there, have a good sniff, there we yeah, are. So I she, see. She, she smelt the, there we are, and again, lovely. So that's the first steps of her journey to becoming a, a biodetection dog. Well, I suppose just, just reminding you that her nose is a very powerful thing. It's like 10,000 times, isn't it, the sense it, of smell of us? It is. It's, 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 it's amazing, it really is. Yeah. You know, we did a study years ago where you've got one tablespoon of sugar placed into two Olympic-sized swimming pools. That's how much. That's how much they can smell. Wow. How minute it's got to be. It is amazing, it really wow. is. Wow, my socks must be overpowering. Uh, <laughs> and it's <laughs> true, you think of the modern world nowadays, you know, to the dogs, what they're censoring, what they're smelling. Yeah. It's got to be strong. And so what's happening over here? So yes, we've got Fred over here with Ali. Hi Fred, hi and Ali. He's learning to become a medical alert assistant. See, dog. I told you the crutch thing. See? Yeah, definitely. Well, disgraceful. So yeah. we've got a little toy there, we're going to play with it, then we're going to hide it, and he's got to learn yeah. to come and sniff you. Come and get into you, sniff your crutch, sniff your armpits, get all over you, get all over you. Delightful. Because that's going to be how he will alert his client when he's out working as an assistant dog. Okay. He's got to look at you. Well, should, should I have go? I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit concerned about where I'm going to put this toy. But it's, so it's yeah, going to be gentle with, with it. Me, Ellie. Okay, all right, okay, ready? Okay, all right, so I'll just put this so, in. Where should I put it, guys? Uh, gotta hide it, gotta uh, hide it. Okay. Hey! Oh, look at that. He's gonna have a good lick first, and then he should start to use his nose. Ali just gonna, just gonna help him a little bit. He's a youngster, first time here at Cross, first time he's met go Scott. For the so, yeah, socks. Gonna use his nose, gonna find that toy, so look, he's having a good yeah. sniff. Come on, where's it gone? 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 Where's that toy? Where's that toy? Get it? Oh, he's, yeah, so he's close. having a good sniff now. Oh, is he, is he? No, he's sniffing the ground. He's like, I can smell it somewhere. Perhaps it's this side. There it is, he's it? nudging your nose, hey, yeah, he's well got done. the toy. Okay. So at this stage, it's all about fun. They've got to learn, they've got to figure it out. Because yeah. when they're working as an assistance dog, they're not going to get any help. They've got to be persistent. Well, do you know what? It, 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 it takes a lot of work to train these dogs. It's many, many years, lots and lots of focus, volunteers, workers, lots of research. So they've got a lot of work to do. I love their little training jackets, by the way, very, very jaunty. Chris will be joining you in a second. Yes, now, guys, I don't know if you've noticed, but up here we've got some interesting contraptions. Uh, now, the work that the medical detection dogs uh, charity does is twofold. The, the first fold is um, biodetection, so picking up certain diseases. So those diseases can be anything from Parkinson's disease, E. coli, you may remember the dreaded COVID, yes. Now these dogs can even pick that up. Um, everyone remember, do you remember putting those horrible things up your nose? Do you remember those? 
Would you rather, put your hand up if you'd rather have one up, the, one up your nose all being sniffed by a dog? No, I didn't think so. Yeah, these dogs, we're going to meet a dog later, they can sniff COVID. And now I'm going to ask to, for Claire Guest to join us. Claire is the co-founder of Medical Detection Dogs. So we've got some, some dogs busily using their schnozzers in front of us, haven't we? We have indeed. So actually, we are very proud to say we've just set a Guinness World Record. Wow. Um, one of them was um, actually the most number of diseases tr that dogs have been trained to find. And the second was how many diseases consecutively could dogs find in a rotation. So on these stands, we've actually, in each stand, we have got what is it, actually a deadly disease. Don't worry, they're well, all safe. Yes, I've got to just make sure I'm not wearing a bio suit for anything. <laughs> now, I've got a terrible sense of smell as a vet. is actually a really useful thing because we do a lot of gross things. So I don't mind having a poor sense of smell. I'm just going to smell. So there's no actual... There's we're no smell there whatsoever. We're not, um, we're not hiring you. No. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, so they have different diseases in them, but the yes. dogs don't know which ones. Is yeah, that right? that's right. Now, the first dog here I was going to show you is actually she's looking for E. coli bacteria. Right. Okay. And um, she'll go along, and if, if she finds E. coli, she'll stop at the stand. So let's okay. see. This is Plum. Look at all the people in the front row. They're just going, don't smell me. Don't smell me. Whatever you do. You E. coli ridden people, you. Here we go. Let's see. So she says it's a number oh. two. Wow. Now, do you know what, Claire? I'm just going to introduce you. I've, I've got a little, little shoe in here. I've got my daughter and my dog, Scully, if you watch this morning. Scully, do you want to come? Come see Daddy. Now, she's going to be absolutely hopeful, hopeless at this. But now, I do, what we want to do... Hi, Corinne. Hi. Hi, baby. Hi. Now, I want you to read this. Oh, Claire, can I borrow your, your microphone, please? Oh, oh you no, have got one. Got one. Oh, all right. <laughs> Here we go. Right. So let's see. Has your dog... You got it right. What does that say? E, e coil. No, that's your, that's your dyslexia, mother. Oh. It's E coli. Yes, round of applause for the dog. Very good. <laughs> All, right. All right, so that one's correct. So that Let's was... move back. Come on, Scars. Come we're, on. Going to, we're going to talk a bit more later about how we're going to translate E coli in a demonstration for you. So. Yes, absolutely. Right. So the next dog is Bumper. Now, Bumper has been trained to find and has proved that early Parkinson's disease has an odour. Now, Parkinson's it has no early diagnostic. Mm. And so, it's so debilitating, isn't it? It's Terrible. a condition that yeah. Yeah. once the symptoms are there, yes. uh, you know, it's already progressed Absolutely. so far, hasn't Absolutely. it? So he's saying it's a number three. So do you want to go and check? Number three. Okay, let's Is see if Parkinson's Bumper's correct. Should we go and three. have another look, Quinn? <laughs> let's see if we can say this one. Parkinson's! Look at that round of applause. There we go. Incredible. There we go. That's amazing, isn't it? Okay, let's go back so, here. So as you say, no, no early diagnostic. My father recently passed away. You can, people can have it 10, 15, even 20 years yeah. before they start having treatment. Yeah, it's no, it's true to say, um, uh, Quinn's grandfather, my father-in-law, we lost him to Parkinson's with the same, same upsetting set of conditions. And if it's picked up earlier, they can, there's so much that can Absolutely. be done to extend life and, and make life as high quality as possible. Exactly, so it could be a yeah. real change. It's a really important work. Thank you, Bumper. Good Thank job. You. Right, so who's this? This is Florin. Now, Florin um, has a really exciting story to tell because many of you people here today may remember that we started our work in cancer detection. That's yes. how the anecdotes came. And actually, my dog Daisy warned me of my own breast cancer, so I always wear my Daisy to remember. Yes, I don't know if ever you saw that on the, on the video. So, so Claire was diagnosed with breast cancer, a deep form that was hard to diagnose, because her dog kept pressing at her chest. Has anyone ever felt that feeling with their dog where they just persisted? They won't leave you alone um, sometimes. They, they, they just have a sick yeah. sense about these Absolutely. things, don't they? So Florin is Daisy's niece, and she's actually been flown out to MIT in the USA because wow. what she's doing is she's the only thing on the planet that knows what prostate cancer smells like. She's building the AI. She's teaching AI what it smells like. And we'll see if she can find it on the stands now. Okay, so prostate cancer sniffing dog. Isn't this incredible? A okay, let's go. Let's see what we're going to do. A little drop of urine, actually, she's going to find. She says it's in four. So do you want to check? Let's have a look, shall we, Quinn? Scully, can you sniff prostate cancer? No. No. Yeah, just, just, just food, don't you? Yeah, just, just food. <laughs> Okay, what does that say? Prostate cancer. Prostate cancer, that's right. 
It feels wrong to applaud prostate cancer, so I'm sorry to make you do that, but that's an incredible dog. Well done. Right. Last but not least, what do we have? We have now Jody, who's going to be looking for Pseudomonas bacteria. Oh, as a this vet. is going to be fun. Pseudomonas, <laughs> Queen. Practice now. Okay. As, as a vet, you'll know a lot about Pseudomonas yes. bacteria, but of course, in people, it causes um, often respiratory infections in the vulnerable, so mm -hmm. people with cystic fibrosis, for example. So we're working to look for a non-invasive test for people that actually don't cough up sputum. So how do you know then that they've got Pseudomonas? Yes. by asking a dog to sniff a breast sample. Go. We might be getting sniffed in the waiting room from now Absolutely. on, guys. You never know. So, I think we'd all prefer that. Let's so see what she She's only got do. one stand left, so let's hope she gets she to She gets the right uh, one. It'll be embarrassing. Yay! Hey, round of applause. Amazing! <laughs> right. Let's have a look. Scully, it's not sniffing butt time. It's <laughs> sniffing pseudomonas time, okay? Okay, Quinn, what does that say? No? <laughs> No. <laughs> she Good thinks dog. it may say Pseudomonas! Yes, round of applause for Pseudomonas. It's also random, isn't it? Wow. I mean, it really is incredible work that's done here, and it's all about harnessing the olfactory organ, Absolutely. the super sense in dogs, which is their incredible sense of smell. We live in this visual world, don't we? When they scan you, they scan you for all these bacteria and all these nasty, yes. smelly things, but now we're actually harnessing that, and they can tell us. Yeah. They love it. It's amazing. Well, thank you. Thank you, Quinn. And thank you, Scully. You can take a seat. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. We'll be back with you in a second. Right. So now we're joining Chris over here for um, some interesting, we've got some interesting bits and pieces here, Chris. So talk us through what you're doing now. So now this is the second element to medical detection dogs work, which is the alert work. So working with people that have conditions and it helps them to live quality lives, doesn't it? That's right. So this is our medical alert assistance dog. So we've got young Bobbin over there who's working for Becky, who's showing us how someone with type 1 diabetes <laughs> would be alerted at 2 o'clock in the morning. I think all of us will be alerted at 2 o'clock in the morning today. There's, there's I mean. no way you're going to sleep through that. But Bobbin knows <laughs> how life-saving that is because the next time... Becky I mean, is, 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 is it more that he's attracted to her? I, I mean, in the wrong way. I'm not sure. He's looking very keen on her right now, isn't he? Yeah. yeah so what's he, he's sniffing actually for low blood sugar. That's it, yes. Wow. Yeah. He has noted the change, and he said, right, I need to wake mum up. Yeah. I need to go and retrieve the testing kit, which he got, he got from the table, yes. and Everyone he's brought it back. Because at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're not going to jump out of bed and think, oh, no. I must go and get my testing kit, especially if you are having a low. <laughs> so he's I think, done I think, that. I think we need a sort of like a sort of privacy curtain <laughs> around that bed. <laughs> you can see he loves working. He really, he really well, does. He loves something. Yeah, he does. He loves working. Now, interestingly, with diabetes, you know, when you have low blood glucose, that it's not a smell that goes with having more or less glucose, but it's more sort of the, the body odor that gets emitted. Is that right? That's right. That's right. It is subtle, subtle changes. Mm. A lot of our clients or a lot of people would perhaps run their sugar levels slightly high mm. just to avoid that, but that can have a long-lasting effect amputation, sickness, blindness. Yeah. So with our clients, with their assistance dogs, they can run their levels at accurately, knowing that if they were to, to drop, then their assistance dog would alert them to it. Wow. So, it, you know, he really does, our dogs really do save the lives of, our, of the clients. Well, uh, at the same time, it looks like we're being saved from vacuuming, which we is are, great. Is we that, are. Is that what's happening here? So another condition which we're very commonly asked to train dogs to respond to now is a condition called POTS. Postural tachycardia syndrome. Mm -hmm. and this is a heart condition, this is a cardiac condition. And it happens a lot when the, the, the people are, are moving around, they've sat up, they've stood up, they're walking around, they're hoovering like this. And in this condition, there is no warning. There's nothing out there apart from our assistance dogs that will alert them to the change in blood flow to their brain. What would then happen is the, the person would suddenly fall to the floor. Wow. So if you were hoovering... Horrifying as a human being to think, you're doing something normally and then you fall over. They must injure themselves quite badly. Definitely. Fractures, broken limbs, head injuries. Wow. If you're at the top of the stairs and you're hoovering and suddenly you fell, you could be at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. With this condition, they could then be out for eight to ten minutes. So what Becky's done here, she's then put herself down to the ground, nice and safely, and Bobbin's just laid with her very calmly, yeah. waiting for her to come round. What a nice thing to wake up to as well. Definitely. You know, Waggy a nice, tail. calm, happy boy. That's uh, it. I remember seeing, guys, uh, a, a POTS case when I was at the medical detection dogs, and I was chatting to the lady. She was lovely. And uh, at the end of our filming, she, she said, oh, I'm having an episode. And the dog alerted in the way that 
we were advised that he would sort of stare straight at her. She then had a real episode. It was quite frightening to see, if I'm honest. Uh, but what was unbelievable was the whole time the dog was so chuffed with himself <laughs> because he's like, yeah, I've got it right. Look, she's having it. I told you she was going to have one. Amazing. But at the same time, must be transformative for their quality of life to be able to go out and enjoy their life. I mean, yes, it doesn't look super normal to be laying down in the middle of a shopping yeah. centre, but at least they can go. They can. And we've got Caitlin over here who's sort of demonstrating that. So a lot of our clients, before they have their assistance dog, may go out in a chair because they're not going to have any awareness. Yes. Suddenly they're crossing the road yep. and they collapse. If they're yep. in a chair, they're safe. So in this scenario, Caitlin could be walking down the street. She could be at the NEC at Crufts. Suddenly she's having a, a change and it is, it's happening. Brava's there. She's tried pouring her ankle already to get her attention. And she's there. She's trying to get her attention. She's saying, look, I'm going to have a scratch. Come <laughs> yeah. on, you're gonna, you've got to respond somehow. Sorry, that's my I, fault. I forgot I need to, to treat get your for attention. fleas beforehand. Yes, so sorry. Again, she's pouring Very there. Good getting her, stop, stop the chair, stay where you are, you've got two to three minutes before you suddenly pass out. Wow. So again, in this scenario, Caitlin may go and talk to a security guard, shop assistant, and say, look, I've got this condition, I'm about to collapse, can Thank I go you. to your staff room, is there somewhere quiet in the shop yeah. that I can lay down? And again, Brav is there with her, very calmly, very quietly, just waiting for her to come round. Amazing. Although most dogs do enjoy a nap with us, don't they? So well, it could also be they just, you know what, I actually feel like a bit of a lay down. <laughs> it's just incredible, Chris. Now, guys, I would like you to, uh, to draw your eyes up to the cube. We actually have an amazing video with a young lady, Demi, who talks about her life-saving dog, Bear. My name is Demi and I have a medical alert dog called Bear. I have POTS. POTS means that my heart rate goes quite high and my blood pressure drops upon postural changes which causes me to pass out without any warning. Having episodes out in public was really hard. I just collapsed to the floor without any warning and often hurt myself. I used to get really upset or hurt myself, embarrassment, frustration with my body. I wanted to be a dance teacher but I didn't envision how I could be a dance teacher when I was passing out and hurting myself without any warning. Um, it seemed impossible to be responsible for children and to be able to be a good dance teacher when my body was working against me. It was really hard knowing that we tried every single avenue that we could have tried. So I'd had surgeries, I tried medications, I tried lifestyle changes, diet changes, and for doctors to say, we've run out of options. We'd kind of tried everything. I had hit a brick wall. So I'd heard about dogs which could detect people's health conditions and I got in contact with medical detection dogs and ended up being matched with my beautiful bear. I loved him from the first day that I met him. I remember the first time Bear alerted and both the trainer and myself were quite emotional. Bear adapts and alerts based on what we're doing. So if we're at home, Bear can get away with just kind of sitting and staring at me. If we're out in public, for example, if I'm pushing a trolley, um, Bear will start staring at me a bit, which I obviously won't catch that as easily, and he'll either nudge me or jump up at me. Bear will do what he feels he needs to do to get my attention. I then know that I've got about four to five minutes before an episode comes on. I can sit down and Bear will then further alert me if he feels that I need to lay down. Life is so good, so good. I teach dance and I have my own dance school. I love what I do, absolutely love it, and Bear's by my side every single day and he's very much part of our dance family. I think Bear's absolutely incredible. To think how much a dog, a dog has changed my life and that a dog does what doctors can't do. Amazing surgeons and people that study medicine, they can't help me as much as Bear does. Oh, I just wish Bear knew just how amazing he is. He's incredible. The power of his nose and his loyalty to me Bear has given me my life back. Incredible, huh? Now, I know that we all have really strong relationships with our dogs, and we all love them for their unconditional love. Uh, I think it's always important for us to, in these times where it's all very difficult to live in the moment, and that's what dogs really encourage us to do. But these dogs are actually helping to save lives and give people their lives back. Now, um, I've joined this waiting room with a bunch of Oh, the shifty, shifty looking <laughs> characters. Shifty. Please tell me you're not Pasturella and you're E. coli, because I don't want to sit in the middle. It's a bit gross. 
All right. So now we're actually going to be talking a little bit about the community medical detection area of the work. Claire's back with us. So Claire, um, I'm not going to catch anything sitting beside these bunch, am I? Very, very weird. You're the weirdest, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, you saw the dogs working uh, on the stands, and you saw that they can find E. coli in a broth. Now, what we learned during COVID, and, and many people may remember that we taught our dogs to find COVID on people, that, um, that dogs can do this. So you've got the one-on-one -on -one situation where a dog is working for an individual as an assistance dog. You've got the one to millions, which is Florence's work. She's helping the electronic nose be prepared for, um, to, to screen millions of people in the future. But we've also got one to many. A dog can find a bacteria when it's present on individuals. Now, why would we want to find E. coli? Well, I'm sure every single person in this audience will know someone who's been really badly affected by a urinary tract infection. What happens is you don't know you're getting one, an elderly person, a vulnerable person, they suddenly become very, very unwell, delirious, fall, have breaks, often resulting in a long hospital stay. Marlo's going to show you which one of these people has got E. coli planted on them. So they all look a bit dodgy, but one of them's even dodgier than the other. Let's see if Marlo can find him or her. So you just not me, not me, not me, not me, not me. Stand, oh. Gone past okay. Scott. A few. <laughs> Keeps going. Oh, he's hesitating. Gosh, I'm so glad she's wearing a mask. Hesitating. Oh, yeah, it looks like it could be that lady. <laughs> right, we're going to take her out the back and scrub yeah. her down. <laughs> so I think we're going to have a swap round, if you don't mind. We'll Amazing. swap round. Right. I'm not sitting next to you. And this time, if, she, if, if, if he <laughs> finds the lady holding the, or planted with the E. coli, please do give Marla a clap because he'll really enjoy that. Mm. So, okay, off we go again. So and what's really interesting about E. coli clear as well is that when you have a urinary infection, sometimes it does impact upon medical treatment, doesn't it? It actually makes, sometimes it makes the drugs not work very well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So he's short, no, that's it. <laughs> Now, um, you'll be going off to the dog groomers for a full scrub down. Okay, <laughs> there we go. So this will be hopefully rolling out over the next uh, couple of years. We'll be taking dogs into community centers, residential homes, and retirement villages to find people who are vulnerable before they become unwell. Fear of falling is one of the biggest problems to our independence. Make huge difference to people. Amazing. Now, I think the eagle-eyed amongst you might have noticed that uh, there's a dog wearing a cape. Uh, and this dog is, it really is a super dog, isn't he, Claire? So he tell us a, a little bit dog. about, so this is Asher, everyone. A little round of applause for Asher. Yeah. yeah. Just for the cuteness factor before you hear the actual skill. He has got an incredible nose. That is for sure, but tell us about what his special skill is. So Asher was a rescue dog. He came to us after a number of homes and he'd had a really tricky start. He used to run away all the time and when he went to try and catch him, he used to become very, very upset and scream. So I don't know what had happened to him in the past, but he became, came to us and he became an incredible biodetection dog. And he was actually the first dog to tell us that people who have got COVID-19 have got a unique odor. And he actually demonstrated that to our patron, the mm. then uh, Duchess of Cornwall. So it was a very exciting day. But he's also being nominated for Hero Dog of the Year. So I heard this. Hence the Superman yes. jacket. You'll just be uh, looking up at the cube, uh, and very shortly you'll be seeing that there is uh, um, some information about his uh, particular nomination. Uh, but if you do go to uh, cross.org.uk forward slash hero dog award, uh, and then if you see Ash's handsome good looks, rugged good looks, some would say, then uh, please do tap on there, take the time to vote for him. He really does need you. Uh, this incredible work that medical detection dogs did with COVID, obviously, you know, we feel like we're through COVID, but we all know that we're not. It's mm. just something that's passed by and we're living with it now. But a lot of those learnings weren't lost, were they? Absolutely not. So we understand now that people with a virus do smell different. We also know that if you have a different variant, your odor changes a bit. 
And we're also now prepared for the next time we have a pandemic. We've learned a lot about the way dogs sniff individuals in, in, in the real world and how we can translate this fantastic thing into a dog working. Ooh! <laughs> He's enjoying himself. He's found a patch of COVID. <laughs> He's so chuffed. Look at him. Hey? Yeah, so nothing was lost. We're more prepared for the next time. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, it's just, it's amazing to see the work that's being done by this incredible charity. Now, um, I would say that uh, it, it, it's a charity that I'm very proud to support. Um, you can see Asha. that the amazing work that's being done by the charity is transformative. Not only is it going to help in the future with diagnostics, it's supporting the development of AI and the development of uh, being able to pick up certain diseases and, and making people's lives better. We all know that dogs make our lives better, but these particular dogs are doing a cracking job. So if you would please, massive round of applause for medical detection dogs. So this is an incredible charity. If you'd like to go and have a chat to them, they're in Hall 3, Stand 94. Um, if one of the dogs do sniff you, then run quickly. Uh, but uh, look, it's, it's been wonderful spending time with all of you, wonderful dog lovers. Thank you so much to the Kennel Club for giving us this spot. Uh, thanks very much, of course, to everyone at Crufts, uh, wonderful Channel 4 YouTube for covering this event. Uh, guys, I've been Dr. Scott Miller. Thank you very much and have a great day. See you later. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for the incredible medical detection dogs. Make sure you go visit them. Hall 3, Stand 94. Huge thank you to Dr. Scott as well for taking us through that wonderful presentation there. The incredible work of the medical detection dogs. It's astounding what they are doing at the moment. Really fantastic stuff. Well, that concludes our morning program here in the main arena at Crufts. Uh, so please do start to make your way out of the arena. Go and get yourselves a coffee. And of course, get yourselves into the halls. There's plenty of shopping to be done uh, and plenty of bargains to be had here on the final day of Crufts 2023. So we are now going to clear the arena. Ladies and gentlemen, if you could please make your way back into the halls and then we will be back with our afternoon program from 3.40 this afternoon. So. If you've got your tickets for this afternoon, you're welcome back here at 3.40. Uh, otherwise, thank you for joining us this morning, and we will be back with you at 3.40 this afternoon. Please make your way out of the arena, ladies and gentlemen, into the halls, and we will see you a little bit later on this afternoon. Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. My chronic pain began to develop when I was a teenager and then when I turned 16 I became very unwell and didn't get better. I wasn't able to attend school regularly. I wasn't going out with my friends or going to parties or even just going to the shops. Chronic pain is something that's difficult to understand if you don't live with it and that can make it quite isolating for the person that it impacts. We didn't really know much about exactly what was wrong with her at first. It took a number of years to be able to understand her illness and that's been quite hard, that was quite a hard journey. And then Albert appeared and Albert joined our family. And he's just changed it again. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity Dogs For Good. Uh, they trained him and matched him with me a year ago. Albert's very intelligent, he's very smart and good at figuring things out. He loves his job, he's happiest when he's doing task work, whether that's loading the washing machine, fetching the post or picking things up for me. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day to day activities because of the pain. But the last year with Albert has been amazing. I've started a legal apprenticeship so Albert is um, helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. 
I feel much more confident to go out to places independently and that's really helped me to build my own friendships and my own life and feel like a young adult. He's enabled her to go out on her own without having to constantly check in with me or without having to be with somebody else. He, he watches out for her and you can see the way he looks at her, the way he watches her, he watches what she's doing. They are a life-changing charity and they've produced Albert, who is a life-changing dog. I can do things that I didn't think I was going to be able to. Having him has opened doors again, it's opened up opportunities. I feel really positive about the future with Albert by my side. To me, Asher is a real hero dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic path, but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. And he's done it with a waggy tail and enjoyed every moment of it. When Asher came to us, he came to us because he clearly had a number of homes that had been unsuccessful and he had a lot of behaviour problems. He used to run away and when you tried to catch him, he used to become quite defensive. I suspect something quite horrible had happened to him because he actually became really quite scared and would scream in fear. So it took quite some time to get him to see his real personality. So now he just, <laughs> if anything, he'll trip you up. Um, he just wants to play with you, be around you, and play with the other dogs. He just has a great life now. So Asher is a biodetection dog for the charity, which means that he uses his nose to smell human disease. The use of the dog's nose to detect disease means it can be done rapidly and non-invasively. So it can be done in a way that has very little impact on the patient. Asher is always keen to work, always loved his work, always wagging his tail when we go into the training room and teaching us incredible things. Because we've used Asher for a lot of our research and development work, so he was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. Now for some diseases, it isn't about the dogs always being the diagnostic. It's about learning how these incredible noses find the disease through the volatile signature and translating that perhaps into an electronic device in the future. So I suppose one of the most exciting jobs that, that Asher did was he told us that COVID-19 had a unique odour, or rather that people that had the virus had a unique odour. I mean, it really is a win-win. Asher, with his difficult background, his many, many homes, can now enjoy life and enjoy saving our lives. I mean, it's just amazing. We're so proud to have had Asher as part of the team. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. I would certainly uh, call Beauty a hero for myself and the whole, whole family. Beauty uh, is a Labrador now going on two years of age. Beauty seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time uh, of the family. Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after, after uh, Beauty came into her for, forever home. Chemotherapy is difficult for anyone to go through, a bit more difficult for a younger child, and, and she's still going through it at the moment. However, as soon as Beauty walked in the room, it all smiles. Uh, the dog actually get, kept the family together. Beauty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. I can't imagine a life without Beauty and she's made the biggest change to my life and I don't even know how I coped without having her because she's been amazing to me. Well, when, when I was losing hair, she was also losing hair as well because she moats. So it was basically like we were both lo losing hair together. Like when I used to brush her, there was big clumps of hair just like me. 
Where do I start with Beauty? She's been amazing. She is if she was meant to come, to be honest with you. Um, she came along at the right time. She's been amazing, absolutely. <laughs> Beauty has really helped me with my epilepsy on numerous occasions. I had a seizure in the nature reserve that's close to us. I fell into what was quite a deep puddle. Uh, Beauty actually burrowed underneath me, lifting me out of that puddle, which meant that I didn't take it in the water. I'm very happy to have Beauty because knowing that she's with my dad when he's out for walks and he might have an epilepsy attack keeps me um, happier knowing that he has her to keep him safe. Beauty has given me a lot of support throughout when I was ill and she means the world to me because if I didn't have her I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. In my eyes, Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Bull Terriers are amazing dogs. They are an incredible breed. She's been a fantastic little dog that's spread love and showed how positive and amazing they are. My name is PC Claire Todd. I've been a police officer for 24 years and a dog handler for 18 years. In 2014, I took on Stella as my police drugs dog. Stella's nine years old. She's been working as a drugs dog for the last eight and a half years and she's just recently retired. Oh. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier in the country to become a police dog. When I first went down there and I watched her search and her search drive was immense, I thought, well, I'd be stupid not to give her a chance, although she wasn't the typical Spaniel or, or Labrador that, that we normally use. It's normally a six-week course to train the dogs, and uh, Stella completed her course in four weeks. Her number on the side, 2025, is her uh, issued uh, police number. And this is uh, Stella's actual warrant card with her picture on. They were issued in 2019, so it was when they became uh, recognised as police officers as well as ourselves. So she's trained on a set of blocks, and in one of those blocks we'll put the drugs or the cash or, or the gun, and we run her along those. And as she goes along, she recognises that one's different and she gets a reward. And then you build it up by repetition, and then eventually she learns to stop on that smell. All our drugs dogs are trained on real drugs to make sure that they're indicating properly. She can search a house a lot quicker than what we can as officers, because Stella's using her nose. So when she finds the substance, she's trained to freeze. Obviously with drugs with powder, we don't want her interfering or ingesting anything only to keep her safe and also to keep the evidence safe. Her first search, she searched a house and uh, indicated behind a dog bed and there was £25,000 in cash hidden. So she's found thousands of pounds in cash. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. Clever girl. For us, it's so rewarding to see her in such a positive light, especially as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Stella's living proof that in the right hands with the right training, they're incredible dogs. This is my 654th night in the tent, and it's always better when Bertie's with me. Day six, 11, 142, 335. My name is Ashley Owens and I'm 13 years old. I've been raising the money for Porsche Rescue so they can build a shelter for the dogs so they can keep them all warm. Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me for over 150 nights. I think that's pretty impressive for a dog. When I feel very lonely in the tent, <laughs> he's a very nice companion and he keeps me warm. We have three dogs. The eldest is Holly, who's 19, and then we have Bertie, who's 10, a key member of our team. And um, we have a puppy, um, Lucia, who is a rescue dog. As a family, we've been fostering dogs for around seven years. Ashley saw the dogs arriving and would see the state they're in, and he's been to see the shelters. When he first saw them, he burst into tears, and that stayed with him. I started sleeping outside um, just by myself for over a year and um, I felt fairly lonely. There was one night I just thought, 
Oh, but Bertie does this. And I've got, obviously, Bertie again, which is so cute. So there's sometimes it's really tough and he just doesn't feel like continuing. <laughs> it's frost, literally inside of the tent. Every time he says that, he thinks of the dogs. It's not just my fractured ankle he helps me out with. Um, he's just been a very good buddy and uh, he's helped me through those stages where I've been like, oh, it's such a cold night, I don't really want to sleep out tonight. But yeah, he's helped me a lot. We are amazed by what Bertie and Ashley have been doing and we really hope this inspires other dogs and children to have that bond and to do something special with them and maybe go out and raise money together. I don't think it's just me raising the money, it's we're both raising the money. Spreading the awareness and the importance of um, adopting an abandoned dog, that's really my goal. I think Bertie's a hero dog because he inspires me to keep on going and sleeping outside. Night, Bertie. Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. Easy. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. Round. Nice quick turns. It's a perfect start. Round the so spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Keep far, going. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamuk, yes. our compact SUV. Ooh. Our best in show. Skoda. Are we ready for some heel work to music, ladies and gentlemen? Please welcome your judges. First of all, Sandra Hallam. Please welcome our head judge, Louise Ince. And your international judge, Greta Wagner. So our judges are going to take their positions. And they, as I say, are going to be judging each routine. Ten marks for content and flow are available. Ten marks for accuracy and performance. And a final ten for the musical interpretation of the routine. How does the handler embrace the track that they've chosen and weave that into the routine? How does the music interact with the props and the movement? Okay, we are ready for our first handler. Our heel work to music, international freestyle. Representing Switzerland, please welcome, with 10-year-old Jack Russell Terrier Sam, Monica Garig. So this is 10-year-old Enki du Petit Royaume with handler Monica and a brilliant routine to a song you're gonna know, Mac the Knife. Here we go. Oh, the shark baby has such teeth dead and it shows them pearly white just a jack knife has old Maggie made And it keeps it up out of sight You know when that shark fight With his teeth, baby Scarlet billows start to spread Fancy gloves, though, where's old Maggie made So there's never Never a trace of red Now on the sidewalk uh -huh, Ooh, Sunday morning uh -huh, Lies a body Just oozing light Get someone sneaking Round the corner Could that someone Be Mac the night There's a tugboat down by the river, don't you know? Where a cement bag just drooping on down. Oh, that cement is just, it's there for the way to dare. Five will get you ten old Mackies back. 
What a lovely way to start this international final. That little dog with such character there. And uh, the handler really showing off the well, the way the dog was so well taught. Because one of the things the judges are looking for is are the handlers giving too big a signal? And there were some lovely sections there where the handler had her hands in her pockets and in no way was she giving any physical sort of pointing of her uh, hand to tell the dog to do something and that's important for these judges they want to see very subtle signals and uh, that little dog was really quite responsive to uh, the signals that were being given but they were being covered by the moves that the handler was doing but uh, the beauty about freestyle and you know there was a good example there was that the handler really sort of sold the moves that the dog liked to do uh, little dogs they often sit and beg very well and because they're so small they can jump on the handler's back and things like that and so that's what you're trying to do when you construct these routines you're trying to basically take the things your dog likes to do and then you've got to put it to music and that is really important bit putting that to music making sure everything fits together so representing germany with eight-year-old can terrier toto so our next competitor will be our little can terrier two terriers one after the other and this is toto out with connie her handler and they're going to be performing to concerning hobbits Oh, what a cute start.
What a lovely little Ken Terrier that was from Germany. And uh, some lovely moments there where the dog shot off around that log. Lovely distance. And distance is something that the judges are going to be looking for for top level marks. Distance from the hand of being well away from the dog and perhaps performing moves where the dog is actually facing away from the handler. So here's the score for our first dog. That was that little lovely Jack Russell. And a 26.40 for Monica and Sam from Switzerland. And that's a really good score. Some eights and nines there. So they've done so well. And uh, that's really setting a good mark for all the teams to come. Doing a lovely distance creep out ahead there. I was just talking about distance move and difficulty. And that little Jack Russell there did a stunning creep away from the handler, which was requires great confidence from the dog. So that was little Sam and his marks. We will uh, get to little Toto's marks very soon. And we're on to our third handler of the competition, all the way from Canada. And this is Dakari, the Australian Shepherd. They performed here last year, did very well. They're performing to Dance Monkey.
Well, what a lovely little routine that was with Dakari from Canada. And totally different from the routine they did last year when they were here. And uh, that team, they're well practiced at being in this sort of atmosphere because they've appeared on America's Got Talent and Canada's Got Talent. So the dog was not faced at all about what was going on in the arena. So here we have the score for our little Cairn Terrier. 20.05 there that goes into our second place. And you see the deductions at the bottom if you've never watched freestyle before. The only deduction the judges can give in that section is for barking. And there was a little bit of noise there from uh, that little Cairn Terrier as it was getting a little excited. And uh, the judges, if it feels like it sort of distracts a little bit from the routine, they will just take a few marks off. And each judge, as I say, can uh, deduct up to four marks. And as you can see, when the scores are coming up, the the, uh, the scores are uh, added together for each of the judges um, under each of the headings and then averaged. And uh, we're there on to our fourth competitor. And this is representing Sweden. This is Navy, the Border Collie, with her handler, Ella. Six-year-old dog, this is, sorry. And uh, they're going to be performing to Begin. And this has been a big dream of this team to come here and perform. So we wish them well. Put your Try so hard to be your man, the kind of man you want in the 
well. If you wanted to see distance work, there was a routine to watch because that dog was working very well at a distance there in many of those moves. And it was a, a, it's a very high drive collie. You can see that whole intensity in that attention that dog was giving its handler. And uh, utilizing some of the moves that a border collie loves to do with big circles and things like that. And even that bouncing in front of the handler. It's a very good sort of natural dog move. I'm sure the dog sort of would do it naturally. And but harnessing that as a move, and that's the brilliant thing about freestyle, is that you can harness things that dogs love to do. So here was our Daiquiri score, which was Canada uh, performing to Dance Monkey. They've got 23.97. That's got them into second place. Uh, bearing in mind our Jack Russell number one dog was on 26.40, still in first place. So Daiquiri there, performing to Dance Monkey, the handler doing some acrobatics as well in the routine, which uh, you don't have to do, but if you can do it as a handler, it might open up other moves that you could do with your dog. But the beauty about freestyle is even if you're not that acrobatic, and I certainly am not, um, is that you work with what you can do and you find the music and the idea and the story, perhaps, that suits you and your dog. So you can actually beat somebody who's doing lots of backflips and everything else because it's well, about finding that right music. That was with so we're on to our fifth handle all the way from Japan. And this is Sachiko with Alina, a seven-year-old bitch. They're performing to Amazing Grace.
a cute ending to that routine and, and a totally different piece of music from our last dog. But both dogs, the handlers have chosen great bits of music for the, the character of the dog. There we saw Alina, a lovely feminine, smaller border collie and using that lovely floaty music. And it just suited that team and particularly that dog. And that's the, what's so interesting about this sport is it's right, one of the key things is finding that right bit of music for your dog. And talking about our Swedish dog, uh, which was doing the track begging, they did very well there and got 24.57 into second place. So there was uh, that very good distance work, if you remember, from Navy, the uh, Border Collie. But look at that side pass facing ahead of the handle. Look at the distance away. That dog has to be listening to that handler. Look at those ears back, listening intently. But uh, that dog's got the confidence. It's got the, the drive to be able to do those moves there. And if they've got the confidence, then they've got a bit of that X factor that you're looking for in that routine. Because they've got that X factor, they're going to sell these moves to the audience and the judges. Look at that dog go. All of this done with positive reinforcement, so that's done with toys and treats. You can't get dogs to work like this without the use of lots of rewards. So on to our sixth handler next. And... Uh, they're going to be performing to Car Wash, a uh, familiar track to many of you, I'm sure. And this is Trina with Joey, a lovely Border Collie dog. Then nine, he's nine years old. Now, uh, they've been competing in freestyle for four years, and Joey's a freestyle and he worked music champion in Denmark. So it's 26.40 they've got to beat.
well these different types of routines you can see in the sport are coming thick and fast because there we had sort of more of a story based routine they were obviously washing their car and the first we've seen with a few props as well and those props will be analyzed by the judges as to whether they were used enough um, and so that will come under the musical interpretation part they'll be looking at were those props relevant to the routine so there's our scores for our japanese team uh, the little, lovely little colleague called alina into fourth place with 23.17 and so different to the car wash we've just seen this was more of a dancey floaty routine very graceful uh, which really suited this team and these judges they have a hard job because they've got to match each of these routines against the criteria that are laid down in the rules um, and even if they don't like the music they've still because they're experienced they can appreciate that the, the team are working well with that track they're interpreting uh, interpreting it really well using the accent the lyrics sometimes um, in the music So on to our seventh handler, and uh, this is a lovely little border collie bitch from the Czech Republic. She's nine years old, and they're going to be performing to Narnia. They've been competing in freestyle for eight years, and this is their first time competing at Crufts.
Well, there was a lovely range of moves there with that team. And hopefully that will do well under our first section, which is content and flow. The judges will be looking to see varied content and uh, making sure that the moves flow naturally from one to another. And that one again was one of those nice, graceful pieces of music. Graceful hand that helped that out as well. And we can see now our scores for Trina and uh, her lovely border collie, Joey, performing to Car Wash, 23.90, into fourth place. So it's uh, quite close in some of these scores coming in, but uh, first place is still being held by our number one in the running order, which was that Jack Russell on 26.40. So, hopefully some nice content in our last team there. And uh, we're going to be shortly moving on to our next competitor. But you can see the brilliant way that some of these handles are so creative with their, with their thoughts and routines with these music. And one thing that struck me watching that last dog was uh, uh, you have to be actually really quite good at mixing music because these tracks of music, they don't just all end at four minutes. And that's how long these dogs are working for, up to four minutes. And so sometimes you have to be quite good at getting the uh, music down to four minutes or up to four minutes. You have to be, you have to get used to actually editing music so that it can uh, not sound like you've got a, a really sort of cut in the middle of your music where you've had to cut out a bit. So uh, our next competitor is a Legato. And of course, a Legato has already done well this year on Thursday, one of the uh, gun dog group. This is Bella. She's an eight-year-old bitch all the way from Norway. They're going to be performing a medley from My Fair Lady. So it's their first time competing at Crufts. They've won the Norwegian Championships in 2022. So we wish them well. Go 
girls come and kiss me. Show how you'll miss me, but get me to the church on time. If I am dancing, roll up the floor. If I am whistling, me out the door. I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong, the bells are gonna chime. Kick up the rumpus, but don't lose the compass and get me to the church. Get him to the church. For God's sake, get me to the church on time. I'm getting married in the morning. Ding dong, the bell on a chime. Some bloke who's able, lift up the table and get me to the church. little dog that was really enjoying its time out there in the main arena and uh, didn't stop wagging its tail I don't think throughout and that's so lovely to see because uh, you know you want your dog to be enjoying it and that can only be achieved as I said earlier through uh, positive reinforcement using the toys and treats and you've got to remember that each of those moves has to be taught individually and then it has to start to be put into sequences. So it takes a lot of training there. So here we have our score for our check for public handler, which was Angie. And that's 23.17. Goes into fifth place. Little tiny deduction, deduction there for perhaps a little bit of noise that they heard. So there we had our Czech Republic handler who has just gone ahead of our Japanese handler. Uh, that's because in the rules, if there's identical scores, they look at musical interpretation and whoever has the highest mark in that goes ahead. So obviously uh, our Czech Republic handler there with Angie just had a little bit more in their musical interpretation than okay, the Japanese handler. So, we're on to our Hungarian handler next, and uh, that is Meredith, is the pet name of this dog. She's an Australian Shepherd. They're gonna be performing to I'm Always Here, Stroke Jaws. So I think those of you of a certain age will remember Baywatch. I think it might be something along those lines.
What a character that dog was. He really enjoying its time out there. And some, some lovely moments there. I mean, obviously using the resuscitation move. And that was a good example of, you know, you couldn't have done that in any other routine that we've really seen today. And that's about picking the right moves for the track that you're using. And so, you know, that would have gone well down with the judges because it's reflecting the choice of music. So there it is, our scores for our Legotto. 22.20 goes into seventh place. And the Legotto there and the Australian we've just seen, they were using uh, sometimes the props as what we call foot targets or platforms. So like our lifeguard there ran off to the lifeguard station and there the uh, Legotto can, would use the blanket, that could be a target. And targets are things we use in training to help the dog to learn about being at a distance from handlers. And uh, many of the moves that you see here when the dogs are facing ahead of the handler, the handler will have used what we call a target stick, which is basically a ball on the end of a, a pole. And we teach the dog to focus on that so that it's not focusing on the handler and looking at the handler, it's focusing on the prop. And we teach the dog to look ahead of us. And so there's many elements to these moves which you're seeing where the dog is facing away from the handler. So we're on to a handler who's probably very popular because she's uh, representing the United Kingdom, Kingdom. And this is Elsa, the red and white border collie with Nikki. They won the uh, freestyle final on Thursday, which meant that they are representing the United Kingdom today. They're performing to Good Morning. And uh, this is a fast little dog. Even though she's been working for the last two days, I guarantee those Duracell batteries will keep going until the very end.
Well, I said it was going to be fast so with lots of energy. And Elsa there just proving that uh, she really does enjoy being out there. A very nice little routine. One, as I say, on Thursday. And uh, they've actually won last year as well. And uh, they've had a very good cross again this year. So this is the score for our Australian Shepherd doing the Baywatch theme that you saw with the resuscitation into second place on 25.87. A nine there for interpretation. Uh, Judge like that use of the story with the Jaws uh, music in between. And that's what I meant earlier about editing music. Sometimes you can pop in there a little bit of relevant music. And again, the Jaws music suited the idea, the story that the owner was trying to convey there and so you have to get used to editing music and getting in your relevant bit of music as well and making it look all seamless in the on the music so uh, nice routine into second place look at that resuscitation and those ear movements <laughs> very nice So, it's been very busy up to now. We've had uh, some really lovely routines being performed today. And uh, we've still got our, can you believe, number one in the running order today, that little Jack Russell performing to Mac the Knife, 26.40. They're still in the lead. So, the nerves will be trembling out the back there. Will they be able to hang on? for our last few teams. But uh, we've still got some very good teams coming up. Okay. Are you ready for some more, ladies and gentlemen? So there's nothing like performing in this arena, I tell you, in the international. I've been very lucky to perform myself. And uh, with all these people, nearly 6,000 people sitting around, it does make your the hairs on your back of your neck stand up and uh, we're on to our 11th handler and she's from Belgium. Loot is with her border collie Nisha and this is an eight-year-old bitch. They're performing to the Earth song stroke Heal the World. Uh, Michael Jackson, I'm sure you'll recognize this music. It's their second time performing at Crufts and uh, we wish them well in their routine today. Really enjoys the song here this routine. Looking forward to this. Representing Belgium. Look after the box and What have we done to the world? What we've done What about all the peace That you pledged your only son What about flowering fields Is there a time What about all the dreams That you said was yours and mine Did you ever stop to notice All the children in the war
ask everyone to join hands and heal the world. Heal the world. Okay, so I think they have just withdrawn. The dog looked like uh, it might have needed to go to the toilet. It was just uh, not feeling right. So we've got the score coming up for our UK handler, which is Elsa. And look at that, they've just snuck into first place on 26.60, just ahead of that little Jack Russell on 26.40, I mean, it's very close there. But Elsa there, full of beans, and uh, really uh, such a happy and professional team. They, I tell you, they do train a lot. Um, and they can do that because Elsa is so enthusiastic. Um, I know Nikki sometimes says uh, she gets a bit twitchy if she hasn't been out and done some training with the dogs. and. Um, it's, uh, I think they're well suited, this team. They're both high energy, they're both working together. And Elsa is one of those very rare dogs where she just um, just wants to do it. it. It's not really even about the rewards. It's just she has such a bond with Nikki. And uh, Nikki knows she is a very special dog. So we're on to our 12th competitor. And... Uh, not many to go now and the judges will be uh, still keeping focused on uh, what they need to look at which is all those criteria you've got to remember that uh, they've always got to think that there still might be a better dog going to come in and a better routine so here's our 12th competitor and this is Desiree with Tess 11-year-old Border Collie bitch. They're going to be performing to Dance Macabre. And uh, this is uh, their first time at Crufts.
Well, what a very interesting ending that was. And leaving the dog in the middle of the ring there. So, so lovely. And, uh, you know, hard to believe that dog's 11 years old. I mean, it was going around there with such enthusiasm. And uh, that was actually uh, the handler, Desiree's first dog she had when she was 13 years old. So they've been together for all that time. And uh, they've been dog dancing for the last five years. And Tess there doing so well for uh, their first time in the big ring. So we've only got uh, one more competitor to go. Um, Unfortunately, uh, our Belgium dog there retired. This wasn't it for today, but uh, did a lovely performance up to that moment. But they've retired, so it doesn't alter the standings at the moment, which is Nikki with the lovely Elsa in first place on 26.60. So our last handler of the international freestyle final. And it's been a really interesting final, always is. I know having watched it for many years now, you sort of never know what's going to come out in the arena because obviously the UK handlers, we see them performing throughout the year at competitions up and down the country. And if you're interested, do go on to the Kennel Club website and uh, find a show uh, part of their website where, and you can find out where there is your nearest hero at music show and you'll see dogs of all different levels from starters novice intermediate and advanced and you might think you might have a go and one of the handlers funny enough on, on Thursday had come here back in I think it was 2014 and watched the freestyle and thought she'd like to have a go with it and then to this year she was actually performing in the final. That's a great story there. So our 13th handler is Barbara. She's from Italy with Zoran, the Border Collie dog, another 11-year-old dog. Uh, they're very experienced in competition, these two. And they're performing to Mercy in the Darkness, Stars of Tomorrow, Stroke Journey. So they have a very special relationship, Barbara says, and Zoran is her rock. So let's see what they can do. Can they knock Elsa off that first placed spot?
Well, a lovely sort of story there and a good choice of music because it was a combination of tracks uh, starting off with that eerie music into that powerful music which allowed the handler to do some more powerful moves and to move around the ring and the judges will be liking the fact that they used the ring they moved around because the ring use is so important uh, you don't want to be just standing on the spot so lovely little routine there and there is our scores for our Netherlands handler. That was Tess, the 11-year-old Border Collie bitch. And they're in the fourth place on 25.37. So this was the, uh, if you're in the UK, it's um, Jonathan Creek music, I think it was. And uh, doing some nice distance work there. We were speaking about distance work earlier, and that will have sort of scored well with the judges that distance work but you want you know a combination of moves some at a distance some close to the handler and you don't want to sort of them all at a distance and uh, i think it's the first ever routine i've seen with a, an actual skeleton sat in the roots in the ring at uh, at cross there i tell you there's been many a routine in this ring and there the dog just died at the end now that is confidence isn't it for the dog to do that to fall back on its own the owner was nowhere near it so we only have one more score now and uh, we've got 26.60 to beat so as you can see there the scores a mix of some eights there and uh, 25 points dead into fifth place so that means Nikki with uh, Elsa has done it again. So she will be over the moon with Elsa. Uh, again, doing the, the double, as we call it. But here was Zoran showing a variety of types of moves there, using the chin target on the book, but then into some lovely enthusiastic circling. Good control as well when look facing forwards going into the high but there was a moment where the dog held some flowers and did really good control it, it stood with one paw up and then changed to the next paw and again that will you know be impressive to the judges that there's this control the hand has got it's not just all about running around at 100 miles an hour it's about keeping control so there we see the results in first place is uh, nikki with elsa on 26.60 and then it's a uh, little Sam from Switzerland, which I'm sure she'll be very happy with, Monica. And uh, you can see them all coming into the arena now. The handlers, some of them traveled long distances to get here. So that is some commitment to uh, travel here, to uh, compete at Crufts, but it creates memories that these handlers will, I'm sure, treasure with their dogs. Nikki, I think, getting a little emotional there. She's uh, she's worked very hard to uh, get to this level and, and to work with this routine. She always does. She always puts in a very professional performance. And uh, it means so much to the relationship she has with this dog. Uh, it's probably like none other she'll have with any other dog. You often get one special dog in your life, and uh, I'm, I'm sure Elsa is going to be it. So we've had our three judges. They've done a, a brilliant job over the last three days. Uh, they've got to concentrate solely on what they're seeing. They can't be skewed by what the audience, whether the audience are clapping a lot or whatever. Um, and uh, they've got to keep focus what in their mind scores high points. And um, they've got to always be aware that there may be another dog coming into the arena that's going to do better. So is that dog that they've just seen, you know, the best? 
in their mind. And if it is, then they've not got to be afraid to score it high. As we saw there with the, the uh, scoring today, uh, our number one dog, Sam, that little Jack Russell from Switzerland, was our number one dog. And uh, they could see the quality in that performance and the accuracy. And uh, so they scored it very well. So there's a very happy Nicky. They will be doing another performance later on today. To and I'm sure Elsa will be still be as enthusiastic as she was on day one. Paying off today for Nicky. Fantastic. Our reserve in second place. Representing Switzerland. Now I'm sure we're going to see uh, Nikki and Elsa back Getty. again next year. Uh, Nikki also has another young dog as well. So uh, it might be red and white really collies uh, all around team. next year as well. As the top three in the as well. heel work yesterday Excellent. was uh, okay. all and red and white for the collies. Place. Please put your hands together with Australian Shepherd Meredith, all the way from Hungary. And of course, Christina our third place Elizabeth dog, let's not forget the very popular Baywatch routine with the resuscitation was a very popular moment with the crowd here, here in the today. arena when the dog did the resuscitation. And, well and uh, there's a, a lot to teach team. just within Give that one going, sequence. Folks, um, the handler can't give anything but any but a vocal command. She couldn't move. She had to remain sort of uh, motionless down there on the floor. So it's not like she could point to her mouth and tell the dog to put its mouth on her nose or on her mouth. And uh, that's the, the degree of training these dogs have to have. So a fantastic end to another fantastic international freestyle final. Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's cool. eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. weave. Nice quick turns. Through it's a perfect start. Round again. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Come far, on. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamik, yes. our compact SUV. Ooh. Our best in show. Skoda. What a treat we are in for. It is time for us to welcome into the ring a firm favourite here at Crufts. A team of 16 owners and their lovely golden retrievers, who I'm pleased to say have all achieved their Kennel Club gold good citizen. They are proudly supported by Vets Kitchen. So please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. The Red Arrows of the Dog World, please welcome the Southern Golden Retriever Society display team.
Ladies and gentlemen, the amazing Southern Golden Retriever display team. Absolutely amazing. Keep the applause going, ladies and gentlemen, for these incredible Golden Retrievers and their owners. Clap your hands, ladies and gentlemen, for the Southern Golden Retriever display team. When the day is dawning On a Texas Sunday morning How I long to be there With Marie who's waiting for me there Every lonely city Where I hang my hat Ain't as half as pretty As where my baby Keep it going is. everybody, come on Is this the way Southern Golden Retriever Display Team! Well, wasn't that amazing? One of the highlights at Crufts every year. We are delighted to welcome them back, the Southern Golden Retrievers. It wouldn't be Crufts without them, would it, everybody? That was absolutely incredible. Hello, good morning, everybody. Welcome to 2023 Crufts. We've got quite an exciting display for you today. Um, as you know, these are all going to be rescue dogs from some point in their lives that they've been unwanted. And rescues at the present moment is very, very busy. Most of the um, rescue centers are full, the dog pounds are full, and it's all quite sad in some ways. Um, there's many unwanted dogs, but we, you know, in, in life at the moment, there's many people now who are interested in going into the rescue charities and taking on these rescue dogs. And yes, some of them do have quirks, but at the end of the day, if you can work through the quirks some of these dogs have, they reward you so much. In today's um, performance we've got, we've got a number of dogs, and as I will be telling you all about each one of them, um, you'll, you'll realise that taking on a rescue dog is very, very, very rewarding. So, hope you enjoy this display of the number of dogs we've got. Thank you. Okay, the first one we've got is Kaz with Darcy. As you can see, Darcy is a beautiful blue mole dog. He went into rescue at just five months old, and he was actually the third home. He now lives with five other dogs in Lincolnshire. He's a very sensitive dog, big-hearted, um, but really, really is doing well. He started his agility, and as you can see, got great, great skills. He's now actually currently competing grade five in the Kennel Club. He is very much loved boy. He loves going to the beach. His favorite thing is actually people surfing. So if you see us walking around after this demo, please feel free, she says, to come and have a, have a cuddle and say hi. But this is a beautiful dog, beautiful dog. Well done. They're doing small Okay, just... Sorry, folks, we're just going to do a, a change in the height of the um, dogs. Dinosaur. Sorry about this, folks. Jumps have been put down low, so not, what we're doing now is just getting all the little dogs in to start with. So I think the first little dog is going to be yeah, Sally with little Mitzi, which is a little pug cross. So, okay, Sally, I think we're ready for you. And this is little mixture of Mitzi, and this is from Val Gray's Rescue. Sally said she first saw Mitzi on a video clip doing a demonstration at Discover Dogs. 
And I can remember this particular clip because everybody was all in awe of her. They loved her. And she's turned out to be such a smashing little dog. Mitzi had already done a little bit of agility with the previous owner, but sadly, due to personal reasons, she had to find a home for Mitzi. Mitzi is a bold character who loves her food and good with cuddles and keeps all the other dogs in the family in her rightful places. As she says, the Mitzi keeps all the male terriers in the place, so that's a typical female, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, Mitzi is lovely now, and Sally has done great things with her. She's um, competed at many, many, many Kennel Club shows, and she's just a little credit for little dogs. She's fabulous. So Mitzi is a little pug border terrier cross, and has got a heart of gold. Isn't that lovely? Well done. Well done. So next one, we got a Battersea dog, and it's called Bear. Bear's a five-year-old Pomeranian and was rescued by Battersea at nine months old. And says, Bear is mad as a bunch of frogs. I love that saying. He has starred in The Great and The Power and adverts for Great British Bake Off, as well as several Battersea adverts. He's a very sweet little dog and runs agility at grade six and won a grade seven competition as well. He's being ran today by Val Tomlin as the owner, Anne, has been unable to run him due to breaking her leg in a number of places. So I think we can all wish Anne a speedy recovery um, with um, her injury. But I can assure you that Bear is being handled very, very, very well by Val. As you can see, up the A-frame, that didn't cause any problems at all. And it's such a little dog. Beautiful little dogs, Pomeraniums are. Oh, where's he going? He's going everywhere. Well done. Well done, Val. Well done. Next little dog we have is from Happily Ever After with Sally and Peekaboo. Oh, what a lovely name. Peekaboo is a little crossbreed between two and three years old. Peekaboo arrived as a very scruffy and sad Romanian street dog. After spending his early days at the rescue, he came to live with Sally as a foster, obviously failed, and Peekaboo decided he really liked Sally's husband and now they are inseparable. Some of the Romanian street dogs, um, people sort of poo-hoo them a little bit, and I know we have a, a great number of rescues in the UK needing dogs. But some of these little Romanian dogs are really, really sweet. Um, our charity, Val Grays, we've done a few Romanian dogs and they've been a total pleasure. But anyway, this little street dog, from probably a life he wasn't ever gonna have been nice, nicely treated, um, is doing this really well. Going through the weaves, all very careful. Sally being very, very gentle with him. And it's lovely seeing these dogs do things. Peekaboo has now settled very well into the family. He lives also with a... Um, <laughs> woo! Where's he gone? <laughs> Is he going to go through? Yes, he's gone. Oh, no, he didn't. He comes straight back out. Probably thought, oh, what tunnel is that? It doesn't want to go back home through Calais. <laughs> I don't know about his tunnel. He's only been doing agility since last autumn, so this is very good for him. No, he's not going to do the A-frame, or is he? You need to get some tidbits out, Sally. You say he's being very good, he loves his food. Peekaboo is a total cuddle monster. And it looks like he is. He's having a great fun here with the public. <laughs> is he going to do this one? Yes. Come on, Sally. Well done. Peekaboo. What a lovely name. Well, well done. Well done. This is lovely. And well done for taking on a little street dog. That's lovely. Well done. OK, next we have Sam with Mac. And this is a little Valgrave's dog. But before it starts, this is Sam's birthday today. So she's very excited. Happy birthday from the whole of Craft Sam. Anyway, little Mackie's three years old, and he is fast and furious. He really is. 
Mike was um, being advertised along with his brother, uh, 50 pound, had to go, get rid of, didn't want him. And we as Valgraves went along and saw him in this house, which, well, we just paid the money and got these two little dogs out. And, and Sam has done absolutely tremendous with this log. Funny enough, when, they, when he and his brother came in, they were, they were tiny little scruffy Yorkies. But he's really turned out to be quite a big Yorkie, but look at him go. Mac is always happy, smiling, absolutely loves his agility, been a total and utter, utter joy. He loves his orange ball. He just loves, loves life. And he's the perfect companion. Look at that. Well done, Sam. Well done for doing everything you've done with him. And have a great day today for your birthday. Right, next we've got a, another little doggy from Battersea, Amy. Amy running Neva, a cockapoo. Look at her, she's beautiful and beautifully clipped. Neva is a six-year-old cockapoo who was given to Battersea at only four months old. She now lives with Amy and loves nothing more than cuddling up on a sofa. Neva competes in agility at grade seven and last year competed the IFS World Championships. Wow! And became, in, and became two times world champion after winning two gold medals. Oh my goodness, isn't that marvelous? A little rescue dog, six years old, into Battersea at four months old, and has won two gold medals. Wow, that is amazing. Fantastic. Well done, Amy. Oh, and he loves his orange ball. Lovely. Okay, we got next, we got Wood Green. And we've got Lindsay and Arliss with Betty. Little Betty is a little toy poodle cross, four years old. I don't know why all these little dogs go into rescue, but little Betty went to Wood Green, 10 weeks old. How can anybody not want their little puppies? I just don't know. Betty loves to play and will chase the ball all day long. She lives with Hattie, the other dog, and that is a three-legged Maltese cross. So Betty's very gentle with her. Well, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Betty loves cheese. Well, we all love cheese, don't we? But anyway, Betty will do cheese and will eat anything concerning cheese. Her agility training was interrupted last year a little bit because she was poorly. But anyway, now she's learning, she loves it. She's scared of spiders, but likes frogs. Now that's strange, isn't it? A little dog not liking spiders, but likes frogs. Betty is supposed to be a Cocker Spaniel, Poodle, Westie, but all we see is a Poodle. So she's a real little mixture. What a, what a sweetie, look at her. Oh, she didn't make the A-frame, but that is a very big obstacle. Through the tunnel? Yes. Yes, has she gone? No. That's it. Lindsay just cokes in her back. Bless her. That's a big tunnel for a little dog. Oh, bless her. Oh, Lindsay, she's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Oh, well done. Well done. That is so lovely. Okay, right. We've got another little dog. He's got a voice on him as well. Battersea. Peter with Bilbo. Lord Bilbo of Berkshire. Now that rings bells, doesn't it, being a Berkshire, Barky Terrier. Bilbo is a terrier. Bilbo came into Battersea again as a puppy and went straight on to foster until he was found his forever home with Peter. So that's lovely. Thanks, Peter, for giving this little puppy a future. Bilbo loves his agility and usually likes to bark. Hence, he's called Lord Bilbo of Berkshire. Bilbo loves his agility, loves everyone, and he knows he loves it as well. This will be his second visit at Crufts. So hark at him. He's a real Berkshire. Well, how, well, look at that. What a jump. That is fantastic. Oh, well done. So lovely to see all these dogs. Okay, so now we have Sue with Lollipop. Lollipop, as we can see, is a little corgi cross. Sue's a very dear friend of mine. She's done a lot of home checking, and I thank her very much. 
Lollipop is 13 years old, and today this is her 10th year of competing here in the rescues, and this is going to be Lollipop's last run. She's been retired, which is quite sad because she's been a real mentor, this little dog, in the rescues. So anyway, we're going to just see Lolly go over these jumps and just keep it in your memory that she's had this now here 10 years, and that is just so lovely. She's been Sue's supporter for many years. And she's so, oh, she's just such a lovely dog. Lolly is now 13 years old. She was rescued at seven months old. She loves life. She lives with 10 other dogs. And Lolly has actually reached championship level in agility. That is amazing. Sue is the owner of Whirlwind Agility Club and has many rescue dogs that have joined her club over the years. And I'm sure there's some of our Valgrave's dogs there as well. This will be Lolly's last run, Sue has said. And it's going to be quite sad. But, um, oh my goodness, well, why not? After 10 years of being here, she might as well just go out in glory, mightn't she? <laughs> That's it. Here's the carpet cleaner. Well done. Well done. So that'll go down in your memory, Sue. Lollipop on the green carpet, 10 years. She's left her mark now. That is lovely. What an achievement this little dog has done. I've watched her many times go around the agility show with Sue. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Been an honor to watch her. Well done, Sue. Well done. And best of luck with your retirement. Lolly, best of luck. Good girl. Oh, that's so lovely. Actually, it makes me sort of quite tearful sometimes seeing these dogs doing so well. So anyway, the next dog we have is, I've got a double check behind me, is Wood Green, Katie and Bertie, age two. Little Cocker Spaniel, cross miniature schnauzer. That is a nice cross. Lovable, scruffy Bertie, who has bought a wood green, again, only five months old. He was actually brought in to wood green by an old breeder of his. Wow. As he has some very mobility issues and was very wobbly and unsteady, Catty and Wood Green staff member took Bertie on as a foster while the veterinary team looked into the cause of his wonkiness. Oh, how sweet. Tests revealed nothing to be concerned about, probably something happened at birth, and he wasn't in any pain, so he was given the green light and was then rehoned. Bertie was filmed as part of the doghouse on Channel 4, but unfortunately, it wasn't the right match and he stayed with Katia in what is now his forever home. He has a massive support of Instagram fans. From a little dog not being able to walk in a straight line, he now can jump on a sofa, manage stairs, and basically he doesn't even think about his disability. His brand new agility now, flying over A-frames and mastering the weaves. That is fantastic. That is lovely. Well done. Okay, next we've got Joe Lyons and Fergus. Oh, I love scrummy Jack Russells. <laughs> oh, Jack Russell, right, okay. What can we do over there? Fergus has started puppy training at Wood Green when he was only 10, 10 weeks old and did further training at Wood Green when he was six months. He loves the opportunity to play, particularly with squeaky toys. He enjoys the fun of agility, but still has a lot to learn. He has had health issues that made him very sick last summer, but is well and truly on the mend and enjoying life again. As you can see, he's a real character, meaning that actually he says he's naughty and very much a showman playing to whatever crowd he can attract. Oh, that's so lovely. Okay, so the jumps are going to be changed, and we are now going into the medium dogs. 
We've got a selection here. And as soon as the jumps are up, this Okay, so we've got on the line, waiting just for the jumps to be done, we have Yogi, who is a little tiny crossbreed. And he is from Happily Ever After Rescue. He's seven years old. Yogi was rescued by a lady called Mrs. Adams, who is the founder of Happily Ever After. Another little dump dog in a bin by the side of the road in Romania. Lizzie adopted him in 2015, but today's handler is Kerry. He has proved himself to be a very clever and talented dog. It was discovered earlier on that he had an old cruise shirt injury, so he is actually semi-retired from agility, only jumping for fun now at a low height. Instead, he does obedience, rally, hill work to music. Yogi has represented the Midlands at Crufts in the rally competitions, winning the level three in 2020, and team come in second, both in 20 and 22. Well, that's such an achievement for just a little street dog. Yogi has also qualified for, for and competed in the KC GCDS Special Beginner's Stakes at Crufts 2020. Yogi likes to snuggle up with a duvet, doesn't like going out in the cold, and seems to be enjoying life completely. A smashing little dog from happily ever after rescue. That is lovely. No, Kerry said he's going to see the ring party. And look at that, what a lovely present he gave him. <laughs> OK, next we've got Liz and Muppet. Aged eight, kennel club name, Muppadoodle of Valgrays. Oh, what a name. Muppadoodle of Valgrays is a Shih Tzu mixed cross who's understood to have had several homes in Ireland. She was 11 months old when she arrived and Liz fostered her on behalf of our Grays Border Collie Rescue. Liz couldn't bear to part with her, so she stayed and Liz is a failed foster mum. She is unpredictable and a handful and full of character. She is prone to do zoomies and chasing a tail, both indoors and outside. Cheeky, naughty, loving and very com compatible. Muppet. Everybody needs to watch the TV. Muppet is the dog in the recent Nintendo Switch Christmas advert. But of course, Christmas has gone now, but that is fantastic. What a lovely dog Muppet is. Next, we have a little dog from Wood Green. Yes, we are up the top. Tess and Polo, aged five, little crossbreed. Actually, not little, big crossbreed. Polo was rescued by Tess. Together they have worked hard on training. Wood Green supported Poli, Polo with a behavioral training advice during her adolescence. Polo lives with three other rescue dogs. Tess works hard to ensure that Polo is well socialized, well trained, and is happy in all environments. This is Polo's third rescue dog agility performance and he loves agility. Polo has performed on stage at the London Theatre with Tess, and Polo helps support Tess with her autism. So that is a great achievement. Oh, he's gonna run about, oh, look at him. He says, right, I'm gonna trip over and give my mum a lovely cuddle. Are you okay, Tess? Yep, good, thumbs up, off we go again. Have a little go through the weeds. That is lovely. What a lovely dog he is. She hasn't put down what crossbreed he is, but he looks maybe husky in there. What a lovely dog, lovely dog. Done loads and loads of competitions and fancy going to the London Theatre as well for the Autism Got Talent. That's lovely. Well done, Polo. Well done, Tess. Well done, Tess. Right. There is no intermediate dog running. OK. Next, we have a Valgrays dog, Bill Metcalf and Buddy. Now, Buddy is delicious. Buddy is a three-year-old Australian shepherd. Absolutely stunning. He's been with Bill since he was just six months old. 
Due to the COVID restrictions and no training being available, Buddy is only just starting his agility career now. They've had Buddy for many years and also many other Australian shepherds. So Bill is quite um, knowledgeable on this breed. In obedience, he's, he's very good. He's just started the agility bug. All of Bill's dogs have been agility dogs, but most of them have been best friends and have been dearly loved. Buddy is Bill's sixth rescue dog, but what a cracking dog. Beautiful. And the condition, the coat just shines. Ugh, lovely. Well done, Bill. Complete credit to you. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Next dog we have from Wood Green, and it's Brit and Whisper. Age six, English Springer Spaniel. Whisper came to Wood Green at seven months old due to her excitability and not getting on with the other dog in the home. Wood Green volunteer Jenny spotted Whisper and thought she would be perfect dog to take part in gun dog scurries along with the other dog. Today, Whisper is running with Brit as her owner is recovering from an injury. Whisper's won many prizes, and at home, is her favorite toys are tennis balls. Look at her go. She's really, really quick. She loves performing tricks. Wow, that's nearly finished. That is absolutely fantastic. Well done. Well done, Whisper. OK, and I think the last dog now is from Valgrave's. Trudy with Indy. Indy of Valgrave's. Indy is five years old. She came to rescue at just only 14 weeks old due to owner's illness. Indy lasted 10 days with her second owner and now has a permanent home with Trudy. Indy hasn't been the easiest of dogs. A lot of time and patience has been needed. She's been very loving and lives with two other dogs. Indy attends agility classes on a regular basis. And I know personally that Trudy has worked so hard with this dog. She was quite reactive towards dogs, a little bit towards people, but Trudy seems to really, really worked hard, and she is a credit. That is absolutely fantastic. Thank you, everybody, very much, and thank you to Happily Ever After, Val Grays, Wood Green, and, and Bassey Dogs Home. Well done, everybody.
Do you want to see him work for Ellie? Every day, I put my life in Milo's paws. Chewie never left his side. Without him, I wouldn't have my husband. And she's still here today? Because of the dog. He's everything, not just to me, to my whole family. Day in, day out, dogs change lives. That's why, for 150 years, the Kennel Club and its members have been making a positive difference for dogs and their owners. We guide new owners, helping them to find the right dogs, brought into the world by responsible and caring breeders who want the very best for them. Giving puppies like Barney, a flat-coated retriever, the best possible chance to lead a healthy, happy life. Thanks to DNA testing, we've eradicated diseases such as CLAD, an inherited blood disorder in Irish setters. So Skye, Marta and Pear, as well as all Irish setters, can now lead healthier lives. There's always more to be done, which is why we continue to lead the way in helping breeders eradicate inherited diseases, improving dog health for generations to come. And we do all of this because when you have healthy dogs living with loving owners, the real magic of dog ownership begins. We're helping to build that unique bond between dog and owner through a range of training and activities that bring joy in the best and even the most difficult of times. Hayley lost her sister, but spending time with her dog Ellie, doing the activities they love, agility and heel work to music, got her through her grief. They've even been to Crufts, our most famous event for anybody who loves dogs. And thanks to Petlog's microchipping database, we're making sure that your canine companions have the best chance of being reunited with their loving families, should the worst happen. Like Jazz, who was reunited with her family after eight long and heartbreaking months. So thank you for being on this journey, as we work hard to make sure we continue to make a positive difference for dogs and their owners. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. weave. Nice quick turns. Quick it's turn. a perfect start. Round so spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Come far, on. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamik, a compact SUV. Oh. Best in show. Skoda. Your puppy will grow into a dog in several distinct stages, and sooner than you thought, they're almost grown. But right from the start, Royal Canin's Puppy Growth Program provides everything your dog needs for the ideal foundation for a healthy life.
My lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very, very good evening and a very warm welcome to Best in Show Night of Crufts 2023. May we ask you now to please stand for the national anthem. The Kennel Club is celebrating its 150th birthday. And it's also, also celebrating the greatest dog show in the world. Tonight, we have a night of championships. We have the Agility Championships. We have the Flyball Championships for the first time on Best in Show Night. We have the uh, Young Kennel Club Stakes. And we also have two groups. And then we set the scene for Best in Show 2023, The Magnificent Seven. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor and a privilege to welcome you all to the greatest dog show in the world on the final night that is Crafts 2023. Baxter, 12 months ago this very night, who's going to have the best in show rosette? Only a few hours to wait now. But the four, first of three performances here tonight. She's world renowned, she's an absolute superstar. Performing Summertime, please welcome Augusta Herbert. Oh. 
Thank you, Augusta Herbert. First of three wonderful performances here tonight on Best in Show Night. Throughout this week, we've had some unbelievable agility. We really have. And it's been our very grateful thanks indeed to you, Move. As our fabulous arena party set, the dog walk up, it gives me great pleasure to hand over to our senior daytime commentator, to Kate Smith-Moore. Kate, good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Nick. And yes, good evening to our evening performance, our championship agility class. You've seen all our dogs here earlier. You saw the smalls and mediums doing their jumping round. They then had to do an agility round. We've added those two scores together and we've literally got the best of the best here for you tonight. So without further ado, please, please, please put your hands together for Gary Murphy, our agility championship judge. So don't forget, after our agility class, we're going to be going on to the fly ball. Anyone here to watch the fly ball? Yes. Guaranteed to be a fantastic competition. That's the semis, and then that's going to be followed by the finals. And uh, we're delighted uh, to be having um, Gary Murphy here as our judge, uh, agility championship judge, who's doing a fantastic job this week. He did the large and intermediate on Thursday and is now going to be doing our smalls and mediums. Uh, we'll be going on very, very shortly. Uh, I am going to take the opportunity to thank our Claire, wonderful thank you very much indeed. Well. Uh, good afternoon to you all uh, from the week. main arena here. Really yeah, we're about to see what should be a fabulous course. conclusion of uh, the small and medium championship started this morning. Uh, with the jumping continued so with the agility this afternoon and now we have honed it down to the best of the best this evening nine small dogs and nine voting, intermediate um, dogs will be going and the first of the nine on. small dogs are so matthew burdett and brew five-year-old shetland sheepdog fourth in the agility smallest dog for matthew but a big attitude graham as we prepare to see the first dog, give us your overall thoughts about what's ahead for the next half hour or so. Excitement, great agility, and everybody having fun. That'll do nicely. And we're off and running very early over the dog walk is Brew and Matthew. Picking up five faults. If you're watching for the first time, you have to make contact uh, with the white markers at the bottom of the dog walk. If you don't, you pick up five faults. That's five more faults are collected by Matthew and Brew. Not quite the start they would have wanted. First of the nine small dogs. Picking up though through the weaves onto the A-frame. Same rules apply on the A-frame. You must make contact at the bottom over the U-move jump. Same rule. Got to hit that white. And actually, the seesaw has to touch down before 
Brew can leave it, so that's absolutely fine there. Little tight left hander. And again, more hesitation, and, uh, and that is an elimination because of picking up 15 faults. On you go, Graham. Yep. Uh, there we are, really good round. Not the start, as you say. He would have. Put, it was actually for three uh, eliminate. Uh, th sorry, three refusals. You cannot have uh, three refusals on the course. If you do, elimination. And there you go. He signalled the third one, and the crossed arms means the dog's been eliminated. Sizzle and Katrina Hand, Shetland Sheepdog, five years of age, runners up last year. They will be looking to make an impact this time round, and that's a fine start over the dog hook, but again, just missing the contact at the end, and that'll be an infuriating five faults for Sizzle and for Katrina, part of Team GB, second year at Crufts, this. But, of course, they don't know what is going to come behind them, so they will go flat out and put as good a time as possible, and you never know, those uh, five faults that might not be uh, as big a drawback as it could appear earlier on. This is quick and neat and tidy from, from Sizzle, from Forfar, Katrina and Sizzle. 37.2 and just the five faults, Graham. Yes, just the five faults. This dog is already an agility champion, but she's had five faults. You can only be awarded the title of agility champion with a clear round, but in her case, uh, she can still win, but she's already an agility champion. Les Pierce took a tumble uh, at the last this afternoon in the agility, originally lost points, those points were reinstated, so runner-up in the agility despite that tumble at the last, and making a good start here as well. It's Les and Fire, the working cocker. What about the weaves? Quick, neat and tidy, a great sight. Always give you great images here from Crufts on Channel 4. This is developing into a very tidy round. It's still clear, there was a real gasp among the crowd there, thought something untoward had happened. It hasn't, 33, 34, that's really a good effort indeed from Les and from Fire. 36.4, and clear, number one, that's the one to beat, Graham. He is, and uh, this is Les's first time at Crofts, he's done amazingly well. This is a great combination, and they've performed just about the best of their ability. There was just a moment's hesitation there, but he made up for it. Mark Wingate win from Derby with Snazzy, six-year-old Sheltie. Third last year. Bit of a mystery dog, Snazzy. Sometimes very noisy, sometimes keeps her, her thoughts to herself. Concentrates on the job. Just a little bit of zigzag in there, but it's OK. Might have lost a few fractions of a second. Have to enter those weaves from the right-hand side. Beautiful style going through the weaves as well. The A-frame, good contact with the, the white markers at the bottom. Over the U-move as well, gathering pace. Seesaw is good too. This is looking there or thereabouts, providing everything stays together in the concluding part of this round. Big, tight right-hander. This is going to be good. It's going to be up at the sharp end for sure. 36.9. Second place at the moment then for Snazzy. Really great effort there from Mark and Snazzy. This is a fantastic little Shelty. Really gave his all. Uh, as I say, he won't go home thinking I could have done better. That was about as good as he could have done. Well done, Mark. Lauren Langman, second dog, Blink. Very popular. Blink loves Crufts, and uh, we all love seeing her here. A couple of tickets. Loves the big arenas and the big crowds. And will scamp around this course and give full value for, for money, for sure. That's Blink, the working cocker, nine years of age now, but full of running, full of vigour, full of enthusiasm, tremendous through the weaves. A-frame, that's good as well. Over the U-move too, seesaw, lovely, lovely. Tunnel's good, and these times are very competitive. We had one decided by just a couple of a thousandths of a second on day one. It's going to be, it's going to be up there until underlining how unforgiving these things can be. Right at the end, right at the end, Graham, and it unraveled. It did. You see the dog running around the tunnel, so that was a refusal. If you didn't want to be eliminated, you had to go back and do it again. She thought, well, I'm not going to win this, so she carried on picking up the elimination and the dreaded crossed arms. Competition hotting up now. Dave Munnings will go for it, nothing to lose with Boost. Winners of the small singles on day two, reigning champions as well. Five early faults, though. 
second in the jumping this morning. But we're reaching the stage of the competition where putting your foot on the gas is the only option. All got to go for it. Over the U move. Good stuff over that uh, seesaw as well. Five faults. The time to beat is 36.4 and clear, of course. Only a couple of clear rounds so far. Well, look at that. Well inside the time. 34.0. And that's third place because of the faults. A very unusual fault there off the end of the dog walk. Dave knows that there are some fantastic dogs coming in behind him. Really had to push, which caused that fault. One of the fantastic dogs is Spider, working Cocker Spaniel, Lily Woodford, the handler from Northamptonshire. Got a real chance, these two looking really good. Third in the agility with a little bit in hand, we felt again infuriating over the dog walk, missing that contact point, and that will be five faults for Lily and for Spider. Can only put this down to pressure, Jim. I've never seen quite so many dogs in a, in a championship final missing the end of the dog walk, where they know they've just got to go uh, as quick as they can. Nobody remembers who came second in this sport. <laughs> That's harsh. That is harsh. Continuing the round, though, the time is, time is good, as we would expect uh, from Spider. 36.6 the time, then. And uh, with, those, with those faults, into fourth place. And you get to this stage, and they're all good, Jim, and they're separated by fractions. Look at Selfie. The Merle Shelty, a really pretty one. First in the jumping this morning. They won the small stakes last year, the London International Horse Show. These have a real chance overall. Bronze as well at the World Cup, so they're a season combination. We really like Martin, and he was the one who handled the dog that won by two one thousandths of a second on day one. So he's used to small margins, and at the moment, Selfie and Martin are going exceptionally well. Time looks good, no faults as well. Remember the time to beat it's 36.4, 32, 3, 4. Well, beaten it, they've taken a massive great bite out of it and Martin Reed goes top of the pops smashed it smashed it great great effort there by Martin 15 months ago that dog was actually a little bit nervy didn't quite have its confidence it has come on in leaps and bounds well deserved but now we've got Ashley Butler spoke to her beforehand and what a task for Ashley he was with us in the commentary box a welcome addition in the commentary box yesterday with Sully all of you will know this dog First in the agility this afternoon. Very, very competitive and so keen to win. 34.4, the time to be. Off goes Sully and off goes Ashley. Good at the bottom of the dog walk this time. No faults there. Moving really sharply as well, Sully. Tunnel is fine. How about those weaves? Been through those before at pace too. Little left-hander, 16 seconds gone. Over the A-frame, good contact at the bottom of that. Over the Yumu, this is looking quick and classy. And they're right up with the clock as well. In that twisting part of the course, and they've done it. I'm going to count them down. 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 34.6. Just outside it. 34.6 plays 34.4. My goodness me, it's those two thousandths of a second once again. Well, Ashley, you could tell she was straining every sinew, trying to get every little bit of speed out of Sully. I mean, he is nine years of age now, but what a close, great, fantastically entertaining competition, Jim. Well, we told you it would be good. We told you it would be close, but how close was that just confirm the result for you look at that 34.458 against 34.693 les pierce took a tumble earlier on but he's good enough for third mark wingate winning fourth and dave munnings makes the top five First of nine, medium dogs then, Joe Gleed and Topic, the five-year-old Cocker Spaniel. Good combined scores, really, to get here, these two. Very, very consistent, Graham. 
Yes, they are, and uh, working Cocker Spaniels becoming increasingly popular, especially in the small and medium category. Joe Gleed has been around for a long time, consistently trains great dogs, uh, and is always in the mix, Jim. Always in the mix and very much uh, in the frame for a good result here. 23 seconds gone and no fault so far. And, and Topic right on form. Little yelp going over that one. And this will really set a goal. Oh, I was going to say it was set a really good stand. And right at the end, an elimination from nowhere. The most unexpected elimination from Crofts 2023. Just, I, well, it's not often I'm lost for words. I just, I'm so, so upset, go gutted for, for a, I mean, that was a really, really great effort. I don't know what, the dog just veered off to the right and then uh, back jumped, picked up the elimination. Okay, Natasha Wise with Toto, her medium dog, very pleased uh, by finishing fourth in the agility, a real achievement that Toto's first time at Crofts qualifying as a result of a great first season of competition. So they are here with the best of the best, and the best of the five-year-old Toto, you never know, could still be to come. And looking to set a time, we haven't got a time on the board yet after that unexpected elimination. She'll want to put a good, quick, clear round to put pressure on the people to come behind her. She is fiercely competitive. She is a triple world champion with one of her other dogs. An absolutely brilliant competitor. Come on, Tash. Delighted to say no late, unexpected mishaps there. 36.5 and Natasha and, and Toto setting the standard for the rest of the medium dogs to be. This is Cruz, working cocker, five years of age. Lauren Langman, and well done to you, Lauren, the only hander in both finals, small and medium. Beautiful shot of Cruz, fantastic dog. First time at Crufts, and really proud, really proud of her. And there's a little full 360, but we'll lose a bit of time, but it won't lose any, won't lose any faults for that one. But there's, that is an elimination uh, for a, a wrong course. And the round will be completed. And uh, there was that little mishap, and then a bigger mishap afterwards, which so often happens here. But uh, Lauren and Cruz <laughs> completing the course, have very much taking their own route, but really appreciated by the crowd on the last day here at Grubbs. Yeah, everything happens so so much quicker, or it seems to do, especially when you get to the finals as well. So there was a hesitation there, did a little bit of a circle, uh, and was lucky enough to go, as you say, into the tunnel there. And then, unfortunately, the wrong course picks up the elimination. Here come Nigel Staines, loves his Kelpies. Zico Jr., the Australian working Kelpie, is here. Very consistent. Time to beat is 36.5. I don't think I'm taking too many risks in saying I don't think Nigel uh, and Zico Jr. will get inside that from Wharton near Morecambe Bay, these two. But a wonderful sight, and everybody here loves seeing the working Kelpie, the Australian working Kelpie, at work and, and doing really well. And you could be absolutely sure that at the end of it, Nigel, really cheerful, ebullient character, Competing in agility for over 30 years will have a huge smile on his face. Come on. He's always got a huge smile on his face. Great character, loves his Kelpies. Uh, and they are just tremendously consistent. He's, he's made the champ final. Uh, he's in, within the top 50%, which is what the rules say you need to be to make these finals, up to a maximum of 20. Uh, and he's doing very tight times and very good lines. And then he's going to get the old legs going down that line. Well done, Nigel. Yep. Top effort. Pumping the legs at the end there, did, did Nigel, really good. And, and again, consistency up to second place at the moment, four seconds or so outside at the time they had to beat. But great consistency, great concentration, and what a wonderful side as well. Charlotte Baker with the bearded collie Eliza, nine years of age. Charlotte from Ditchett near Shepton Mallet, running together for 18 months. Very, very special dog. Why don't you talk us around the course with this one, Graham? 
Certainly my pleasure. So it's a fairly straightforward start here. Jump straight up onto the dog walk, and then there's a sharp right turn. She slows down a bit just to make sure that the dog actually does get the contact. They're straight across the arena into the tunnel. They come out, and they've got to avoid the other jump in front of them. Hard weave entry is what we call flat weave entry from the left-hand side. Picks the dog up nicely, changes side. Want the dog on the outside of any circle. That makes sure they're running the fastest into the tunnel. Now we've got a little bit of a circle here. There, she changes, she changes side, brings the dog out on the left. Now she's going to leg it down there in front of the dog if she can. Pointing, go on, go on, and she does. Very nice, well done. Very nice and a very good time. It's the best so far for Charlotte Baker and for Eliza. 35.1 for one and a half seconds inside the previous best. So that is there to be beaten. A fine effort and what a lovely, elegant dog, the bearded collie, Eliza. Next is a Blythe Fox, Drew working Cocker Spaniel, the reigning champions. Fifth year at Crufts for Roo. And great admiration uh, for Blythe, who uh, broke her ankle a couple of months ago. So she won't be the quickest handler that uh, we've seen here, but she is very, very effective. The reigning champions are underway. And the reigning champs lost a bit of time there, that is for sure, but no faults. Have, have, have to pick things up here, for sure, for Rue and Blythe. Remember, 35.1 is the time they'll be aiming for to get inside it, the reigning champions. Oh. And sadly, that is an elimination if you're watching for the first time when the judge crosses his arms. Uh, Gary Murphy, that is an elimination, which again came pretty suddenly, Graham. Oh, there we go. Almost went over the wrong jump there, but she collected it. That was really nice, but we come off the seesaw over to the left, it should have been into that tunnel. That's where the elimination came, Jim. Tony Dawkins leading out Tiger, the mini American Shepherd. What a handsome tri-colored dog this is. Third in the jumping. And pretty animated at the start of, of, of this round. <laughs> Just got to get his toy off him. <laughs> Tony and the Tiger. All set. Away. Yeah, I remember this one from the jumping. Very, very quick indeed. Absolutely flying over the first seven or eight seconds. Nothing has been quicker than that so far. Can they keep it tidy? Look at the speed through the weaves. The tail flapping against those weaves. A-frame, brilliant. Little tight turner over the Yumu. Seesaw, beautifully done. Great contact at the end of it. Tunnel in and out in a flash. Again, that tight twisting section that Graham's been talking about. This is going to be good. This should be the best, I think, with my eyes. This should be the best. It is the best. Tony Hawkins and Tiger, 34.1. Brilliant. It was brilliant. I couldn't be more pleased for Tony. She's well overdue for a major win, and I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that she's going to stay there. Number one, top of the list. Brilliant. Outstanding dogs to come. Dalton Meredith and Munchie, seven-year-old Border Collie, second in the agility this morning. Has come back really well from some health issues. And 34.1 and clear. That is well within their sights. Dalton, an outstanding handler. Beautiful shots going through the wings. Yes, that's a perfect contact on the A-frame. You move good too. So is the seesaw. Loves the tunnels, does Munchie. And that, taking the exact course. It's going to be up there and thereabouts for these two. It's going to be really, really close. 34.5 for Dalton and for Munchie. Second place. What a great round that was. I, as I say, I'm surprised he didn't take the lead. He looked to be going just that little bit quicker. But uh, again, nevertheless, this is a fantastic partnership. Very well deserved. Last medium dog. Dev Dev, Laura Chapman. Best combined scores coming here. One of the Croft singles on day two. First in the agility this afternoon. The four-year-old Border Collie. Tiny but mighty. One speed. 
fast part of the GB team. Time to beat 34.1. Sadly, right at the start, inexplicably, the dog walk picks up five faults. But we'll continue. Go on, Graham. Yeah, it's pressure. Pure, pure pressure. She knew uh, that Tony Dawkins had put in a fantastically quick round and she just had to go for it. And will, of course, continue the round and, and with the five faults, well, um, we'll, want, we'll want to finish as high as possible. But, of course, it, it, would, have been a, it would have been good and there's a little, little wobble at the end as well. And that, uh, I believe, is an elimination. Yep, it is indeed. So... So right from the start, things went a bit wrong. It did, uh, and she knew as soon as she missed the uh, down contact, and that's the open hand there of the judge signalling uh, a course fault, missed contact. Uh, but she's still smiling, and that's what you just have to, have to love. And that was the elimination, because she did the obstacle from the uh, wrong direction. Confirmation then uh, of, of the result. Tony Dawkins and Tiger. 34.1. Dalton Meredith, so close in second place. Charlotte Baker, Natasha Wise fourth, and Nigel Staines rounding up the top five. Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. First up, the weave. Nice quick turn. It's a perfect start. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. <laughs> yeah, faultless so far, but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. She's got a compact SUV. Best finish. Open Agility World Championships. Let's take a look at the 2022 Team GB highlights. I think that deserves a massive round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Incredible Team GB at the 2022 Junior Open Agility World Championships. And if you're interested in finding out more, head over to their website and find out about the 2023 competition taking place this July uh, from the 14th to the 16th of July, 2023. Okay, it is now presentation time. <laughs> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for our incredible Agility Championship finalists. I can promise you, my lords, ladies and gentlemen, that the agility this week has been absolutely outstanding. And as we saw, the future of the sport with our juniors, their Open World Championship team, led by uh, Greg Derrick with uh, all the support team from the Kennel Club, is in great hands. And that championships is returning to Great Britain this year. So watch out for the news in the agility press. Thank you to the Kennel Club for their tremendous support. It gives me great pleasure to welcome our presentation party. You move have been amazing supporters of Crofts, and it gives me great pleasure to uh, introduce John Pierce on behalf of You Move and uh, former secretary of the Kennel Club, uh, Catherine Mansfield, to make the presentations. First of all, he is a man who is respected throughout the world, and he's been judging the championships here at Crofts 2023. We say thank you to this man for delivering the very best agility competitions the big ring can see. Well done indeed to Gary Murphy. Okay, let's present our champion, ladies and gentlemen, the Crufts Agility Champion 2023 in the small height with Get it with eager to work, Martin Reed. Actually, I got no food. <laughs> and the reserve ticket going to. Agility champion, the closet monster of Ashburn, Ashley Butler. And now, the medium, Crufts Agility Champion 2023, with Vaquero Cross My Heart, Tony Dawkins. And the reserve ticket with agility champion, Fan Dabby Dozy, Munchkin Jack, Dalton Meredith. Thank Please keep the applause going, folks, because now it is lap of honor time. Well, wasn't that incredible? Uh, Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's cool. eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. weave. Nice quick turns. Through it's turn. perfect start. Round the so spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so far, on. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamik, yes. our compact SUV. Ooh. Our best in show, Skoda. Year is no ordinary year, ladies and gentlemen, as the Kennel Club celebrates 150 years. Let's take a look at how the Kennel Club is continuing its important work. I probably wouldn't be here, to be honest, if it weren't for Ellie. Every day, I put my life in Milo's paws. Chewie never left his side. Without him, I wouldn't have my husband. And she's still here today because of the dog. He's everything, not just to me, to my whole family. 
Day in, day out, dogs change lives. That's why for 150 years, the Kennel Club and its members... Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. My chronic pain began to develop when I was a teenager and then when I turned 16 I became very unwell and didn't get better. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity Dogs for Good. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day to day activities because of the pain. But I've started a legal apprenticeship, so Albert is um, helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. I feel really positive about the future with Albert by my side. To me, Asher is a real hero dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic path, but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. When Asher came to us, he came to us because he clearly had a number of homes that had been unsuccessful. And I suspect something quite horrible had happened to him because he actually became really quite scared and would scream in fear. So it took quite some time to get him to see his real personality. Asher is a biodetection dog for the charity, which means that he uses his nose to smell human disease. He was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. I would certainly call Booty a hero for myself and the whole, whole family. Booty is a Labrador now, going on two years of age. Booty seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time. Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after, after uh, Booty came into her for, forever home. Chemotherapy is difficult for anyone to go through, a bit more difficult for a younger child. Booty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. I can't imagine a life without Booty and she's made the biggest change to my life and I don't even know how I coped without having her because she's been amazing to me. She means the world to me because if I didn't have her I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. In my eyes, Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Bull Terriers are amazing dogs. Stella's nine years old. She's been working as a drugs dog for the last eight and a half years and she's just recently retired. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier in the country to become a police dog. Her search drive was immense. I thought, well, I'd be stupid not to give her a chance, although she wasn't the typical Spaniel or, or Labrador that, that we normally use. It's normally a six week course to train the dogs and uh, Stella completed her course in four weeks. So when she finds the substance, she's trained to freeze. Obviously with drugs with powder, we don't want her interfering or ingesting anything you know, to keep her safe and also to keep the evidence safe. Her first search, she searched a house and uh, indicated behind a dog bed and there was 25,000 pounds in cash hidden. She's found numerous drugs. She's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. I think Bertie's a hero dog because he inspires me to keep on going and sleeping outside. It's day six, 11, 142, 335. My name is Ashley Owens and I'm 13 years old. I've been raising the money for Porsche Rescue so they can build a shelter for the dogs so they can keep them all warm. Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me for over 150 nights. I think that's pretty impressive for a dog. 
We are amazed by what Bertie and Ashley have been doing and we really hope this inspires other dogs and children to have that bond and to do something special with them and maybe go out and raise money together. I don't think it's just me raising the money, it's we're both raising the money. Spreading the awareness and the importance of um, adopting an abandoned dog, that's really my goal. was saying about the Kennel Club Charitable Trust does vital work and in a few moments time, around about half an hour's time, we will be seeing our Kennel Club Hero Dogs and the Kennel Club Charitable Trust has donated money to all five finalists, their chosen charities and I think that that is a fabulous, fabulous way to spend the money. But it's not just about helping charities, it is also about helping research at the University of Cambridge. It's about helping research at all universities to help promote and protect and preserve healthy, happy dogs. And that's exactly what the Kennel Club is all about. I can promise you that. So, put your rear defenders in. We're going to have a practice run very, very soon. We've set two world records here this week at Crufts on this very surface. Will a record be broken tonight? It's flyball time coming up very, very shortly. Thanks indeed to Royal Cannon. Will grow into a dog in several distinct stages, and sooner than you thought, they've almost grown. But right from the start, Royal Canin's puppy growth program provides everything your dog needs for the ideal foundation for a healthy life. So, as Nick was saying, ladies and gentlemen, this is flyball, which means it's going to be loud, it's going to be quick. Are you ready for flyball action at Crufts 2023, ladies and gentlemen? And as we've seen over the course of the last few days, it can sometimes come down to 0 0.01 of a second. That's how close this competition is. And that is because the standard of fly ball really is at the highest possible level. So, yesterday was the quarterfinal. Today, it is the semis of fly ball here at Crufts 2023. We will also be going live on Channel 4, ladies and gentlemen. So you need to make some noise for everyone watching at home so that they can enjoy and capture the drama and the action that is Flyball. Now, as Nick mentioned, we have set not one, but two brand new Crufts records so far this year. On Friday, the Crufts record was beaten. And the new record is 14.40 seconds. 14.40 seconds. Alongside me is the lovely Kate Smith-Moore. Uh, this is going to be very exciting. It sure is, John. And 14.40, uh, I mean, that is four dogs up that lane, grabbing that tennis ball and running back. It's literally like a relay race. It's absolutely amazing. If you've never seen it before, and I can't imagine that you haven't, you are going to love it. So, John, I think our judge is ready to go. Excellent stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to our flyball judge, all the way from Canada, Monica Johnny. So, Monica has got the job of presiding over our flyball semi and our flyball final this evening. Thank you to Monica. And I think we are ready for our first team. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen, in the red lane. Please welcome Focus. They are going to be battling it out against, in the blue lane, Tails We Win! So, we've got Focus in the red lane. We have got Tails We Win in the blue lane. We will be having a practice run, first of all. Uh, but in the meantime, the teams are just getting the dogs familiar with the lane, familiar with the run, making sure the dogs know where they're going, which is kind of important. It is very, very important. Now, imagine we've been here literally since Thursday. These dogs have been battling it out all through the week to get to this point. Each of these teams wants to be the Crufts Flyball Champion 2023. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. The louder you shout, the more noise you make, the faster these dogs 
dogs will go. I absolutely promise you that. So, let's see if we can make some more records this evening, John. Thank you, absolutely. So this is just the practice run, and if you're new to fly ball, if you look in the middle, you will see not only the timing boards, but you will see the lights. So the green light for the first dog means it's a clear run and there isn't a false start. If you see any other lights on either lanes, that means there is a fault of some sort. It could be a drop ball. It could be that on the return leg, the dog has dropped the ball before he gets to the line. Uh, that will mean that there is a fault and that will mean that the dog will have to run again. So accuracy is important, speed is everything, but the last things these teams want is a drop ball or a fault of any kind. So this is Focus versus Tails we win for a place in the final. For a place in the final. Who's it going to be? We are getting ready for fly ball action at Crufts. Ladies and gentlemen, the dogs are away. First some noise for semi final. Your favorite Focus on the as near dog side. Number two sets up. We've got a drop ball on the. We tails. are into we the line. first semi final. Then Focus on, on the, the red side. side as well. That is the far side. Okay, and I believe our judge Monica Johnny has blown that, uh, her whistle our, uh, there. I think. Judge Monica Johnny what has got involved here, here? We've got and my issue, gut is that we're going to have a rerun, so, which I'm personally quite pleased about, and I'm we're sure you all are uh, watching, so we can join just, this uh, uh, right with the box. from there may be the start. A little bit of a, of a false yeah. start there is an issue in the with five or semi-finals here, here Graham, and we can all settle down and prepare for what will be some phenomenal action. I think we can. I think at the moment we've got a, a box malfunction, though that's been called anyway by the box loader. Um, and of course, having called the fault, the box loader, she has to get the judge over to confirm that there is actually a fault. Not that she doesn't believe it, but she has to double check for this case of fairness. So that's what she's doing now. Let me just set up uh, the first uh, semi final for you. Focus on the red on the far side. Winners of Cross 2020, runners up uh, last year. That is focus in the red on the far side as they repair that box. Always go well here at Crofts, always turn it on. Steve Lee getting involved. Get things sorted out here. And just to let you know, uh, on the near side, as they sort out this query on the box, Tails, we win the current UK record holders. A strong rivalry between these two, by the way, held the UK record for six years as we sort out the complexities uh, with the box on, on the far side. The teams bring their own boxes here. And uh, if there is something wrong with them, of course, it certainly compromises everything that they can do because it's so important for the dogs to be able to, to grab the balls out of those uh, out of those boxes. The focus team will go when things do get underway. That's focus on that red uh, far side where the problem with the box is. They will go with Diesel first, with Kenai second, Mouse third, and Panic, a new dog in the fourth. Focus actually bringing in one or two fresh legs. They know tails have been a bit quicker this year, and they hope fresher legs will do the trick for them. They will push for it. Strong rivalry between these two. Tails, we win then all over the UK, Portsmouth to Yorkshire, even a couple from Belgium. But now we're all set, those boxes have been sorted out, and we're all set for the first of three in the semi-final. They've been here since Thursday, we've come down from 16, we're now down to the last four, the first of three. We are ready, we are ready to go, and they will be running very, very shortly. Focus in the red on the far side. Tails we win, blue in the near, and it's very close on this opening leg. Just with focus on that far side. Still very, very close. We knew this would be competitive. Still just with focus, but they're making up ground on the near now. Ah, uh, tails we win, and it's tails we win. And there's a fault on the far side as well, so they would have to run an extra dog. They will not bother. I think it's going to point this way. Tails we win. Go one up. Absolutely excellent. They've got the speed advantage, and it showed there, Graham. It did four clean runs by tail we win. And they've started off really, really. And you can see the dog on the far side approached the box, didn't actually trigger it, and didn't take the ball out, so had to rerun. So, tails, we win.
with the speed advantage. One up here. On the far side focus, they knew they were going to have to push. They knew they were up against a quicker team. They're going to have to show all their famed resilience, really, to pull this one round. Otherwise, Tails We Win will have made it through to the final. And we are ready. We are Tails ready. We are all set. Ready. Tails We Win near side. Focus on the far from Selby. Focus, tremendous fighting spirit in that team. What are they going to do here? They have a, a little advantage early on, but no tells we, and it still tells we win, trailing at the moment. It's with focus on that far side, but there's a fault on that far side as well. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. A fault on the far side. That means if tells we win, keep it clean. They will be going into the final. They have. There are a couple of faults on that far side. Tails we win, make it through to the final here. Runners up in the world's last year and going all the way at Crufts 2023. They said they had a bit in hand and they proved it there, Graham. They did. Well, they started to put the pressure on focus when they won the first leg. Um, and that just caused focus to push the changeovers and they had two faulty changeovers, which meant that uh, they couldn't possibly come back from that. But still, great entertainment, great flyball racing. So, tails we win, can take a, a little breather, fine effort from that team, and look at the elation from the tails we win, and uh, we will see them again. Absolutely sensational. Arrived here last year. Road runners beat beep in the far side in the red. First overseas team. They won it last year. The record, the Crufts record, went ten times uh, last year. It's gone a couple of times again this year. Back on the Thursday, day one here, there was a horrible accident. A couple of cars written off. Uh, the road runners are uh, beat beat, but uh, they recovered. They broke the record on the Thursday, broke the Crofts uh, record 14.59 and came back yesterday, Saturday, and broke it again at 14.40. Nerveless and rarely make mistakes. Road runners beat beat from Belgium on that far side. And I want you to watch out for the last, their last dog, Kion, fastest around. Lightning strikes will it all to do. Absolutely up against it. They were the only team that hadn't dropped a leg going into yesterday's action. They are through here and they have their hands full against this magnificent team from Belgium. The road runners beat beat. On the near side then, lightning strikes the outsiders on the farther. The champions, the record breakers, the firm favourites, a really popular bunch from Belgium. Road runners beat beat. Set will be first to go for the uh, road runners, then Drogon, and then Sansa, and then that amazing Keon running the anchor leg. Kukachu, Maisie, Flair, and Jelly on the near side. Kukachu going first, and it's with on the near side with the strikes at the moment. The road runners brilliant it on the far side. Now the road runners have it. Now watch out for Kion here. Fastest dog at Crofts. Kion, 3.4 seconds. He has done that in. He has done that in before in that sort of time. Astonishing, and I believe that is another Crofts record, Graham. 14:27. Jim, I'm getting excited again. I'm sorry about that. Absolutely amazing. 14.27. Unbelievable. The speed of that last dog. 
you just you've got to be here to see it. It's just lightning. Just think about it. Three and a half seconds to complete this course for the anchor leg for Kion the Great. They call they call the dog. I'm not surprised about that. A new Crufts record. The favourites coming through again. Lightning strikes doing their best, but they know that uh, well they'll be struck out here. No disgrace though if they fail to square it. But they have to win to keep this semi-final alive. That is lightning strikes on the near side. The near side, the blue. We're ready. And we're away again. It's a good start by the strikes who have it just at the moment, I think. It's still very close. It's gone, though, to the champions and uh, the holders on that far side. Still with the Belgians on that far red side. And now to complete it, surely through they go to the final as anticipated. Really, really quick. Really quick to 14.37 the time. <laughs> From the day one, we said these are the combo to beat, and they are proving it yet again, Graham. As, a, as an opposing team, what have you got to do to beat these guys? You've just got to fly. I mean, they're, lightning strikes are putting in very, very respectable time and actually would be winning uh, legs normally, but against Roadrunners beat beat, they are really on fire. Roadrunners beat beat, modest, unassuming, taking their place as anticipated in the final. Tails we win will have their hands full in just a few moments' time. time for the Flyball Final 2023. Please welcome back your finalists, Tails We Win! And they are going to be going up against the fierce, the amazing... Ratsy, thank you very much beep beep. indeed. They will go straight into the action here. Tails We Win have to be the outsiders, runners-up in the world uh, last year, British record holders for six years. And on the near side in the blue, road runners, beep, beep, just broken the Crufts record once again. Every time they have been in action, the Crufts record has gone, and it's now down to 14.27. Came here with 14.59, it came down to... 14.40 and now 14.27. Absolutely tremendous combination, really unassuming. They've had reaction from all over the world to what we've been showing you here. I have to say the Belgians said to me when I went to see them, you tell everybody with your crew, they're the best images of fly ball racing we have ever, ever seen. 
and we thank them for that. And I think a lot of the fly ball popularity, people queuing for two hours to get into the main arena, two hours, it is absolutely jam-packed for this final, the fly ball final of Crocs 2023. Tells we win and the red on the far side, the outsiders, the British record holders, road runners beat beat. Anything can happen in fly ball. The new Crocs record holders again, they, they keep improving, they keep getting quicker. Best of three in this final and we are ready to go and we are racing and it's very close at the moment and it's with, actually with tells we've been on that far side only just roadrunners making up a bit of ground on this second leg it's still really really close in this final how about this last stop for the roadrunners there's a fault on the far side from tails we win and a fault on the near as well so reacting very quickly on that far side and you know what tails we win could take this one they could they could but there were faults on both sides. There were faults on both sides. We wait and see what the judge has got to say. She's thinking about it. She is thinking about the it. Win. She's thinking about My it. My call is, is this an interference ball? Is that their ball? Hang on, is that their ball? This is an interference call. The ball was in the wrong lane. The win goes to Road Runners. Well, there we are. Drama there, Graham. Yep. Well, you say judges call. I haven't seen that before, but uh, what she's saying is that the, the ball came into the other lane. You can quite clearly see that it was failed to be collected by the dog. It rebounded and ran across towards Roadrunners Beep Beep's lane. And they're saying that that distracted the Roadrunners dog. There's a bit of conversation going on here. No way. OK, let's talk to you. One minute. And there's still a little bit of conversation and consternation about this. Uh, tells we win. Uh, not happy. Let's, let's just eavesdrop here, shall we? I'll be quiet. The, the ball, Tails ball was in their lane, which made their dog stop dead. I, I don't believe that is the case, though. My personal opinion is that. And there we go. The ball quite clearly rolling across in towards the big, big lane. Both of the ring but part, the both of them. The, the ball was the in the lane. Hang on, Joe. The ball was in the lane. Where's I, VAR where when you need it? <laughs> well, I think they've had the VAR. I think they're now having a discussion on the interpretation. <laughs> We're wondering about a rerun here. There's so much chat going on here. There's a massive audience, not only on, on Channel 4, but on YouTube all around the world. Everything hanging on this decision. It is the final, after all. And there has to be a limit to the extent of this conversation. Someone's going to have to make a decision a little bit sharpish here. Are we going to rerun it? Let's talk to the line party. Let's or are we going to leave it with Roadrunners beep beep? There's a lot of talking going on here. Someone is going to have to make the That's call. And, of course, think. ultimately, it's Monica Johnny, isn't it, who's going to have to make the real definitive yes. call. Yep, she can take advice um, from who she wants to, but the final call will rest with the judge. So it wasn't the ball. So that we win our side. No, it's a rerun. Rerun. Okay. Okay. We'll do a rerun. Thank you. It is a rerun. That is the most sensible solution. In all honesty, probably could have been uh, decided a couple of minutes ago. But uh, Monica heard all the arguments, and we are all square and all level as well. Some kind soul said to me this early this morning, do you script your uh, fly ball commentary? For obvious reasons, we don't. Everything could happen here. And that's another new one on both of us. It's all square. It's the final. And on the far side, Tails will win, making a very, very good start. The Roadrunners on the near side, though, picking it up on the second leg. It's with the Roadrunners, the champions, the record breakers. There is a fault on that far side. And now, 
stretching and getting home. And this will be surely pointing this way. The road runners have it. Monica, thank you very much indeed. It was uh, four clean runs by uh, road runners. As I say, it wasn't one of their quickest runs, but that's all they needed to uh, beat Tails. You win who picked up some faults there. Great pictures. One more victory for road runners, who I believe dropped a, a race on the opening day after that horrific car crash they had on the Thursday morning, but haven't really done one since. And they once again will retain the cross championship. Road runners beat beat on the near side. We are ready. We are ready on the far. Tails we win. Pull this one round. Lights are on, the dogs are running. Very, very good start on the near side by the Belgians. They have it at the moment. It's still with road runners. Beep, beep. They're keeping it clean and they're keeping it quick. It's still with the road runners. And here comes that finisher. There's a fault on the far. Keon will take them home. Keon the great takes them home. And the road runners have it. The Road Runners win again. Famous Belgians, I give you Road Runners beep beep. Record breakers, champions again, retaining their Crofts title here. Absolutely outstanding entrance. They have been sheer class from start to finish. The Road Runners celebrate. Jubilant scenes here, and as you say, Tails we win, very magnanimous in defeat, uh, they're coming across, the, the great camaraderie in there, and as you say, we've got some fantastic shots here, the job turning, picking up that ball, and doing what it do likes to do best, playing fetch. Great work then, by the road runners, beep beep, from Zonhoven in Belgium, means a huge amount to them, as I say, a really lovely group of people there as well. Always, always stressing team captain uh, uh, Toon, who I spoke to this morning, uh, Toon Milson, box loader Roy Royakas and ball collector Peter Rankins, all there. Uh, Dave Marza, Wesley Viren deals, uh, Deander Venderheiden and uh, Elke Getz. Give them all a mention, Kurt Jan Lemons. Steen Burman and Christoph Adrian as well, but Keon, that dog, that dog running the anchor leg, just sit and think about it, 3.4 seconds the time, and it's a cross tradition that if you win, you are automatically invited back. We will see them this time next year. Hey, guys, thanks for some fantastic memories. <laughs> Okay, it is presentation time. So, please step forward to present our flyball champions. Please give a huge round of applause to Eleanor Wade from Royal Cannon and Mr. Paul Erdley, Vice Chairman of the Kennel Club. Okay. First of all, we'd like to say a huge thank you to our fantastic judge. She's been with us for four days here at Crooks, presiding over our flyball. All the way from Canada, Monica Johnny. And there we are, presentation to Monica jo jo uh, Johnny, our Canadian judge. She has been presented with uh, one or two problems uh, this year, <laughs> Jim. But well, she handled it very well, but what a, what a horrible moment for her in the final. But this is the first set to come and judge the fly ball from that to part of the world. Really, really good to see her. And road runners beat beat. Really popular champions. Another packed house here applauding everyone. They love the experience in the snow and the slush that we had here on Thursday. And one of their vehicles wiped out. Dogs were all over the place. And, um, uh, and, and but they really responded well, so well to come back and, and, and take the title. And they are a really engaging bunch too. And they have taken really this fly ball sport to new heights. You wouldn't rule them out breaking the record, but uh, that, uh, that little dog there, that little Kion, 3.4 seconds well. 
uh, we used to eulogize, didn't we, about other really, really quick dogs. But uh, the old hustler as well, remember, was fantastic over the years. Kyle, though, the new fly ball star for me. Really good, and by the way, excellent, excellent performance uh, to, to reach the final as well. Really, really good. For Tails, we win. Yeah, they're a really good British record holders for six years, but goodness, they all knew. They knew when we spoke beforehand, they knew that they would have to do something really outstanding to hold or beat the Belgians in the final. They gave it their all. They've gone the whole way. 16 started. They come down to the last two, and you only got to look at their faces, really, to see how much they have all enjoyed the experience. Great stuff from the Tails. We win as well. And uh, both teams will get a, a really generous round of applause. Thurry, thoroughly deserved as well. High octane, rapid entertainment. We see all sorts here that crux. Um, but this fly ball packs them in, really, like hardly anything absolutely compelling attraction both to see live and on television many yeah. thanks uh, for your company last word for you graham i was i was just going to say they've got pictures there of our intrepid ring crew uh, they're all volunteers to a man they do it's work tremendously time. hard throughout the whole weekend they deserve uh, every plaudit that they get but uh, jim it's been a blast uh, as usual thank you very much indeed you have been a real star for me, Graham, as, as, as always. Really, really good. Must mention uh, Kate as well from the Kennel Club, who has been absolutely outstanding, providing us with all sorts of information. I hope you have enjoyed our efforts from the commentary box throughout Crux 2023. That is us done and dusted for now. Bye-bye to you all, wherever you are watching. some very, very special presentations. Who, who can remember, who can't forget those dreadful images from Turkey on February the 6th with the uh, terrible earthquake? The Kennel Club, before we go towards our Kennel Club hero dogs, it is to recognize the tremendous work that our search and rescue teams have done, not only in Turkey, but also in the United Kingdom. Led by Lindsay uh, Sileski, uh, it is the crew manager of the UK ISAR team, the search and rescue team deployed by the government on behalf of the UK Foreign and Commonwealth Office at the request of UK and international aid. Team of 77 strong personnel made up of 14 fire and rescue services, supported by a medical team, a vet and a structural engineer, and of course, our amazing urban search and rescue dogs. The search dogs that attended Turkey from the team are as follows. Search dog Davy, the Springer Spaniel, with Lindsay. Search dog Vespa, the Belgian Malinois, with Neve Darcy. Search dog Sid, the Labrador, with John Harbin. And search dog Colin, the Border Collie, and Neil Woodmansley. And also with us here this evening, it is the canine search and rescue. Professional, all volunteer canine search and rescue team based in Northern Ireland. All handlers are volunteers, provide their own dogs and train several times a month. Robin Gray and Carl Murray with search dog Max and Delta, two Labradors that we see on the right-hand side of the red seats, were flown out to Turkey following the earthquake and got to work immediately, helping to locate people in the rubble. In the first two hours, they'd found a baby and an elderly lady, and the dogs can detect from 30 to 40 meters of height if someone beneath the rubble is still alive. During their six-day deployment, search and rescue dogs Delta and Max, along with the handlers, worked almost 24 hours a day in a bid to search and to save lives. Working hand-in-hand -hand with search and rescue colleagues from around the world, they searched in extremely hazardous environments, often in darkness. Delighted to welcome the chairman of the Kennel Club, Mr. Tony Alcock, OBE, to step forward and to say many, many congratulations to our two incredible search and rescue teams. Very well done. 
valuable work. Oh, my word. Quite brilliant. Thank you very much indeed from us all here at Crofts and the Kennel Club. Thank you to the UK ISAR team and also to the Canine Search and Rescue of Northern Ireland. Yes, you can give them a round of applause and you can stand, ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation. Thank you, ISAR and Canine. Over the last five months, we have been selecting and also getting to know our five amazing finalists of the 2023 Kennel Club Hero Dogs. They are amazing stories, I can absolutely promise you that. And as we said right at the start of the show, the Kennel Club Charitable Trust has donated money well, good evening to you. This is a very special part of Crofts 2023 because we turn our attention to the Kennel Club Hero Dog Award and we can watch now some of these incredible stories. I've been raising the money for Course Rescue so they can build a shelter for the dogs so they can keep them warm. Bertie has been helping me um, by sleeping out with me. He's helped me through those stages where I've been like, such a cold night, I don't really want to sleep out tonight. I don't think it's just me raising the money, we're both raising the money. Stella's a hero because she's shown that Staffordshire Bull Terriers are amazing dogs. Stella's a rescue dog from the RSPCA. She was the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier in the country to become a police dog. She's found thousands of pounds in cash, she's found numerous drugs, she's found three guns, so very, very proud of her. For us, it's so rewarding to see her in such a positive light, especially as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier. Stella's living proof that in the right hands with the right training, they're incredible dogs. Because Albert has so much joy, that really helps me with managing my chronic pain. He has completely changed my life. Albert is three years old. He is from the amazing charity, Dogs for Good. It's easy to feel quite down and to find it really difficult to do normal day-to-day -day activities because of the pain. But Albert is helping me with my studies and my ambition to become a solicitor. I wouldn't have been able to do that without him by my side. Asher is a bi-detection dog. Not only has he overcome what I'm sure was really quite a traumatic part but he's used his incredible sense of smell to save human lives. He was the first step. He was the dog that would tell me whether a disease had a particular odour that a dogs and other dogs could be trained to find in the future. The work Asher has done is saving and will continue to save thousands or even millions of lives in the future. I'd certainly like to call Beauty a hero for myself and the whole family. Beauty seems to be the bond that has held us all together through a very difficult time. Uh, Lily was diagnosed with leukaemia about two months after, after uh, Beauty came into her for, forever home. Beauty is my best friend and she's always been by my side for everything. She means the world to me because if I didn't have her, I wouldn't be as happy as I was right now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the Kennel Club uh, Hero uh, Dog Award uh, is a very special part uh, of uh, Crufts. Uh, and there uh, are five uh, categories. Uh, a child's champion, extraordinary life of a working dog, dog, hero support dog, dog, rescue dog hero, see, and best friends, see, which celebrates a pet dog minutes, that's really seen so. its owner through some pretty okay. tough times. Well, Kay Burley is winners. the ambassador and will be announcing the winner choosing from our five could. finalists here who we'll we'll all receive donations from the Kennel Club Charitable Trust, Trust that will go this to their nominated canine Bertie. charity. Hi, tell us why you're here. You have done how many 
nights in a tent. Let's have a listen uh, I've to. I've out for 713 Bertie. nights to raise money and for abandoned dogs. Buddy Ashley here. Bertie's been camping out to raise money for rescue dogs and to help and tell me how much money you've raised owners. already. Um, I have raised nineteen thousand six hundred pounds. And finally, where did you sleep last night? I slept right outside this, so right next to the lake um, with my dad and my dog, which was very fun and a very memorable place to stay. Okay. And you've got school tomorrow. Yeah, I've got school tomorrow. Good luck, young man. Good luck. <laughs> this is Stella. Yeah. And Claire, you've been on my breakfast show. Tell me about, tell me a little bit about Stella. She's a little bit uh, without colour around the nose, as I say when I go to my hairdresser. Some say grey, I don't think so. Silver highlights, I'd call them. <laughs> <laughs> Stella's um, just recently retired. Um, she was a drugstore um, for eight and a half years. She found drugs, money, guns and ammunition. She's found thousands of pounds worth of drugs and money and also discovered three guns in her career. So I'm very three proud guns. of her. Yes. My goodness, and why should she win? She's an ambassador for Staffordshire Bull Terriers across the world. Um, she shows that rescue dogs are just as good as any um, other dog. And in the right hands with the right training, they can be incredible dogs. Good luck. <laughs> good luck. Well, that's Stella, the retired police dog, and her owner, PC Claire Todd, showing extraordinary and qualities And this is Jemima working and Albert. Courses. Tell me about Albert. Albert's also been on my... Hello, Albert. Now, tell me what Albert can do for you. So he helps me with things like um, taking my, <laughs> well, he helps licking cameras sometimes. No, um, pulling my jumpers off so I don't dislocate my shoulders, fetching things, finding my medications, pulling doors open. And one of his favorite jobs is loading and unloading the washing machine so we can do the laundry independently. Just tell, just tell our, our audience, uh, both here and at home, when you say he, he literally loads the washing machine for you. Yeah, picks up each item out of the laundry basket and pops it in the machine. But he's a bit cheeky sometimes. He likes getting lots of treats for his work. So if he doesn't get a treat, he'll take an item out of the machine, show me, <laughs> put it back in, and then look at me to be like, look what I've done. <laughs> and does he do the ironing as well? No chance. <laughs> good luck, good luck, good luck. Well, that's Albert uh, alongside Jemima Banks. And in fact, Albert is a special assistant's dog is helping Jemima to attend Claire university and, and become Tell a me lawyer. Tell a little bit more about Asher. Hi, Asher. I love Asher's hair. Can we turn him round and so he can see? He's got a fantastic hairstyle. There we go. We can't lose, <laughs> we can't lose the hair. His brains are in his hair. Um, so Asher was a rescue dog. Um, had a number of homes, and he was, you know, it was in quite a bad way. He was really, really anxious around people. But the charity took him, and he's been trained as a biodetection dog, which means he can smell human disease. Uh, he's been like cancer. Can actually, he's trained to find malaria, is Parkinson's, he? where wow. there is no no um, current way of detecting Parkinson's early. Also, he was the first dog to tell us that COVID-19 has a smell and that dogs can detect is it. That, so he, he was the first dog to detect COVID-19. Yeah. That's worth yeah. a round of applause, isn't yeah. it? I think so. Good luck. Good luck, so that's Claire. Asher, the medical detection dog, alongside Dr. Claire Guest. And this, finally, is Beauty, Lily and Wayne. Now, let me come round here. Tell me, young lady, about Beauty. Um, well, Beauty has helped me through a hard time when I had leukaemia, well, when I was diagnosed with it. Um, and the medication I was on used to make me feel angry and I didn't want to do stuff. Um, but Beauty could sense that, so whenever she came into the room, she always used to put a smile on my face. And I didn't know how to take tablets at the time, so um, I knew if I took them after, I'd be able to enjoy spending time with her. Ah, oh, that's amazing. And Wayne also helps you. Yes, yeah, she helped me from a very young age. We did it for about 15 weeks. And I had an epileptic attack in the local nature reserve. She buried underneath me and lifted me out of the water that I'd just fallen into. So you would literally have drowned if it hadn't been uh, for her? Potentially, yes. My you goodness know, me. And she it, also stops your fall, doesn't she, if you, I, if you have an epileptic fit? She, she's get, getting more used to uh, me having attacks now, uh, and she senses what's, what's going, on, going on. Sometimes she warns me that an attack is coming on, uh, and, and so, um, when, when she um, actually told me in time, yeah, she does fall behind me and make sure I don't bang my head. Amazing. Absolutely yes. amazing. They're all worthy winners, aren't they, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, they really are. That's in the best friends category, celebrating a pet dog who's really seen their owner through the hardest of times. And that's okay. well, we Lily, who's this just 11. 25 years away. ago, uh, we had a 
110,000 votes. I can promise you that this year, it's been even more popular. Wow, tell me. 121,000 oh, votes in total. that's amazing. Absolutely amazing. I don't know how you differentiate, but you've got the golden envelope, and I it's have. all about votes counted. Oh, it's so difficult. You are all worthy winners. Seriously, you are. But it has to be one person, I suppose, Fred doesn't it, does. it? So here we go. The hero dog winner is... PC Claire Jordan Stella. Well, this is Stella, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier police dog. She has protected the nation from criminals and also changed perceptions of her breed, and she looks thrilled to have won. She was a rescue dog from the RSPCA. And then overcame the odds to become the first Staffordshire Bull Terrier police dog in the UK. And alongside Claire Todd, Stella's found weapons and thousands of pounds worth of drugs and cash, and she really is a true canine hero. <laughs> That's the end of our microphone. <laughs> a little too over-eager. Sam's going to be happy with that. Just goes to show none of this is rehearsed. I'm amazed. Um, is that a tear there? It is, yes. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much for everyone that's voted. All the dogs here are such worthy winners, and it's been great to be in the company of the, the other dogs and under their owners. And thank you for everyone that's voted. And hopefully Stella's doing it for staffies uh, all over the world. Okay. Thank you. How are you going to celebrate tonight? Um, lots of treats for Stella. Ah, I'm sure. And congratulations to everybody for being the finalists. Huge round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, all of these dogs are absolute thank heroes. Thank you very much. The public have okay. been voting. Thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed it. For their Ladies kennel club hero dog, but this is retired police dog Stella, possible, alongside PC Claire Todd, showing extraordinary emotion. qualities Let's working in the Ashley Army Police Force, RAF, Airport, Let's Let's Force, Air Force, Search and Rescue, Claire. the extraordinary Wayne, life Lily, of a working dog. Stella is our hero dog for 2023. So, thanks to our Kennel Club Hero Dogs. It gives me great, great pleasure to hand you upstairs to Marina, Marina White, for the Young Kennel Club Stakes and their final judging. Thank you so much, Nick. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Over the past four days, the Young Kennel Club Stakes competition has been judged in the YKC ring in Hall 3. The dogs are exhibited and handled by members of the It's Young now Club. time for the and Young Kennel Club Stakes final. Now, this is best in show the for young people aged between 6 and 24. So what we're looking at here is one representative from each group, just like we will be with best in show, but they have to be handled by somebody who's under the age of 24. So our judge for this competition is Gavin Robertson. He's no stranger to this ring. He's won Best in Show and Reserve Best in Show with his sole trader, Petty Bassett Griffon Vondians. His wife, Sarah, was a winner of the International Junior Handling Finals a few years ago. Please show a warm welcome for our judge. So here we have Gavin coming into the ring. Gavin is judging the dogs in this competition. So we saw the International Junior Handling Final earlier so in, in the show. The this is all about the dogs. A huge round of applause so coming come in in group ring. order, winner, here we have Gunther our group, Gundog group the winner. English this is Springer Georgia Spaniel. Brown with her English Springer Spaniel. Now they won this competition last year, so they are the, the ones to beat. 
second representing the working group. This is Paige Hughes with her Siberian Husky. Boy. Followed by Paige, followed by Olivia Busby and her Smooth Collie representing the Pastoral Terrier. Group. Next into the ring, we have Lauren Goddard with her Border Terrier from the Terrier Group. The Borzoi. A hound group representative, that beautiful, graceful Borzoi, shown by Maisie Allenby. The Japanese Spitz. Next into the ring, the beautiful white coat of the Japanese Spitz there. That's our utility group representative, handled by Lindsay and Jones. Finally, the pug. And last but by no means least, here we have Grace Rutherford with her pug. They're the winners of the Toy Dog group. So these young people have taken part over the last four so days in exactly the same way as we've seen next. in the breed rings. They had to qualify at shows that were held well, during the previous year. And then the they got to take part in their group finals. Is, These are the winner of those groups. On. On day, so Gavin has judged these on the day that they've come through. It's not like best in show we're going to see later, where it's a different judge. Gavin has seen them. So just taking a quick look. I think he's going to All move them. About this amazing hobby. I'm going to see these dogs moving one more time. So this, this is, is Georgia English Brown with her Spaniel. English Springer Spaniel, Gun Dog Group. This is show bitch. champion Trimere Tickle Me Fancy. She's a female. She this breed named for the action of springing forward to flush out game in the fields. Judge will be looking for a compact, symmetrical dog. It's the oldest of the sporting gun dogs. Next, we have the Siberian Husky from the working group, shown by Paige Hughes. This is, show, this is champion Siberia Drift Keep the Love for Zimmervolk. It's a male. These dogs were bred to pull sleds in northeastern Siberia. From the pastoral group, we have Olivia Busby with her smooth collie, champion Fox Earth Vandella, a female. Less popular than the rough collie, but they're the same dog, essentially, apart from the coat. That blunted, wedge-shaped head is a key feature. Representing the terrier group now, we have Lauren Goddard with her border terrier. This is champion Al Brooksby, never back down. He's a male. He previously won the junior warrant final here on Thursday, so having a great show. The curved lines and beautiful coat of Ab Borzoi here, representing the Hound Group, shown by Maisie Allenby. This is Ryazan Visavoy of Rodbust at Menigma, a male. This breed was favoured by Russian aristocracy. So now on to our two winners from today. This is Lindsay Jones, winning the utility group with this Japanese Spitz. It's champion Luini Simba Stop and Stare, a male. That profuse white coat should stand off from the body. And then finally, we have Grace Rutherford and her pug representing the toy group. This is Potbelly Limited Edition, which I think is a wonderful affix. This is a male. Judge looking for a square cobby dog there. So as I said, Judge has properly gone over these dogs, has seen them move. So he's really just taking a final look now before deciding. So we're going to see these amazing young handlers perform with these fantastic dogs again. So Judge is just asking the handlers to take them round so he can see them moving together. The beautiful English Springer there, last year's winner in this competition. The Siberian Husky, big winner in the main show ring. The Smooth Collie, the Border, border terrier, terrier coming round now. The Borzoi. The, the Japanese Spitz. Big cheer as it's utility day. And, and then the pug, the pug, representing the toy group. If you're looking at this and you think, I know a young person who would love to do this, do go on the Young Kennel Club website and you can find out more about how you can get involved. So, so Gavin just going to walk down the line once more. Just double checking his decision. The of the Young Kennel Club Stakes but the winner of the Young Kennel Club Stakes Final at Crufts is... is 
It's Georgia. She's done it twice. This is Georgia Brown with her English Springer. This is show champion Try Me Tickle Me Fancy, a female. And in second, it's going to be the Border Terrier. This is Lauren Goddard with champion Abruzzi, Never Back Down, a male. From Bolney and West Sussex. So all those young Please people have done amazingly to get to this level of the competition. So we're just going to hear a huge positions. round of applause but for them well, as they leave the ring. Five now, of them travel back today to compete in this. It really is like best in show for young people. This gorgeous English Springer Spaniel. But here's our winner, that English box. Springer looking an absolute picture there. Beautiful head and expression. Presenting the prizes. Is from a Royal Cannon, our representative, escorted by Tom Mather. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. The winner of the Young Kennel Club Stakes Final, Georgia Graham there, receiving the trophy. <laughs> Dog's like, yeah, I've done it again. A runner up spot there, Lauren Goddard with her Border Terrier. Both those dogs are champion and show champion, so they've won three challenge certificates in mainstream competition, as well as taking part in the Young Kennel Club classes. Quick lap of honour for them, and then we'll be setting the stage for the utility group in just a few moments. Incredible, ladies and gentlemen, the YKC Stakes Final. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights of this very impressive competition. Turn your magic on. And you see it say. Everything you want to dream away. Under this pressure, under this way. We are diamonds taking shape. We are diamonds taking shape. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first of our two groups to be judged this evening. The judge for our first group got his first dog, an Afghan hound, when he was only 10 years old and became passionately involved in the show scene, beginning his judging career at age 16. He has had over 20 champions in several hound breeds, as well as owning the Crufts Best in Show winning to Best It's now time to see which dog is going to take the utility group and go through to Best in Show in just a couple of hours' time. Frank, our judge for this competition? Is Mark Kokosa. He's a very experienced judge. He started in dogs when he was only 10 years old. He's been heavily involved with Afghans ever since then. But he's got experience in other breeds. He's had a French Bulldog champion, Tibetan Terrier champion. In fact, he won the group at Crufts in 2004 with his Tibetan Terrier, which a few years later went best in show here. Here comes Mark now, living in London, accompanied by Tom Mather, the chairman of the Crufts Committee. So each of our best of breed winners about to have their first taste of the big ring. And here's the largest of the group, the Akita. Followed by the smallest of the ball breeds, this, the Boston Terrier. Smart as paint. And now we have the Canaan Dog. One of the rarer breeds from Israel, the Canaan Dog. And our best of breed, Chow Chow. Followed by one of the oldest breeds um, in the group, the Chow Chow. And what an impressive picture strutting his stuff across the green carpet there. Next into the ring is our best of breed Dalmatian. Oh, the free striding Dalmatian, the carriage dog from the Regency period. Biggest entry in the group this year. Eurasia. 
followed by the Eurasia, another of the less popular breeds. There were 38 of them here this year. Next into the ring, the French Bulldog best of breed. Yes, the breed that is the highest registrations at the Kennel Club last year. Amazing rise to popularity. Followed by the first of our German Spitz, the smaller, this is the German Spitz Klein. The German Spitz Mittel. And here's the larger size, the Mittel, from the large Spitz family that we have in this group. The ancestor of the Akita that we saw start the group. This is the Japanese Akita Inu. And the Japanese Shiba Inu. And something similar in a smaller mode. It's the Japanese Shiba Inu. The Japanese Spitz. I love the white coat. They look at the contrast with the pigment. This is the Japanese Spitz, best of breed. And the Kaysund. And the Kaysund, the barge dog from Holland. Now we have a Kuikahund. Now we have the Kuika Honje. This is uh, one that used to be in the gun dog group, switch groups. We'll learn more about that later. And now our Laza Apso. Uh, one of the breeds of Tibet, the Laza Apso. Very striking colour. by the miniature Schnauzer. The wonderful eyebrows and beard there of the miniature Schnauzer. And isn't this the smartest paint here, this miniature Schnauzer? Beautifully presented. The first of our poodles is a miniature poodle. The miniature poodle, middle size of poodles in this country. Followed by the standard, oh, instantly recognisable, just poodle. giving some time there to not to catch up and overtake the one in front. <laughs> one, one of the top dogs in the country last year. And the toy poodle. And here's the smallest, the toy poodle. And look at the style on this coming in the ring and follow Waffle, who won reserve best <laughs> in show last year. Next up is Skipperkey. There's the Skipperkey, the Belgian barge dog. And now we have the Schnauzer. Now we've seen the miniature version. Here's the Schnauzer, the original variety. Now we see the best of breed Shih Tzu. The Shih Tzu, hugely popular as a family companion. This one, a gold and white. And the Tibetan Spaniel. And now the Tibetan Spaniel coming into the ring, another Tibetan breed. The Tibetan Terrier. And here's the, something a little larger, the Tibetan Terrier. Gold and white, striding out well there. And finally, Frank's going to tell me if I say it wrong. This is the Jolo, it's Quintly. Pretty good, yes. Not bad. Yes. <laughs> That's the import register representative. That is all of our utility best of breeds in the ring now. I will hand you over to Kim Slutobiel and Stuart McKay Bell to talk you through the rest of the judging. Thank you, Jenny. Welcome to the utility group. So, Frank, tell us about the utility group, because there's no common denominator, is it, there, with this it, one? It's a very diverse collection of breeds. Many of them were developed for a purpose, but then they've become redundant, and now, with the domestication of dogs, when they became redundant, they're family companions. So, there's dogs here which were guarding dogs, which guarded the um, stables, kept down vermin, accompanied horse-drawn carriages, a huge, wide collection of them. East, and some of the oldest North breeds Europe, in the world are here, aren't they? The, the, the Tibetan breeds in particular. Continental origin and a really interesting mix of shape, size and function. Now, Mark coming now to look at the first of the dogs. It's the Akita. From an entry at 17, she selected this bitch, number 14008. This is the largest breed in the group, and in, from its native Japan, it was used for hunting bear and sadly as a fighting dog. However, this size was developed in America, where it was developed to be larger and stronger, but still keeping the glamorous bright colors which are prized in Japan. This one, four-year-old bitch called Romba, she's here from Spain, and she previously won Best of Breed here in 2020, so hoping to go on better for right today. Yes, and I was the judge in 2020, and she won from the junior class. She's been in America and has won all the, all the main 
breed club shows in America. Great to see her come back today and win it again. On the table now we have the Boston Terrier. Judged today by Ian Meller, an entry of one hundred. The smallest of the bull breeds. Here we have the Boston Terrier. This is a dog that should be muscular but with elegance. Obviously, the name suggests it originated in Boston and it was one of the most popular breeds in the US in the 1950s. And actually, for some time, you had to live in Boston before you could become a member of the Boston Terrier Club. Isn't this a real Yankee Doodle Dandy of a dog? So smart as paint, striding out well. This one bred in the Wild Ducks Kennel of Margaret Wildman in Liverpool. It's called Wild at Liverpool Lad. And in fact, Dave Bennett, who's handling Corona with his wife, Julie, he is a Liverpool lad. They live there. So big celebrations there tonight on Merseyside. Two-year-old dog called Ted at home. Loves to snuggle on the couch, apparently. Ladies and gentlemen, the best of breed, Boston Terrier, number 14066. Now, Mark now looking at the Canaan dog. This is the national breed of Israel. It goes back to the pariah dog of the Middle East, so originally a feral dog, and it still retains that sort of reservation with strangers. It has been used by the armed forces in Israel. This one originated in the US, currently living in Kent. It's called Daytac, six-year-old dog. It came in a variety of colours. There was a survival plan to keep the breed going in Israel. They were very rare. That bush-like tail carried over the back on the move. A harsh dent outer coat. Ported four Canaan dogs that helped establish the breed in the US, and gradually they're gaining a loyal following here in the UK. That was our best of breed Canaan dog. Over from Denmark, here we have Kashmir, a five-year-old dog who's winning in the Chow Chows today. This is a breed that originated in China over 2,000 years ago, sadly once used as a meat source and for its coat, but also been used for hunting and as a guard dog. Now Mark's looking at the dog going under that coat, feeling that it's got solid ribs, looking at the back legs there. The back legs of the breed have less angulation than in a lot of breeds and it give it this rather stilted gait as it moves. So perfectly stilted action, strong and broad in the chest and this lovely head with small neat ears. And a slightly scowling expression they're allowed, yes. aren't they? Yeah. Extremely smart and really showing off the real hind action of the breed there. We now move on to the Dalmatian, a marvellous entry of 200. And there is the Dalmatian, very smart, carriage dog of the Regency period popularized by the upper classes and they were prized for their elegance and their decorative spotting. Everything is visible on the Dalmatian. It's a matter of elegance and free striding. It should cover the ground well. They had the biggest entry in this group, 237 of them here today. This one is Vic, a two and a half year old dog from Belgium. It's also thought that the Dalmatian used to accompany the fire brigade in ancient times and ran along in front of the fire carriage. Ladies and gentlemen, that's our best of breed Dalmatian. Number this one, one black spotted, they also come in liver spotted. The name of the Eurasia suggests where it came from. It's a combination of European and Asian breeds. It's a dog that should be unexaggerated, and it has spitz-like features, so a foxy head, those erect ears, and the tail carried curled up over the back. This one is 12 years old, which I think we had a 10-year-old yesterday, but 12 is good going, isn't it, Frank? Yeah, they're remarkably agile and fit and long-lived, as we see here. Originally designed to be a sled dog, now seen mostly as a household companion. This is Ruby, a female from Brighton. The high tail carried over the back. It was a protective outer coat and an insulating undercoat as well. We now move on to the French Bulldog, judged today by Mrs. Melanie Reed Peck. Now on the table, the breed of the moment, the French Bulldog. Top registrations last year, putting out the Labrador and the Golden Retriever. 
what makes them so popular? They're wonderful characters, clown-like, almost human, and very intelligent. They were called French Bulldogs, but it's thought that he goes back, he's descended from the toy bulldog taken to France by English lace makers in the 19th century. He's smaller than the English bulldog, these large bat ears, and you see full of his own importance as he struts around. This is the top winner in the breed for the last two years. So this is two and a half year old dog called Elton, and he's from Birmingham. An absolute clown is how his owner describes him. Recent years have seen a meteoric rise in popularity, and that's our best of breed, French bulldog number one four eight two one. One of Queen Victoria's German Spitz Klein was exhibited at the very first Crufts in London. This is the smaller of the two Spitz that we're going to see and descended from larger Spitz dogs that were brought over from Scandinavia by Vikings. They come in a variety of colours. This one a startling white colour with dark pigmentation which sets it off. But they can also be party coloured, gold, black, any colour in the breed. They are brisk and active on the move and highly intelligent. This one looks like a small Japanese Spitz, is that fair? Uh, yes, a little bit, but it's also, also the ancestor of the Pomeranian, which we'll see in the toy group later. In terms of size, they are, um, they, there is a measurement up to 29 centimetres, but we don't always see them measured, do we, Frank? Yeah, as some of the shows, it's an option, but not a crops. We don't measure them here. Now we have the German Spitz Middle, a larger version of the Klein that we have just seen. Now on the Today table, the larger Hatchel size, the middle German Spitz. One, five, uh, again, zero, seven, any colour, it will ha have the same just standard as, as the Klein. Small, the judge will middle, judge them to the same middle, standard. They should be short, square, quite sturdy in the bone, and again, that dogs, dense, weatherproof coat. The rough that you can see around the neck there, it should be well balanced by the tail, creating the look of almost square in the outline. Yes. This coming from a very successful kennel from Middlesbrough. They've had best of breed and in fact have won the group at Crufts in the past. This is a female, Izzy, and she's four years old. Actually, you, when you speak to owners of the German Spitz, they never just have one. They seem to be very collectible. They're a family of German Spitz. I'd end up with 12. <laughs> there were 50 Japanese Akita Inu here today, and this was the winner. It's Kichi, a three and a half year old dog from Spain. This is the original Kita as it was found in Japan, and the name means large dog. It's one that's remained remarkably unchanged for centuries and has those spitz type features just in a bigger package. And again, the bright colours, as we see here, much prized. This is the Urojiro markings with the white on the chest, the white on the legs and up the legs and under the tail. And again, that dense, plush coat on the outer and the tail carried over the back. Movement described as efficient, rhythmic and resilient. You see the same shape, but much lighter than the Yakita we saw earlier. Now we have the Japanese Shiva Inu, judged by Catherine Pearson-Smith. An entry and, of 81 and carrying on in the same the vein, it's the Japanese Shiba Inu. Again, that, that lovely plush coat. Look at that lovely the head and expression, those neat ears, the almond-shaped eyes. Shiba Inu means small dog in Japanese. It looks like a smaller version of the Akita. It originated in the mountain area of Japan, used for hunting small game but occasionally used for hunting bear and deer. Great fact here, this is the 100th champion from the kennel crown today. So really big winning, prolific kennel there. This one, 15 month old dog called Yang. Vormund kennel. Vormund kennel of Liz Dunhill and Michaela, the daughter handling here. The profuse pure white standoff coat of the Japanese Spitz. Judge here is looking for real contrast between the white and then the black pigment of the nose, the mouth and the eyes. It's believed to have its origins in the Samoyed and the white German Spitz, which we saw earlier. The well-plumed tail there should be carried up and over the back. And this is the only colour in which this breed is seen. 
Again, all those same Spitz characteristics, the wedge-shaped head. Again, very sturdily built. It shouldn't be toy-like at all. Almost workman-like in its sturdiness. This one, the breed record holder. He's eight and a half now, Romeo. Don't know if he has a way with the ladies, but that's his name. I, I think he has had a way with the ladies. He's a good sire, I'm told, yes. So there you are. And they live quite close to Birmingham, I believe, the family. Yep. Again, that brisk stride coming towards us. Dark pigmentation, lovely expression. And from an entry of 69, her best of breed. Now, here is the Kizond, the Dutch barge dog, developed by it's Dutch politician Hees de Geisler, leader of the Dutch Patriot Party. This the, the is, is a grey dog, dog, shadings of grey, and we see the and harness markings the behind the shoulder, one of the prized features of the breed. Again, it was used on barges to guard the barges. It could give voice and uh, keep, keep marauders away. And they also have those distinctive spectacle markings, almost like they're wearing glasses. Yes, there's a, a black line running from the outside of the eye up to the ear. Yes. This one is Vinny, a seven-year-old dog, so counted as a veteran from Derbyshire. Now we see the Koika Hunter. A breed here that was originally placed in the gun dog group but moved as it was realised that it had never worked alongside hunters with guns. This is the Koika Honje. There were 40 of them here today. A Dutch breed that was used to lure ducks into nets by waving its white plumed tail. Yes, and of course <coughs> the colour is orange, which is very appropriate for the House of Orange from its country. Yeah. And really, one of the prized features we see on the ears there, the dark, the dark trim to the ear, the earrings they're called, a prized feature. They are a little almost spaniel-like in miniature. This is Eric, the dog, just 22 months old from Yorkshire. Now, what a beautiful looking Lars Apso. This is on the table. Mark, very fond of this breed and all the Tibetan breeds. It's a breed which comes from Tibet, where they were kept as companions for monks in their isolated monasteries. They were credited with spiritual powers and it, they thought they were a talisman. They brought good luck to their owners. Mark going over the body, going under the coat to feel the rib cage, the, the rear back legs to see that they're sound and sturdy. Of course, it looks very glamorous in the show run, but it had to be hard enough to survive the extremes of Tibet's climate. It should be heavily but not excessively coated. And this one, a three-year-old female called Lettuce. The breed was jealously guarded in Tibet and did not reach other countries until the late 19th century. That's very, very arrogant. I like the carriage on this one very much and holding a beautiful top line. Ladies and gentlemen, our Often we see the Lars Apso in gold or solid colours. It's nice to see this particular black and white winning here. Beautiful face. The instantly recognisable beard, moustache and eyebrows of the miniature schnauzer. Its name literally translates as harsh beard and it's the smallest of the historic schnauzer breeds. However, despite the reduction in size, there should be no reduction in spirit. These are robust, sturdy little dogs. And this, the presentation of this, it looks immaculate, doesn't it? That crisp outer coat, beautiful beautifully groomed right through. It's come from Japan to win here, where it's a big winner there. Two and a half year old dog called Nagi. A best in show winner in Japan. I was round the ring today, very big entry for Anne McDermott and a, a breed specialist. What a beautiful dog this is. Short and sturdy, you can see the substance. They should not be terrier like. They have to have good fore chest, big ribs, and strong hind quarters. And the movement vigorous and balanced. So we're looking for reach there with the front legs and then drive from behind. Hugely popular as family companions, but often the people at home who have them have probably had them clipped by the pet shop. But uh, this is the true coat will have been hand stripped by the groomer. This one looking very smart. Now we see the first of our three poodle varieties, the miniature. On the table now, the miniature poodle, the first of the poodle varieties tonight. This is the middle size of poodle. 
They were originally duck retrievers. And the, the, the hairdo you see before is just not just a fancy coiffure for the day. It was functional. The hindquarters were clipped shorter to help the dog propel itself through the water. All share the same standard. They should be short in the body and sturdy in this long, chiseled head. Mark going over them to see what is under the coat. It's not just fancy hairdressing. That can create an illusion. It's the job the German job of the judge to see the under that. And that strong foreface would have been an, an important feature, wouldn't it, when they were used for retrieving? The long foreface, yes. Now it's finely chiseled and longer and finer now, but that's what it was originally for. This one is Lewis, a dog five years old from West Yorkshire. And apart from their obvious glamour and allure in the show ring, they make fabulous agility. And that and dense coat is crisp to the touch. That's our best of breed winning miniature poodle number 15684. And now we see the largest of the three sizes. Here we have Jake, a four-year-old standard poodle. Now he is a big winner. He was runner-up dog of the year all breeds last year. And he has also won Best in Show at a number of shows last year. Apparently, he's a laid-back house dog, and he really enjoys walking in the countryside. So don't let appearances fool you. And we can see there the beautiful, long, chiseled foreface of the dog and the almond-shaped eyes. They're very aloof, sparkling personalities. Look down the hind leg, those pom-poms on the hocks to protect them. Also pom-poms over the haunches to protect them against the cold water when they were retrieving ducks. And talk to me about the different clips, because we've seen there two different stars of Yes, this, this is the, the Continental Cup with the pom-poms left on it. Uh, we see sometimes the pyjama trim with where the, the hair is left along the legs. And all equally allowed. All, all equally allowed. You can judge them in any style. This dog was bred in Scandinavia, a famous kennel, Charlotte Sandell's Huffish Kennel. She's had some beautiful dogs in the time. This has been very successful for Philip Langdon, handling here over the last two years. He was top of the breed. Now, look at this. This brought a gasp from the crowd when it came in. Such was its action and liveliness and spirit. The toy poodle, the smallest size we have in this country. And one of the challenges is to get all the breed type in a scaled down size. Everything finer, but keeping the same shape. They should be showmanship personified, these dogs. And obviously, we saw Waffle last year, the apricot toy take reserve best in show. Yes. Also, this was so popular. <laughs> Look at this style. This, this, this is owned by English owners, but it's been campaigned in America. So, and I think this is the American professional handler with it. It's a Christian Manilupoulos handling it. Yes. Apparently he loves to go to Starbucks just and get a <laughs> puppuccino. Yeah, but just look, it, it, it does look like what the giant in miniature, this beautiful head, this great style on the move. What a personality. Developed to keep down vermin on Belgian barges, here we have the Skipper Key. The name literally translates as Little Skipper or Little Boatman, and it became Belgium's most popular breed in the late 19th century. Judge should be looking for a small cobby dog with a sharp foxy expression. This is a 15-month-old dog called Stellan. It, and it, it looks quite young at the moment. I know 15 months old, it's still got some maturing to do. But lovely type, the shape is correct. The coat pattern is very important in the skipper key. It should have longer hair over its neck and shoulders, called a mane of hair. Shorter and denser on the body. It said that the outline of a skippy key should look like a caped horseman, and it's got these culottes on its back legs, but this, you can see, it's still a young dog. They are usually black, but they can uh, come in any whole color. Yeah, well, you, you see them in fawn, largely, the colored uh, skippy key. Now we see the schnauzer, judged today by Caroline Waring, an entry of 56, and the best of Now here is the standard size of schnauzer, the, the schnauzer, which 
was the patriarch of the Minsche Schnauzer and the giant Schnauzer we saw in the working group. Goes back to 14th century Germany where it was kept for keeping down vermin and herding livestock and sometimes pulling small carts. Mark the judge just checking the coat texture and it looks really harsh from here which is just as it should be. This one the top dog in the breed for the last two years it's Arthur a four-year-old dog. Dogs are nothing more than yeah. Again, we activity. want the same yeah, shape in all of them. They're company. almost square, sloping down from the Ladies withers to the tail set, the now tail so carried off the back. A lovely free stride, getting its hocks well underneath it. Another breed with Chinese and Tibetan history is the Shih Tzu. Judge today by Ben Brenda Roberts. A judge here just looking at the hair growing Our upwards on the muzzle of the Shih Tzu, which gives a really unique two, chrysanthemum three, effect. This breed believed to originate in China history, with ancestry from Tibetan breeds. It was originally shown alongside Lasso Apsas in the UK, stock. but the two breeds they were later separated out. They should have a very arrogant, aloof expression from those large, dark eyes. Sort of rounded skull. Typically, it has its top knot tied up, so, to, so it doesn't impede its vision. And again, this high set tail carried over the back. So much Again, under that coat, there is a sturdy, heavily boned dog. Amazing substance in them. And this is why it's so important for the judge to get their hands on, isn't it? This is Willow, a five-year-old female from Oldham. Yes, the tail carried high over the back, shouldn't be flat on the back. Now another of the Tibetan breeds, the lovely little Tibetan Spaniel. It was often found alongside the Lazas in the monasteries and, and carried the same prestige. You could not buy a Tibetan Spaniel. They were given to honoured friends. This one, another youngster, 16-month-old dog called Simo from Wales. So, you could see a little bit of the peak in the background of them, the padded muzzle. The legs have a little bit of um, crook to them. They're not perfectly straight legs. They're a little bit bowed, only slightly. They're up on the leg, have daylight underneath them, not as low set as the Pekingese. They're long-lived, wonderful characters. They're quick moving, aren't they? The description should be straight. The slight bow of the legs there, permissible. Yeah. And really striding out. Highly intelligent dogs with great personalities, great fun to live with. It's got this lovely padded muzzle, dark eyes, great expression. On the table now we see the Tibetan Terrier. There were 175 Tibetan Terriers here today, and the winner was this dog, three-year-old Leo, from Lithuania. Now, despite the name, they're not a Terrier. They were used as a herding and guard dog for sheep, and brought to the UK in the 1920s by a surgeon who'd worked in Tibet. Dr. Gree, she set up the, was the leader of the breed, the Lamley Tibetans, and their bloodline still exists today. First so, came out of, of course, the presentation, the rather different to how, how we'd find them in the, the, in the mountains of Tibet. The it's amazing, here's a winner that's come to Crufts from Lithuania, from Vilnius. Isn't it amazing? The attraction of Crufts to the inter international dog scene. We've had so many winners from overseas this weekend. And especially after, obviously, COVID now coming to an end, thankfully, far more entries from overseas this year. That coat is a double coat, so woolly undercoat and then the profuse top coat to offer protection when working outdoors. popularity as a show dog in recent years. That's our best of breed, Tibetan Terrier number 16585. And our final dog comes from the import register. It's the Jolowitz Squintly. Previously known more simply as the Mexican hairless dog, it takes its name from the god Jol, 
the Aztec god of deformed things. And it's called deformed because it's hairless. And with the hairless gene comes, a, a, it's not regular um, dentition. They, they often have fewer teeth than the, than the coated breeds. This one's from the USA, Itzia, 22 month old female. It's thought that the breed also has um, medicinal qualities, especially for migraines. Their, their presence helps the people with migraines, and it's considered to be a good luck charm as well. Springy movement there. So that concludes the preliminary examination. Our judge has now seen all of the best of breeds in the utility group, but who is going to make the shortlist? So it is just worth mentioning that the Bulldog best of breed was not confirmed following the dog's veterinary check, and therefore the breed isn't represented in the group tonight. This is a great opportunity to give our best of breed winners a warm round of applause. They've been here for a long day. Now the dogs are all stacked in position as the judge walks round the ring, reminding himself of what he found on his hands-on examination. It's also worth noting the Sarpe didn't make it into the ring. We're not entirely sure why as yet, um, but there are two breeds missing if you're looking and wondering where they are. Uh, Mark's very decisive. Walking to make a shortlist here. Where's he going? So here we go with our shortlist. The Akita comes in. The Akita, twice winner of best of breed at Crufts. Come here from Spain this year. Next the Chow Chow strutting its way forward. Here comes the French the bulldog, bulldog, marks the owner of a French bulldog, Rufus, who will be at home in London. The Akita Inu, the G Middle Spitz German, and the Shiba Inu, the very smart miniature Schnauzer comes forward, and the standard poodle, and the Skipperki. And the, the Tibetan the Spaniel and the Jolowitz Squintly. That's a big, big shortlist. Can we have a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, to our other best of breed winners as they lead this utility group? 11 in the shortlist here. So Mark obviously feels it's a very competitive group and has brought out 11. So we'll be able to see them again. This is where it's another chance of looking at them, moving. When it comes to close competition like this, the movement, the performance on the night, how they carry themselves. He's looking for the dog with a bit of extra ring presence to draw him to it as saying, I'm the winner of this. So the judge is just going to move them up and down again, starting with our Akita from Spain. This is a four-year-old female called Romba, also won best of breed here at Crufts in 2020. And again, driving firmly away from the Hawks, very important to propel it round, out and back for the very distinctive Next action go, of the Chow Chow. You can see it doesn't reach as far as the other breeds. So this stilted action, which comes from the formation of the hind legs. This one from Denmark, where it's been Chow of the Year for the last two years. Five-year-old dog called Kashmir. And he is Rocket Man, Rocket Man the Brindle French Bulldog. Called Elton, just to explain. <laughs> Two and a half year old dog from Birmingham. Over 200 French Bulldogs here today, so tough competition. So next we have the larger of the two German Spits we saw. This is the Mittel, a four-year-old bitch called Izzy from Middlesbrough. She has 10 challenge certificates to her name. The kennel has the knack of turning their dogs out beautifully and they always show well. They're obviously much loved dogs. And here, you might recognize the handler handling the Shiba Inu. He's also won the gun dog group with the Legotto, which we'll see later. He's had a very good show. Coming from Croatia was worthwhile for him, I'm sure. And this dog's come from Spain. This is Kichi, a three and a half year old dog. And if he wins, well, I don't think you can show two. I don't think it's allowed. <laughs> and here, 100th champion in the breed for the Vorman Ken today. Vorman Christmas bonus. Well, well named, eh? Marvellous. Very young, this one. Only 15 months old. A dog called Yang. Bright colours. Beautiful face, and here's that smart, smart miniature schnauzer. This looks very nice indeed, I must say.
over from Japan, a two-year-old dog called Nagi. Going beautifully, great bearing. Always impressive, the standard pew poodle. This one, Jake, a really top winner, four-year-old dog from Bristol. Now, I know that in the past, this dog has had a best in show from Mark, so uh, let's see if it can work its magic tonight. Is there anything to beat it? We'll see. The Here's the little skipper key. Having a good run. How do you like me now? Well, obviously quite a lot. It's had best of breed across today. Still a young dog, so having a good, good day. Only 15 months old, called Stellan. And Mark, very fond of the Tibetan Spaniels, all the Tibetan breeds, and he's a real expert in them. So having a close look there. This is another youngster, 16-month-old dog, Simo. Here from Wales. On the last of our shortlist to move, coming from the import register classes, this is the Zolo Quintly. And finally, from the import register, we have the Zolo It's Quintly. This 22-month-old, Ixia, from the USA. That skin is oiled to keep it and so pliant and supple. The shortlist movement. A bigger shortlist than we normally see, Frank. So it means I think he thinks there's a very I'm competitive going group. Dogs. He's going to send them round to look at them in the profile. This will be the decision maker, how they carry themselves they on this last circuit of the ring. And you'll notice the handlers just giving themselves enough space here. And going at the right pace for the breed. This is a very clever handler. The dog's not in balance. A little bit smarter for the French Bulldog. He can stride out. I think the shortlist just sums up the utility group, doesn't it? The differences. Coats, size and function. Yes, exactly. The little German spits striding out. The Japanese Akita Inu there. And this is again very smart indeed and going really well. Xavier, the handler, gets the best out of all his charges. And so does this Michaela Hall. With a, look at this motoring round, this young dog. And then we have the miniature Schnauzer. This one absolutely beautifully presented. Really smart. Smart as a box of pigs. And here for style, the standard poodle. Runner up for top dog in the United Next Kingdom last year. And here's the little skipper. I saw this lady in the halls earlier and she caught my eye instantly with all those sparkles. <laughs> and here's the Next Tibetan the Spaniel. Tibetan Not to be outdone, she can stride out with the best of them. Eight. Her legs aren't as long, but she's getting there. And, and the Jolowitz the Squintly. Number Smart, one, six, athletic, six, was used for hunting. The bigger size we use for hunting. There are other sizes, smaller size. Anything taking your eye in particular? Well, I, I, I think perhaps. Um, well, we'll see. I, I love the the um, to, the miniature schnauzer. Of course, the stand poodle is the form dog, but the the French bulldog is top dog in the breed for the last two years. But the other, the Akita went well. The Akita Inu went well. We'll see in a moment. And the winner of the utility group at Crux. Oh, is the standard poodle taking the group there. I think before the judge had even pointed. <laughs> Where's second place going? Look, it's the Akita Inu. Two. This is three and a half year old Kichi from Spain. One, five, one, zero, what a great seven. win for the breed. Often outshadowed by the Akita, and here's the miniature Schnauzer. This has been a tough, tough group with lovely dogs. This is Nagi, the two-year-old dog. And the, the, the marvellous Chow caught the eye when it came in, and he's performed very well, taking fourth spot there. Five-year-old Kashmir. But our winner is Jake, the four-year-old standard poodle. That gives me very great pleasure to ask our Kennel Club Chief Executive, Mark Beesey, to present the prizes here to the Standard Poodle. I think we'll see a presentation now for the Poodle. Very aloof and dignified and proud there in his carriage, unfazed by it all. Here's Mark Beasley, Chief yes, Executive of, of the, of the Kennel Club. Handing out one of the gold vases for the group winners. Here it comes. So as we said, Jake was runner-up top dog all breeds last year.
and the dog who defeated him was not able to be entered at Crufts. So it's uh, he's not got that danger this year. Yes, yes. Being a standard poodle, I, you, you took a look over at me over there, and you knew this interview was coming. And you've been standing here for a couple of minutes to help prepare. Um, I understand this is a first group win for Jake at Crufts. How do you get him in this glorious condition? I understand you do some really cool oh, exercise yeah. with him. We cycle every day. I ride the bike. He goes beside. So, <laughs> and. Uh, you know, it's a poodle, but he's functional, so it's all about the fitness. Absolutely, and he's had an incredible run over the last couple of years. Okay, just tell us what it's been like to, to show a dog like this. Dogs like this don't come along very often, so it's been amazing, absolutely amazing. I could cry. <laughs> he said that, I, I took the microphone away, I apologise. He said he's going to cry, but please don't, because in not very long time, about an hour or so, you're going to come back in here again to compete for Best in Show. So we wish you all the luck in the world. I think the whole crowd is behind you. Congratulations to Philip and Jake. <laughs> Tears of joy there from Philip at Jake's win, but not long to collect himself. We've got one more group. Shortly we'll be seeing the toys, and then it will be time for the stage to be set for Best in Show. And still for the running, we'll see him later. He's got half an hour to rest us, so we'll see him back later. Well, as we set the stage for the toy group, the very last group here at Crufts, best in show, we're now going to take a little look back at that magnificent utility group. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we move on to the last of our seven groups of Crufts 2023. Our judge for the toy group this evening became involved with dogs as a teenager and has had a very successful breeding career with her Ancourt kennel of Cavalier King Charles and King Charles Spaniels. She has obtained the Finnish Kennel Club's prize for breeders of excellence with over 60 national and international champions. Well, she swiftly on to the final group judging for Crufts 2023 to find out who will be the final dog to go through to best in the show later on this evening. We move on to the toy group, and these are the very small companion or lap dogs. Some of them are bred just for that purpose, and some, well, Frank, they're simply there for their size. Their size, they, for the toy breeds uh, have been bred for centuries as household companions, historically for the lady of the house. But here's our lady judge tonight, Anuka Palahaimo, who's come from Finland to judge. She's been involved in dogs since she was a young girl. Her main breeds were Cavalier King Charles and King Charles Spaniels. But as judge all over the world and best in show and in all continents. In so in come best our breeds. best of breeds from the toy group. And first into the arena tonight is the Affenpinscher, which is a little dog of German origin. Oh, he's, he's seen something. <laughs> he thought it was a little mouse, perhaps. That's yeah, what he's developed for. Cool vermin, exactly. Yes, he killed. And here's the Australian Silky Terrier coming in next. Striding out well. Look at the sheen on that coat. And, and here, this, yeah, the unmistakable Bichon <laughs> Frise comes in. Frank, lovely soft corkscrew curls. And another from the same family, the the Bichon family, this is the Bolognese. 
a little, looking a little more windswept than they'd be shown. Now we have our Cavalier King Charles. The Cavalier King Charles Spaniel comes in, getting a good cheer from the crowd in the arena. And the first of our Chihuahuas is the Long Coat Chihuahua. Oh, here's the first of the Chihuahuas, the Long Coat Chihuahua. <laughs> full of spirit, full of confidence, looking round. Well, Are you looking at me? I think everyone is. And the smooth coated as well comes in behind. So the same breed standard as the long head, but just that different coat and pretty inquisitive as well. And now please welcome the Chinese crested. The distinctive outline of the Chinese crested here. My little pony, that mane of hair Followed and the by tail. The this is the royal dog of Madagascar, the Coton de Tulier. One of our native toy breeds, the English Toy Terrier. The smart little black and tan English Toy Terrier, bred down from the Manchester Terrier. Yes, now we have the Griffin Brussois. This is another with a real terrier-like personality. This one from Belgium, the Griffon Brussois. Next up is our best of breed, Havanese. The Havanese, another of the Bichon family. And now we National have dog the of Italian Cuba. Greyhound. Ah, look at the elegance and high stepping action of the Italian Greyhound. Now our best of breed, Japanese. And this breed chin. first originated in China, then made its way to Japan. It's the Japanese chin. Here's the other of the Royal Spaniels. It's the King Charles Spaniel. This one, a tricolour. Now we have our Lurchin, or Little Lion Dog. Yes, this one, the Little Lion Dog bounding into the arena, the Lurchin. And next up, it's the Maltese. And here is the Maltese, another from the white Mediterranean breeds, the Bichon family. Now it's the turn. The miniature pincher, much like the bigger version, the miniature variety was a, an original rat catcher. And now we have the papillon. The little papillon from France and Belgium, the butterfly dog. His ears like the spread wings the of a butterfly. And underneath all that hair, it's the Pekingese, an unmistakable sight. And coming in with that dignified rolling action, which typifies him. I think there'll be quite a reaction for this one. Now it's our best of breed, Pomeranian. In comes the Pomeranian, bred down from the German Spitz. It's the smallest of the Spitz breed. And I would say they look a little bit like a Jaffa on legs, Jaffa orange on legs, yes. And here's the pug, hugely popular, breed originating in China. Here we have the Yorkshire Terrier. Well, there's quite a, a well-known dog, Conan the Yorkshire Terrier, made it to best in show last year. And representing the imported registered breeds, we have the Russian and the Rusky Toy Terrier has come from the import register classes. They're so classes for breeds which are just developing their population evening. in this country. Well, we've Hill seen such a wide variety of breeds come in there, haven't we, in this toy group? Different well, shapes and, and outlines. And now for our judge Anuka to cast her eye before, before she gets a good look at each individual dog well, and we'll see how it moves as well across the floor. A lot of these dogs, think, good household pets in terms of you know, not needing as much exercise as the bigger breeds. Their history is interesting because many of the toy breeds are bred down from sporting breeds. There was sometimes the tradition for the huntsman or the sportsman of the house, if they had a litter of puppies, the weakest one would be given to the lady of the house to rear. And so therefore they were miniaturized and they were bred for size and were sometimes known as comforters. They used to uh, be bed warmers for the lady. Yeah. And then going round them now, taking in the outline. Very elegant in her appearance. Well, we'll see bags of personality in these small frames, don't we, from so many of these breeds. And here is the... He's awaiting the first dog. It was the uh, rather naughty Affen Pincher, 
which was... Uh, The Affen Pincher is the first in the toy group to have a close look at here. The German origin was developed to kill vermin in the south of the country. It's a real mischievous little dog, known as the Black Devil dog. She'd have sparkling dark eyes. You can just about see. It's one of the oldest breeds in the group. He should, look rust, he should look rustic and untrimmed. He shouldn't be coiffured. He used to look like a little black street urchin, they used to call him. And he was used to keep down vermin in the stables so they could be quite feisty, quite spirited. Still looking round in this uh, new setting, the movement of the Affen Pincher is said to be like a floating goose step. It's sort of a straight leg action, light and brisk. And there he's showing it off nicely. Seemed a little overawed maybe by the arena when he first came in, but he's only one and a half years old. Sorry, she, this is Fleurs. And this is? And this is a big test for temperament, coming in this big arena with thousands of people watching and all the applause, all the lights, and looking round, taking it all in. Now here is the Australian sil Silky on the table. It comes from a crossbreeding of the Australian Terrier with a Yorkshire Terrier and has inherited some of the characteristics of both. The judge just look at the silky texture of the coat. That's from the Yorkshire Terrier, the blue silky texture and the rich tan on the head. Although it's in the toy group, its ancestors used to be working terriers taken to Australia to keep down vermin. And what about the way that coat is groomed, Frank? Because we see the parting all the way from the neck right the way through to the root of the tail. Yes, it's a key feature. The colour and texture of the coat is a key fe feature. And it takes a lot of care to keep them like that. But Bichon means white dog, and Frise describes very soft corkscrew curls of this distinctive coat, which doesn't shed either. Bichon's a family of dogs originally found in Mediterranean France. That's where the breed was developed, but Bichon, Bichon Frise thought to have existed in Tenerife as far back as the 14th century. Judge just feeling the texture of the coat, it should be soft corkscrew curls, dark pigmentation to set, out the, to set off the white coat. She will have looked at the pads, they should be black as well. They were often carried about by the lady of the house in ornate baskets, the little companion toy dogs. Very smart, look at those lovely eyes peering out from that coat. Dark eyes, dark halos of skin around the eyes. You can, see the, you can see the back of the pads, can't you, from behind? That, the that's moves. one of the key points to look at the pads going away. You can see the blackness, yes. Very smart. Lovely carriage, lovely proportions in the outline. That's four year old moose. Now, here is the Bolognese. It was developed in Italy, as its name suggests, in the area of Bologna. Again, from the Bichon, its coat is not, it's white flocks of hair, rather a different texture to the Bichon we've just seen, but it shares some of the other traits, the compact body, the dark pigmentation, and the dark eyes. You can see the pigmentation on the lips and nose there to set it off. They're a lovely breed. They should be sturdy and square. And I love this sort of windswept quality of them. They're beautiful. They this is, sorry, this is Cassie, who is seven years old. So the jet black eyes, can't you, the eye rims as well, black nose. It was a breed which was very popular in the households of fashionable society. They became perhaps one of the early handbag dogs, as it were, the dog to have in the home. But beautiful. You see the tail carried, curled over the back. This is the Bolognese, number 169. This is an 18-month-old Cavalier well, King Charles Spaniel, close group. relation of the King Charles Spaniel that features Charles later on Spaniel. in this toy group. And the Cavalier should be a sporting dog spread to a smaller size. Of course, became popularised through the courts of King Charles I and the second. 
Again, a rich Blenheim colour, chestnut and white, and he gets that name because he was bred at Blenheim Palace, yeah, by the Duke of Marlborough, but earlier in the royal palaces of Charles I and Charles II. Apparently the palace was overrun with them in King Charles' reign. He would do nothing without his companions. Anyway, they're bred down, like many of the toy breeds, from sporting spaniels. So the sporting spaniels on the estates, the small puppies given to the ladies, they reared them. They were miniaturized versions. Okay, there is the Cavalier. Breed Standard talks about it having a soft expression and those big eyes definitely help with that. Now this is the Chihuahua, reputedly the smallest breed of dog in the world and hailing from Mexico, the Mexican state. Theory has it that he may be a descendant of the Aztec Indian dogs. And again, he was certainly used as a comforter dog for the ladies who settled in Mexico from Spain. Well, we've got the largest breed in the world already through to best in show, haven't we, in the Irish Wolfhound. It would be quite something if this long-coated Chihuahua as the smallest breed was to make it through. Quite the contrast. Now, they may be the smallest dog in the world, but they don't know that. They're full of their confidence and self-importance. Look at that strutting carriage, the lovely level back, the tail carried high, a mark of its confidence. And the judge will be looking at that domed head, those large ears and large eyes. Wonderful, wonderful show dog here. I love the way the breed standard talks about having a saucy expression. <laughs> That's very saucy. The breed was judged today by Amy Davis. So the smooth-coated Chihuahua, the same breed standard as the long-haired, but just this different coat. Classically flared ears as well. Got a good view of those in the domed skull. Large dark eyes, also a real characteristic of this breed. But that smooth coat must be dense in the tail, of course, then lacks the plume of the long coat, but still carried over the back. And the tail is fairly flat and thick. So, um, curved over the back again the great challenge in breeding miniaturized dogs is not only to get the features to be but to get soundness you don't want anything you can be exaggerated and then you want them to be sturdy be functional that means they have to have all the ability to live well The, the striking outline of the Chinese crested. There are two varieties. This is the hairless version with just the crest of hair down its neck, on its pastons and feet, and on its a plumed tail. Gives it the name sometimes of My Little Pony. And there you see the large pricked ears, plumed, this well chiseled head. The judge just going over the shoulders, feeling the bone. Everything is important. The dog has to be made well, so it can move well, so it can live well. It wants good heart and lung room in that rib cage, well angulated hind legs to allow it to move well. Here, the judge now will look at the movement as it's going away. It comes also in a coated variety, the powder puff, so it, which is fully coated all over. That tail's carried high, isn't it? Like a real plume, a waving flag almost. This one is young, 17 months old. It's Walter. The breed is thought to date back to the Han Dynasty. Larger versions of this were used for hunting dogs, and the smaller were household companions for the ladies. Now on the table we see the Coton Lutulia. The breed was just today. The Coton de Tullia has a real distinctive coat. It's only a single coat. A lot of breeds have an, an undercoat. The texture, though, is really important here, more so than the length. Looking for a cotton texture, really full and supple, slightly wavy, but heavy, curly, or silky. And they have a distinctive, distinctive coat texture, like old fashioned cotton. It's a single coat. A lot of grooming needed to keep the coat looking like this. So this comes from the top, one of the older kennels in the breed, the Koo Cotton Kennel. We saw them with a breeders team the other evening. 
Strutting out nicely there. The distinctive outline of the dog should have an arch over the loin and then the tail carried over the back. And there we see the typical outline of the dog. That's our best of breed, Pops Petulia, 176 And something quite different, a dog with very little need for grooming, the English Toy Terrier always in this black and tan colour and like many of the breeds is bred down from the sporting breed came down bred down from the manchester terrier was became popular in the regency period they were fine boned the same wedge-shaped head and ears like candle flames the shape of candle flames although it's fine boned and dainty has this lovely extended trotting action and although it's a toy dog, it still have terrier temperament. They could still acquit themselves well and say goodbye to the mice and rats. They're still very sporting. A toy with terrier temperament. And it's on the vulnerable breed list, isn't it? Which means that less than 300 were registered in the last year. Also the oldest British native toy breed. This one from Belgium, another terrier-like personality, the Griffon Bruxel Wah. And when we get to see the face there, the monkey-like face is a real feature. And you can see why it's thought to share some ancestry with the Affen Pincher, a real cobby appearance uh, to this one. Sturdy and heavier uh, of bone. This is a two and a half year old dog, Arthur. Very nice entry today for Stephen Seymour. He's originally from Australia, very good judge. He judged the breed. He was strongly associated for many years with the breed, kept them, and he, he was talking to me. He said, this is a beautiful dog, and it was his first big win today. So, nice. He said the, the handler. Um, is a little bit nervous sometimes in making the most, but here she's doing pretty well in the big ring here. It's a big occasion, isn't it? Come also in a smooth-coated variety. Again, it was an, another one which was a good vermin dog. They have great characters and personalities. And here is the Havanese, the national dog of Cuba. It's another from the Bichon family. And it arrived in Cuba with the Phoenician sailors the, from the Mediterranean. And it was popularized by the wealthy families. Silky textured coat, a distinctive outline, the top line rising towards the tail. It's not a level top line. The judge just feeling the coat texture there. It's such a full coat, Frank, but it doesn't shed, does it? No, it doesn't. It's, uh, that's one of its uh, advantages. It's also very sporting and uh, wonderful springy action. It loves life, full of personality. And we'll see that jaunty, springy action when it moves. Became very popular in America as a show dog, and now that popularity is spreading. A big entry here today. This is Jovi, who is 23 months old. And the next dog on the table for our group judge to go over is the Italian Greyhound. Judged today by Dr. Russell Hodges. A oh, real dainty and, and exquisite breed, the Italian food. Greyhound, rather like fine bone China. There's hound ancestry there, of course, and the Italian Greyhound is a miniature sight hound. It dates back to ancient Egypt and the Roman Empire. The wonderful elegance of outline of the Italian Greyhounds, all curves and symmetry, brought to be, thought to be bred down from sporting hounds like the Whippet, the, 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 the Greyhound in Italy. And you could see paintings of dogs like the Italian Greyhound in the old master's paintings going back to the 16th century. Amazing. And look at this wonderful high-stepping action, one of the features of the breed.
This one has come from Canada and became a champion today. He's been in England three times and has won the CC, making him an English champion. It's said on the breed standard to carry an aloof expression. Maybe a little. And now the Japanese chin, an oriental aristocrat. It was bred in China, but in, it arrived in Japan as a gift from the Empress of Japan to the Empress of China. It was an exclusive breed for the wealthy, and the penalty for stealing one was death. That's how much it was valued. It's a cobby dog with a wonderful silky textured coat and a, a lovely padded muzzle and those large dark eyes, giving this oriental expression. Breed Standard talks about perhaps having a, a look of astonishment. You see sometimes in the eye the little white in the corner. And it's a strutting action be, should be full of pride and dignity in its action. A real profuse coat, isn't it? Long, straight and silky. Shouldn't be curly in any way, though. And they, they come also in lem lemon and white, not just black and white. The word chin, the Japanese chin, chin means cat-like, and it is scrupulously clean in its habits and often cleans its muzzle with its paws, rather like a cat. The Japanese chin. This King Charles Spaniel is only 22 months old, sporting Spaniel that's been bred down. So different to the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, this one has a domed head, shorter muzzle, and is just slightly sh smaller in stature. Still a very compact and sturdy dog, gentle and affectionate. Yes, the King Charles and the Cavalier come from the same source. They were bred down from toy spaniels, and indeed, they, the two were kept in the royal palaces. The shorter-faced King Charles became popular in the uh, Victorian times when there was a, a desire for um, shorter faces and shorter muzzles. The pug became popular at the same time as well. That movement should be free and active and have a bit of an air of elegance to it as well. The breeders have worked very well in the breed to improve the soundness, the soundness of movement, the bolder temperament, and of course they're shorter face, but the, the breed are working hard with the BVA schemes for breathing, so they're very health conscious in the breed these days. And here's the Lervchen. <laughs> It's a German name meaning little lion, so it's known as the little lion dog, and it gets its name because of the clip. It's got this mane of hair over the four quarters, then the clipped hind quarters, and then a plume of the tail, rather like a lion. Another theory of its origins is that it comes from China and resembles the lion of the Buddha. And this one is nine years old. Plenty of experience. Is a champion dog, Kenny. Eager to go as well. This was also known as a comforter dog to provide warmth, snuggling up on a chilly night. It's the, the shaved hindquarters where the, most of that warmth would come from. Yeah. Large, lustrous eyes. Mary Thorpe from Ireland is the judge of Maltese today. There was an entry of 44. And the stunning the coat of the Maltese, and as you can probably guess, this breed does originate breed. from Malta. A very sweet tempered dog. Dark brown dog. eyes set against that pure white coat, and that hair should always be straight, although when the dog gets on the move, the coat should never hamper the movements of the dog. Again, the judge looking at the coat, feeling its texture, and also looking at the pigment of the skin, which is important, it, usually looking at the black pads, the black nose. Now, I have to say that this looks beautiful. It's come from Spain, another winner from overseas, and it looks marvellous on the table there. One today under a Marie Thorpe from Ireland, a renowned toy specialist. 
wonderful carriage, confident, that top line remaining absolutely dead level, and that wonderful pigmentation. This has taken my eye. You see the tail carried over the back and the head carried proudly as per the breed standard. Now the sharp square outline of the miniature pincher. Ah, just just being a little spirited on the table. It's a miniaturized version of the German pincher, which we saw earlier in the week in the working group. It's bred down from the original rat catchers, a mini version, but still capable of fulfilling the same function, full of confidence and having the same shape as the schnauzer. It's square, slightly sloping in its top line to a high set tail and moving with something of a hackney action, a high lift to its front action and a balancing rather high lift of the hocks as well. Gives it this strutting hackney type action. Quite a young dog here as well, just 15 months old. This is Otto, he's come from County Durham. The miniature picture said to have a fearless temperament and uh, a really spirited dog. Now, Papillon, you might remember, won best in show in 2019. So this is the little butterfly dog. And of course, the name comes from from away. The feathered ears look like the wings of the butterfly when they're alert. Thoughts have been developed from European toy spaniels as far back as the 15th century in France and Belgium. A really striking appearance. Wonderful expression with those spread wings of the butterfly on either side of its face. This comes from a famous kennel in Dublin. It's Sean Carroll Handling, been in the breed since he was a schoolboy. And of course, coming from Ireland, the pet name is Guinness. <laughs> right. My goodness, my Guinness, as they used to say, yes. From Dublin, no less. Although this is the, the spread, the erect ears, this also comes in a variety with drop ears known as the felen or the moth. It's a, essentially a toy spaniel. Now, here's the Pekingese. I judge looking at the Pekingese, looking at its head, checking the underjaw there. There's large, lustrous eyes. This is another of the Oriental aristocrats. It takes his name from the Peking palaces where it was bred and much loved and much prized. It was an exclusive toy breed. The handler going over the body, feeling the soundness of the hardings, and now picking it up to feel its weight. It should be remarkably heavy for its size, coming from solid bone. So it's a compact dog with a lot of substance. This is coming from a famous Birmingham-based kennel, Picus. So here he is, strutting his stuff. And this one, Frank, would have also had to have passed a veterinary check in order to come through to Best in Show, part of that breed watch program to make sure that dogs who have passed through are of uh, the utmost health. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, I'm pleased to see this dog. I'm pleased to see this dog here because he won Best of Breed under me about, uh, last year. Yeah. Pomerings were judged today by Sue Smith from an entry of 100. The Pomeranians bred down from the German Spitz and the smallest of the Spitz breed. The head and nose should have a fox-like quality to it. Slightly flat skull and those ears carried erect. Two coats are an undercoat and an outer coat. And underneath that soft and fluffy outer. Long and harsh in texture, perfectly straight and should have a frill that extends over the shoulders there. And the judge just picking up its hind legs to see that it stands firmly. You want uh, good limbs, even on all of the toy dogs. These are fine boned, lovely little neat feet. And it's up on the leg. It's a sort of short bodied, but up on the leg to give it this elegance and briskness on the move. It should be the standard calls for buoyant on the move. Look at it. <laughs> Love the expression. Yeah. This is Caesar, who is three years old. 
And look at that confidence in the carriage. Absolutely loving it, yes. Oh, ever, <laughs> even doing a, throwing in a trick for good measure. And here is the pug on the table. Large entry of them today. This is a, another breed which comes from China. It should be a dog which has the standard called for multimin parvo, which means a lot of dog in a sh short compass. So it's sturdy, substantial, but the breed is working hard that it should not be too fat, too heavy. Um, and also, they're wanting it to be sound and fit. It's another of the flatter face breeds. So the, today, the, the, ke the Kennel Club were offering DNA tests for BOAS testing and uh, under the hereditary diseases. And there was a queue all day of exhibitors queuing up to have their dogs health tested. That's a good sign. Yeah, it's a really good initiative, isn't it? You can just see what a robust dog this is. Four-year-old Dot. Yep, eventually getting on the move. <laughs> so, <laughs> few distractions. So, so the head of the pug is round with this a little wrinkle to give it these character wrinkle on its head. Large nose and large nostrils, very important for good breathing. And this one will have passed a vet check as well to come through to best in breed. Now on the table we see our best breed Yorkshire Terrier. The breed was judged today by Richard Haynes. It was an entry of 86 dogs. You might remember this particular Yorkshire Terrier. It's Conan, who's now seven years old and was the group winner last year. So looking to make it two out of two. The Yorkshire Terrier with its silky coat. And the only breed which can be exhibited on a red decorative box. Not today, however, just the bow in the hair. Again, the judge looking at the comb combing the hair through there, silky texture, it should be steel blue, steel blue and tan. And the fall, the, the fall of hair on its face, three shades of tan, deeper at the roots, fading to the end. This dog is a remarkable coat. For a seven-year-old, it's taken a lot of care to keep it like that. Still retain that lovely color. Sometimes they fade to a lighter silver when they're older. This dog's kept this steel blue. What wonderful movement. Wonderful top line, level top line, high set tail, and really strutting out soundly there. And again, always remembering it's a dog that was bred for hunting rodents. Now, here from the import register classes, we have the winner today is the Russian toy. This is a relatively modern breed and has become popular not only in the UK but all around the world. It's thought that the Chihuahua and the Miniature Pincher and perhaps some other toy breeds, perhaps the Papillon also, played a part in its development. It comes in a variety of colours and you get in the long in the long haired variety here, we see here the fringing on the ears and the tail and the back of the legs. They all co come in a smooth coated variety. Jaunty movers, full of confidence in their carriage. It's a Russian toy, five-year-old, named Pride. So these are our best of breed for the toy group. And we'll find out in just a few moments who will be going through to best in show. Takes a final look at all 24 dogs together. Put your hands. Well, some wonderful examples, which, of course, is the case of the best of breed. Beautiful silhouette there, and very alert and arrogant. The Bichon Frise there with his lovely pigmentation, dark skin under the white coat. Anuka walking round, taking in the outlines and balance, reminding herself of what she liked, or, or perhaps what she was critical of when going over them. Now, having looked round them, she'll step back.
and then come down and make a short list. So as our group judge returns to the front of the line, so that will be the start of our short list. The Australian Silky Terrier comes out. The Australian Silky. The Cavalier, the Cavalier and the, the Long Coat Chihuahua who put on a the great Long show. Chihuahua. There's the Chinese Crested coming out as well. Chinese Crested. The Japanese Chin comes out. The Japanese Chin. Oh, a walk Papillon. past the Maltese. There's the Papillon and the, the Yorkshire, Yorkshire Terrier. Terrier. So, so a shortlist of seven this time. There they go, the Cavalier, the Chihuahua, the Chinese Crested, the Japanese Chin, and the Papillon and Yorkshire Terrier. So... Well, Conan's still in the running then, Frank. He is indeed, yes, we'll see. And looking well, looking marvellous at seven years old. This, though, is our Australian Silky Terrier on the move. Kepsi, two-year-old, who has travelled here from Finland, a champion dog, multiple best of breed and group placements. And here, this young Cavalier made up very early, had a terrific puppy career and became a champion just after 12 months of age, yes. And, of course, this is Anuka's own breed, the, the Cavalier. This really long struck me, chihuahua. this lovely long coat so chihuahua. That looks marvellous. Gold and white in great form, and what carriage, what confidence. Do you think he knows his name is Million? Yes. <laughs> it feels like a million dollars. Sparkling Prince, the, uh, the Chinese crested. My Little Pony strutting out there. An extended yeah. trotting action. This was the one just 17 months old, Walter from Sweden. Breed specialist judging today. And here's the Japanese chin. The judge told me today she'd had some lovely dogs. Liz Stannard said the, the winners were outstanding. This one coming again from Scotland. Oh, here goes the Papillon. Very, very eager so with Papillon, just like unmistakable. This was Guinness from Dublin. Very fine-boned and dainty, the Toy Spaniel. It's an Epanyal Papillon, a continental Toy and Spaniel. To a chance here for Conan to impress once again. He won this group just last year. And he's going to be hard enough to crack tonight, I think. He's uh, looking wonderful. Well, he's done all this before, there's nothing new. Now. There's seven. She'll make your mind up so time, Anuka. She's sending them round. So they'll dogs. get her. Is going to top. I'll top you. Looking at the go, top lines, the, the reach and drive, the, the little Charles, the chihuahua, chihuahua, full of confidence and enjoying the occasion. All going well. They may be small in stature, but great in heart and great in personality. That's the toy dogs. Yes, the Papillon, the red and white Papillon. What can they do at this stage, well, Frank, it, to be winning the judge over? Well, it's catching with ring presence and performance, and they've all carried themselves really well. Great ring so presence. The, 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 the Chihuahua looks uh, great. Cavalier is a very good lineup. Seven of them. Well, who to go through to best in show? Will our judge have one more look, or has she made her mind up? The, the, the Cavalier, the Cavalier has won the group. Anuka obviously thinks highly of it. She's bred them for many years now. Oh, Conan in second place, the Yorkshire Terrier. Just missing out on two and two. And there's that marvellous Chihuahua coming forward. One, eight, eight, six, two. And the final place goes to the Papillon, the young Papillon champion. But it's the Cavalier that wins the group. Oh, what a result this is. This is 18 month old, named Dublin. He's traveled here from Essex. And that's Tanya Island, their handler. But that is fabulous. King Charles Spaniel is the final dog through to best in show. And this wonderful wagging tail, full of life, enjoying the occasion.
Well, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel joins the standard poodle, the wolfhound, Irish wolfhound, the Y Fox Terrier. The old English sheepdog is through, remember the Doberman and the Legotto. So our lineup is complete. And it is Dublin, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, who we'll see later on in Best in Show. Oh, it always gives me great pleasure to do this little interview after each group. You're having a nice chat here. Hello, guys. <laughs> it's Tanya, isn't it? Hi, Tanya. Um, so I think that sounded like a really popular win. The Cavalier King Charles is a fantastic breed. Tell us why they're so special and why this particular one is. They just love life. They love everybody, everything, or they should anyway. And he just loves every minute, and we adore him. So, yeah, I couldn't be prouder. <laughs> and is this a first for a Cavalier? No, uh, a Cavalier is actually one, I think, best in show, if I'm right, in 1973. Would I be right? You might be. <laughs> um, I need to check my research. But uh, you've only actually got a few minutes, not that long, until you can actually come back into the best in show ring. How are you feeling about that? It hasn't sunk in yet. Give us a few minutes. <laughs> a few minutes and maybe a cheeky Prosecco? Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Thank you. OK, many congratulations to Tanya and this gorgeous toy group winner, the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Huge cheers in the arena here. It was 1974, uh, the last time a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel won. The through the best in show, Frank. Absolutely. So uh, very fitting. In Cavalier King Charles. Appropriate Very fitting, for in the year. Yes, indeed. So. Not long to turn around, though, absolutely right, because Best in Show is in just one hour's time. But the lineup for Best in Show for 2023 yes. is now complete with our Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, the winner of the toy group. Wonderful. Next up is Kamik. Easy. easy. <laughs> well, he's eager. Let's see how they perform. Round. First up, the weave. Round. Nice quick turns. Round. It's a perfect start. Round. So spacious, yet he's slipping through this with ease. Confident up. run up to the seesaw. And yeah, faultless so Keep far, going. but what about the finish? Easy does it. Oh, marvellous. Skoda Kamik, yes. our compact SUV. Ooh. Our best in show. Skoda.
Well, look down there. Look down there. Ladies and gentlemen, always here on Crofts Best in Show, let us salute the fabulous members of the Royal Hospital Chelsea, our Chelsea pensioners. Ladies and gentlemen, we come now to the start of a very, very special three months of the Kennel Club. It is a lady who started her career with the Kennel Club in 1977. In 1992, she became show manager of Crofts, the world's greatest dog show. And she has been instrumental in overseeing the change, the development of this, the arena, and the promotion, protection, preservation, and above all, the love of dogs and the Kennel Club. We say from the Kennel Club goodbye to this lady in June this year. But it is a special night from us all here that are involved in crafts that we say, Vanessa, McAlpine, we adore you, we thank you, and thank you for everything that you have done for Crofts and for the world's greatest dog show. If you look at the screen, Tom, Tony, if you look at the screen, oh no, if you look at the screen, that was Vanessa in 1992. She hasn't changed a bit. Ness, we love you, we adore you, and ladies and gentlemen, we salute her and we say thank you. <laughs> Tom Hunter, the chairman of the Crofts Committee, Tony Alcock, OBE, the chairman of the Kennel Club. With a rather small bouquet of flowers. Thank you, Ness, from us all. Over the last four days, as the countdown begins towards Best in Show across 2023, we have had some incredible sport and some incredible competition and some incredible groups. Let's now have a look at the screen and some of those marvellous memories.
And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why it is the greatest dog show in the world, as we count the clock down towards Cross Show 2023, performing for the second time this evening. Performing one fine day in Bel Di Vedremo, it is Augusta Welcome Heather. back to the final evening of Crufts and a special aria performance for you by soprano Augusta Hebert. Absolutely stunning. Thank you, Augusta Herbert, and one fine day. We see her later on this evening. Shall we give her one more round of applause? Well, that was a stunning performance by Augusta Herbert. Her mother is, in fact, a renowned judge, and her grandparents were breeders of golden Thunder. retrievers, so very apt Just for her to be opening this evening, the final evening, at Crufts. 
Puccini. Puccini's Madam Butterfly. One fine day, and we've got a fine day here, haven't we? Yes. Very, very appropriate. So the stage is getting set in the arena. We're building up towards Best in Show, which is in a little over half an hour's time. We will hear again from Augusta Hebert as we build up to Best in Show. She'll have another aria for us a little later. But first, display from the West Midlands Police and their dog unit. Now, West Midlands Police have a special training centre not far away from here in Solihull, Birmingham. They also run a special breeding programme that is part of the Kennel Club's and Assured Breeders programme. And all those puppies developed as police dogs and help them to police the region. And we'll see a range of different breeds here in this special display. German Shepherds, Malinois are used in their police force, Springer Spaniels, Cocker Spaniels, Labradors as well. And brilliant work done by the police dogs and their handlers. A real particular relationship they have with each other, which we'll see throughout this display. They help with, of course, sniffer dogs, fabulous operational dogs, explosive search dogs as well. And they aim to produce, West Midlands Police, around 100 puppies every year who can then be trained and go on to help and work and be active in the police force. So we'll see a display tonight that's a pretty dynamic, a little bit loud at times maybe, but all demonstrating exactly what these dogs are capable of. And our time at Crufts this week has shown us how many uses there are for dogs and how we, how we serve man in a variety of roles. Yeah, we've seen not least the police dogs, but medical detection dogs I've been so uh, impressed uh, by. Quite amazing, absolutely amazing, eh? Good evening, ladies so and gentlemen. So here we go, and, and I'll hand you over to Leanne, who will guide you through Just the display. Really clear, the officers and the handlers here today are not our display team, they're operational dogs, operational handlers, out there protecting you 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. The, we'll also use some of the puppies from our puppy development programme. Um, we're going to take you through some general purpose work predominantly, but we're going to kick off with a little bit of agility. You have got to bear with us, because we are in the centre of Birmingham, and we're doing it with a little bit of a police twist. So we've got PD Riot with PC Wayne Truman, and they're just going to take you through a little bit of agility. Riot has been operational now for two years. He was uh, bred as part of our uh, breeding program. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. He's gonna go over the signs. Oh, come on, ladies and gentlemen, let's give me a cheer for Raya. And then we're going to do a weave. Ladies and gentlemen, PD Raya. My favourite thing for him to do, though, is to jump over cars, just to make sure that no criminals can get away from us. Oh. <laughs> You can see he absolutely loves what he's doing. He's seen him come out, he's as keen as mustard to get hold of him. And that is PD Warrior and PD Wayne, sorry, PC Wayne Truman. Now into the arena, we've got Ashley. Ashley is one of our specialist search dogs. So she is an explosive search dog that has worked the Commonwealth Games as well as um, no, she went to London for the Queen's funeral. So what she's doing now is she's going to search the cone. Once she gets the, the smell, she's going to do a nice freeze indication for us. And then Lisa's is going to do a nice click and a reward. There you go. Nice freeze indication there. And a reward. 
A lot of what they have to do is to go through vehicles as well as um, arenas and, and areas. So we could go and get up onto the car. So she's searching the car. And again, she'll do nice freeze indication. Back to the handler for a click and a reward. So we're going to go into a little bit of a scenario now. So we've got our criminals that are going to come out, in, so our couple that's going to come out into the arena with PD Oreo. So Oreo is a 12-month-old spaniel who's been bred as part of our uh, puppy program, which is Kennel Club Assured. All of our puppies go out to volunteers who look after them from around eight weeks old until they're 12 months old. What we ask of our volunteers is that they um, take them everywhere with them to make them really, really confident when they become police dogs in the future. So, oh, here we go. These two look like they're up to no good. Hopefully we've got some police officers kicking around here today. So we want our dogs to be as confident as they can be. Here we've got somebody that's coming towards them. She's going to be throwing things towards them and she's not deterred. She's going to take him with such conviction. And there she is. Our dogs and our handlers take on the fight together. So that dog has got the officer's back and the, the officer has got the dog's back. They're in that fight together. They absolutely love working together. It's absolutely fantastic working with our police dogs. And she's going to release him, release her after that fight. <laughs> so these suits are what our dogs uh, see as playtime. So they are what we use in order to do our training. And they see, see that it's the biggest fun that they can possibly have. Aggie really doesn't want to let go of that. So, uh, Aggie and Gemma have been operational together now for around three years. They've taken uh, down many criminals across the West Midlands. They're absolutely fantastic working together. And there we go, back to the handler for a toy. Okay, so our dogs don't just find people, but they also find property. The reason for that is we, we need to link somebody to an offence then we need the dogs to locate that for us. So it might be that the offender has taken off their jumper in order to disguise that they were part of an offence. It might be that they have thrown some car keys or thrown a mobile phone or something like that. So what we ask of our dogs is that they can go out, locate property, and once they do that, they do a nice down indication for us to show us that that is linked to what we're looking for and that article doesn't fit in that environment. So Aggie's gonna go out into the arena, search for that article of property, and once she's located it, she'll do a nice down indication for us. And a down. And then back to the handler for a toy. Everything that we do with our dogs is about play, it's all about reward, it's all about giving them the toys and making them really, really confident and loving what they're doing. As you can see, she's absolutely obsessed with Gemma. They worked together for three years and they have been absolutely fantastic. He doesn't look like he's up to much good, does he? Skulking around our car. Luckily, the police are on hand to uh, sort this out for us. Get a playing tug in, 
rolling around, making sure that she's as confident as she can be. And there she is, winning her sleeve, back to the car. Ladies and gentlemen, PD Nix. We're gonna need uh, some help now from uh, somebody in the audience. Come on in. <laughs> it's come prepared. <laughs> So Terry Arnett was working with us in 2017. He's back working with West Midlands Police. Being a little bit uh, dodgy around by the, uh, this. Oh, he's got his cronies with him. Oh, I like that. Let's boo him. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Shut it, you <laughs> Okay, we're going to have PD Glenn into the arena with PC Cole Foster. Police the door! Stay there! Stay the door! Police the door! Stay there! As you can see, Terry has now stood still, and the dog will do what we call a standout, which is put a little bit of pressure on him, bark him, make sure that if he does try and uh, run off, the dog is ready to detain him. And a green call back to the handler, because it's an attack on handler, and then the dog has taken out the criminal. Come on, let's hear it, PD Glenn! Fantastic, brilliant, well done. Now I am pretty sure though there were three criminals in that vehicle, not not two. So we've got oh here she is. dogs to be really, really confident to go through any of the different environments that we ask them to. And then it'll be a recall back to the handler through the car. <laughs> there we go. Lovely. Well done, Pancho. Oh, okay. So he doesn't doesn't look like, though, we were very happy about this person being arrested, so I think we've got a crowd coming into the arena. Oh, no. Come on, let's hear you! Let's do some clearing, let's do some clapping! So our dogs don't just work alongside uh, our operation, our frontline colleagues, but they also work alongside the best department, which is our operational support unit. Our operational support unit go to disorders across the West football and spontaneous disorder. They don't come out for anyone though, so come on, let's make a load of noise. <laughs> so our dogs will support our operational support unit when they are at disorders. Uh, and what they will help do is push a crowd back So they'll come out and they will support, when the OSU are holding that line, they will support and push past the OSU in order to push the crowd back. They are there in order to put a bit of pressure on the public to make sure that they do what they're told. But they are there and they will detain people if they need to. We've got PD Lightning and PD Glenn in the arena. Lightning is currently on her initial course. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our crowd. Now, uh, the OSU are going to get into a close cordon for us. Mr. Anger is into the arena, giving it loads. We don't like Mr. Angry, do we? Come on. The OSU there holding the line. And in comes PD Chaos. A 
And there's PD Chaos taking out Mr. Angry, ladies and gentlemen. And a recall back to the handler. Fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, our operational support unit for you, they are absolutely fantastic. Looking after us here in the West Midlands, they go to all the public order deployments, supported by other colleagues across the West Midlands. Mr Angry, look, he's back, he's armed himself this time. <laughs> Come on, let's boo this in, look at him! I think we can teach him a lesson, though. We've got two dogs into the arena. I think he's asking for a, a double dog deployment. Here into the arena we've got uh, PD Hale, PD Chaos, who are brother and sister. Make sure that all is safe. Like I say, our firearm support dogs are absolutely fantastic. PD West has been operational as a firearm support dog for three years and been to hundreds and hundreds of deployment across the West Midlands. Ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude our demonstration for this evening. I hope you have enjoyed it. All of the handlers that are here today have given us their free time in order to show you how fantastic our police dogs are. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Please, please show your appreciation. Let's remember that they keep us safe 365 days of the year. Thank you to the West Midlands and thank you to every single officer up and down the length of the British Isles. And as you can see, our guard of honour join us now. Well done, officers. You're a credit to your force and you're a credit to your country. Well, we've just had that fabulous demonstration from West Midlands Police. And now we will have a very special presentation. This is presentation of the Police Dog Team Operational and Humanitarian Action of the Year Award. And that is uh, an impressive guard of honour out here on the arena at Crufts. 
police do such a tremendous job in keeping us all safe. But soon we will hear the story of Carly Fulton and police dog Ben, who's a six-year-old Belgian Malinois cross-German Shepherd. This is the police dog team operational humanitarian action of the year award. Over 20 nominations this year. And we are delighted to welcome our recipient here tonight. Let us read the citation. On the morning of the 24th of August last year, concern was reported to police by family members for their relative who had last seen a short time prior in the town of Carluc in South Lanarkshire in Scotland. It was reported that the missing person suffered from dependency to alcohol, poor mental health, including suicidal tendencies previously caused self-inflicted burn injuries the previous day. Having been due to meet friends and failing to do so, concern was raised and a police inquiry commenced to locate the missing person. Various inquiries during the course of this day were unsuccessful. The following morning, on the 22nd of August, a report was received from a member of the public having been alerted to the inquiry by the media appeal that a person resembling the missing person had been sighted in a nearby supermarket. Search is then narrowed to the area adjacent to the supermarket with further possible sightings made on nearby private CCTV systems. At this time, a number of specialist police resources were actioned to attend, including air support, licensed search officers, and dog unit, all guided by the police search advisors. PC Carly Fulton attended on this morning, accompanied by police dog Ben joined the search and attended at the area known as Jock's Burn, a search involving air support, which had been unable to comprehensively search due to the high level of foliage, and involving police search teams who had attempted a walkthrough, however, were hampered by the terrain and undergrowth. PC Fulton advised that she would be in a position to continue the search of this area and set police dog Ben up to search. After commencing, it became apparent that police dog Ben had picked up a track, which was not believed to be attributable to other officers. PC Fulton continued, albeit hampered due to the thick foliage and due to police dog Ben's determination to track. After several hundred meters, PC Fulton lost footing and slipped, falling to the ground and unknown to her at the time, sustaining a fracture to her foot and ankle. Realizing, however, that police dog Ben was still sensing the presence of other persons, PC Fulton persevered, at times on her hands and knees and in considerable pain, until a short time later tracking to the missing person, who was located safe and well, although unwilling to engage and concealed in heavy undergrowth in a hasty erected shelter. PC Fulton reasoned with the missing person who was intent on remaining hidden in the wooded area and at a high risk of causing further self-inflicted harm. Other officers were summoned to assist and did, helping both PC Fulton and the missing person to safety. Medical attention was sought for PC Fulton and the missing person, who, without the tenacity and perseverance and skills that they together have honed as part of an effective team, it is likely that the missing person would not have been found so quickly and highly likely that they would have continued to cause self-inflicted harm. Delighted to welcome Chief Constable Pippa Mills, responsible for the constabulary for police dogs, and Susie Roffey and uh, Tom Mather, the chairman of the Crofts Committee, Susie Roffey from Royal Cannon, to present the police dog team operational and humanitarian action of the year award to Police Constable Carly Fulton and Police Dog Ben.
Thank you so much, and congratulations to Police Constable Carly Fulton and Police Dog Ben. We have asked you to stand on a number of occasions this evening. For those of who are able, please do stand and salute these brave officers and their amazing dogs, keeping us safe 365 days of the year. Very, very soon. Just a few moments away. Performing Volta da Terra Fronta alla Stella, Augusta Hebert.
Let's raise the roof of the arena. Augusta Hebert. Our group stewards are here. From us all at the Kennel Club celebrating its 150th birthday, we say thank you to all our volunteers, all our judges, all our stewards, and everybody that makes this the world's greatest dog show. Thank you so, so much, everybody for bringing the magic here to Birmingham. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, in the 150th year of the Kennel Club, who have always continued to make a positive difference for dogs and their owners. It is the moment that we have been waiting for. Over 24,000 dogs have been judged. Huge numbers of visitors have flocked to the National Exhibition Centre, even in the snow on Thursday and Friday. And now we are down to the final seven. It's so good to welcome you all to Crofts Best in Show 2023. <laughs> Escorted. Into the magnificent the Kettle Memorial the Trophy, the coveted the title of Best the in Show, is what these final these seven dogs, their owners, show. breeders and handlers, this are all show. seeking tonight. We are going to see the winner from each of the seven groups, the Gun Dog Working, Pastoral, Terrier, Hound, Utility, and finally, the final group to be judged, the Toy Group. Alongside me, our international judge, Frank Kane, Best in Show judge here in 2012, Frank and Laura Crumbie, uh, Championship Show judge. But Frank, you've been in this position. Tell us a little bit more about our judge tonight. Well, Stuart Mallard, he was involved in dogs from an early age, had his first judge pet here. dogs of Mongol, oh, used to go to the village uh, fates to try and win the something, but has been keen ring. ever since, started the showing in 1970. Here we have our representative from the Gun Dog Group on Thursday, Orca. This is the Legotto Romagnolo. Yes, a duck retrieving dog from northern Italy. And there's the working group winner, the Doberman Archie. Also judged here on Friday night. Instantly recognisable, it's the old English Sheepdog. This is Delia, our pastoral group winner. 
Uh, again, a herding dog developed in southwest of England. And what a wonderful mover she is. Just here on Super Saturday, the first of those two amazing groups last night, the winner of our terrier group, the Wire Fox Terrier. The Wire Fox Terrier coming from the terrier group, travelled all the way from Germany and Croatia to win here, and smart as a box of paints. This is Blanca, three-year-old female. It won't take long for this one to catch up. The winner of Now we've just three, heard this Paris here won at the audience poll, but will he win over Stuart? This is the Irish Wolfhound, winner of the Hound Group. The gentle giant, but athletic and all, with all that substance. And as we've seen tonight, our winner of the Utility There's Group... There's the Utility the Group winner, Poodle. the Standard Poodle, runner-up for Top Dog last year, won the Centenary Kennel Club Stakes earlier in the week. He's and having a great time. Can he finish it off tonight? Complete. We'll the see. And finally, the not the biggest the break here, but Dublin coming Cavalier. straight King back Charles in the ring. Tucker. This is the Cavalier King Charles representing the Toy Group. And what an appropriate way to start the coronation year with a Cavalier winning. Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Oh, I think you can give them Might take him a little bit this. longer to get around the arena than it did it's, for our Irish Wolfhound Paris. Just 18 months old from Cavalier King Charles, a spaniel, so a young one. These so dogs, goodness, they have come Dutch through as group winners from more than 21,000 dogs who have competed on, course, at Crufts this year. Our judge will have a look no, at each.